Leave a like for nothing. I mean, dude, I'm honest, so leave a like. Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome back to a brand new story. And just for a second, imagine you're just chilling in class. You're having a pretty good old time, right? And then all of a sudden, right, this Roblox kid goes to the front of the classroom and just confesses his love via a Roblox video of him doing certain things. Yeah, I, I can't even really get into it. I know this sounds very vague, but uh, it's really bad. So sit back, relax, subscribe if you're new, and let's just jump right into it. So anyways, we're going to call a subscriber who submitted this story, Bryce. So anyways, there's this kid in Bryce's class who was always playing Roblox. Like, he always sat in the back of the class, and he always had his computer out. He was playing Roblox. I think the teacher kind of knew that this was the case, but there are so many kids in the class, and the teacher was kind of with the mindset, like, if they want to learn, they'll learn, and if not, like, I'm not going to interfere, which I don't know if that's a good mindset or a bad mindset, but either way, it just was how it was. So anyways, he was kind of known as the Roblox kid because every single day, without fail, he would be playing Roblox. Like, if you ever saw him, he would be playing Roblox, and sometimes he'd even have the sound on, which is kind of funny, but whatever, right? And occasionally, he would wear, like, a Roblox hoodie or something, but the reason is, every single day, without fail, this kid was playing Roblox. Like, literally, no matter what, he was always playing Roblox. So, uh, we're skipping towards the... We're literally skipping right towards the juicy part. I mean, the whole thing's the juicy part, but we're getting to it right away. They had a presentation this Thursday, and we're actually going to jump to Thursday. It was a pre This was a history class, and they were studying, uh, you know, the Civil War, and each of them was supposed to go up and present a slideshow of important... Th of just, like, something that happened in the Civil War. It could be a battle, it could be a general overview, it could be a character piece, like, you could do one about the life of Abraham Lincoln. These kids were given weeks to do it, right? So anyways, the subscriber Bryce goes up, and he speaks about the Battle of Gettysburg or whatever. A little fun fact, in 8th grade, I actually went to go, like, to see, like, the, like, Gettysburg and, like, the battlefields and all that cool stuff with my class. It was a really cool time. But anyways, right, you know, Bryce goes up there, he does a good job with his presentation, and the next person to be called up is the Roblox kid. And normally I save, like, very interesting stuff like this for later on. I'm blessing you guys because we're jumping straight into the cringe. Actually, I don't know if I'm blessing you guys or if I'm cursing you guys because we are jumping, we're jumping straight into the cringe. And when I say straight into the cringe, I mean legitimately straight into the cringe. Like, this is bad. This is, so just prepare yourself mentally, physically, and spiritually because this is going to be quite the experience to say the least. So anyways, the Roblox kid goes up to the front of the classroom and everyone's kind of just looking at him, right? And he flips on his presentation, and from the very start, actually, no, in the very start, it looked normal because it was an image with text on it that says, like, the life of Abraham Lincoln by Roblox Kid. He obviously said his real name, but for the sake of this, the life of Abraham Lincoln by Roblox Kid. The immediately, the first slide is, like, the goofiest thing ever. So Bryce is looking at it, and on the first slide, it is, it is a Roblox character with a top hat on, and there's an arrow pointing to him, and then text that says Lincoln. And then there's more text that says, Lincoln was a good guy. Lincoln was a president. And then, and, and the Roblox kid went up there and is literally just reading out, Lincoln is a good guy. Lincoln was a president. And then he goes to the next slide, and it is, <laughs> dude, this is the funniest thing ever. It is the Roblox character of Lincoln, but his head is on the ground. It's like decapitated from his body. And the next slide says, Lincoln died. <laughs> it literally just said, Lincoln died. Okay, at least he didn't say like L, like Lincoln took the ratio, young boys better than Lincoln. At least he wasn't like going like that, right? But he was like, Lincoln died. Literally, no context. Who was he shot by? He was shot after the Revolutionary War. Did it happen in a movie theater or like not a movie theater, you know what I mean? A theater well, was like, who was the name of it? No, just Lincoln died. And then it was a photo of a Roblox character with his head on the ground decapitated and an arrow pointing to him saying, it literally an arrow pointed to it and said died. Not here lies Lincoln from whatever, right? It just says died. So the entire class is like holding back laughter because this is like the worst presentation on planet Earth. Because like, oh look, these kids are like in sixth or seventh grade or something. So it's not like they're coming out with a college PhD thesis type things. These are not dissertations that are being dissected by other professors, right? Sure, whatever. It's a little slideshow presentation. However, most people had pictures 
and a lot of text in the pictures were not Roblox characters with arrows pointing to them saying Lincoln or not Lincoln. But here's the thing. It gets so, so much worse. So much worse that you guys probably won't even be able to comprehend how bad it is, right? So the next slide... <laughs> I, I, I don't even know if I comprehend how bad this is. The next slide is just text. So just a little recap. We've had three slides so far. The first one saying the life of Abraham Lincoln. The second one being a Roblox character with a top hat saying this is Lincoln. He was cool. He was chill. He was a chiller, right? The next slide was the Roblox character with his head on the floor saying he died, lol. And then the next slide says, okay, okay, let's talk about something much more important. So at this point, Bryce was sitting in the classroom. He's like, bro, much more important. This is your presentation, dude. Like, what are you talking about? Like, are you trying to sabotage yourself here? Because it definitely feels like it. And, uh, you know, everyone in the class was kind of confused. And for some reason, the teacher wasn't stopping the Roblox kid. I think the teacher was kind of hoping that the Roblox kid, like the first couple of slides were like a, a joke. And while the teacher didn't find it very funny, the teacher was hoping that the Roblox kid was going to make a bit of a recovery. So I bet the teacher at this point thought, oh, OK, well, the Roblox kid was obviously kidding. Like he's saying, let's talk about something more important. He's probably going to like go over to talking about like the life of Abraham Lincoln. No, the teacher and everyone else was unfortunately wrong because the Roblox kid goes on to just do the, the most insane thing I've ever seen. And you guys, look, I told you before to buckle in, like buckle in for the cringe. You guys got to strap in for the cringe. Like this is an atomic blast of the cringe. So you have to lay straight down on the floor. Make sure it doesn't destroy your lungs and eyes and everything. All your internal organs don't turn inside out with this. So just prepare yourselves. So anyways, the, the Roblox kid clicks onto the next slide and it is a video. So you know how in like Google Slides you can click onto a video? It is an unlisted YouTube link. So he clicks into it and it goes over to YouTube. And all of a sudden, <laughs> oh my God, I don't know if I can do it. Guys, guys, I think I'm, I'm gonna pass away from the cringe, guys. Leave a like and subscribe to the channel to help me survive. Anyways, so all of a sudden, uh, you know the song like What Makes You Beautiful by One Direction? Yeah, that starts playing. And everyone is super confused because Bryce knows for a fact that this was definitely not music to fit the timepiece. <laughs> yeah, I don't think this is like Civil War Abraham Lincoln music. I don't know, man. This just doesn't really seem like it. And all of a sudden, while that song, the you know What Makes You Beautiful by One Direction is playing, a video appears on screen. Of the, of the Roblox kid, Roblox character. And it's like a screen recording of him running around this map with like text appearing on the screen. You know how it's like, you can have like your Roblox character have like a text bubble. I, I don't know if that's actually true. I don't really play it myself, but I've seen like meme images or whatever. So at first, he, the Roblox character is just like saying the words of the lyrics. So he's like, you're insecure, not sure what's for. Dude, I'm not looking at their lyrics right now. Like, uh, turn in heads when you walk through the door, or something like that. Okay, you, you know the song I'm talking about. I butchered the lyrics, but in all fairness, I'm trying to get them from the top of my head, and I haven't heard that song in like a year, or last night, either one. Um, but yeah, so everyone is super confused. Bryce kind of turns to his friends. The teacher is just like, okay, like, I'm gonna let this play, because like, I don't know where this is going. But everyone is realizing that this is going downhill extremely quickly. And no one realizes, like, why this, like, where this is actually going. Until, like, after, like, a little bit of the Roblox characters, like, dancing on screen and, like, singing the lyrics to the One Direction song. Eventually, right? Eventually, like, the Roblox character, like, it, it zooms in on him. And the music's still playing in the background. But the text is no longer, like, the text of the song. It is... So there's a girl who we're going to call Eve in this class, and she's sitting in the front row. Rest in peace, Eve, bro, because she's about to get slammed by the Roblox kid. Completely embarrassed in front of everyone. So, uh, yeah, uh, the, the text on screen of the Roblox kid's presentation turns from saying the One Direction lyrics to saying, like, I have a super important question for you, and then... Eve, her name appears on screen, and everyone, dude, I feel bad for this girl, because, like, as soon as her name appeared on screen in this dumpster fire of a presentation, literally everyone, including the teacher, turned their heads to look directly at her, which is a, such a tough situation, because, like, bro was just existing, bro was just chilling, trying to, like, live life or whatever, 
And then all of a sudden, she just gets completely destroyed, gets a left hook to the face. Like, you just simply hate to see it, right? And all of a sudden, like, it, the text on screen turns to, like, Eve, will you go out with me? And it says this for, like, five seconds. And Bryce, it, like, even though it was only on screen for, like, five seconds, Bryce says that this is probably the longest five seconds of his life. He's never seen a five-second duration go by any slower. And all of a sudden, right, the Roblox character on screen starts doing, like, a break dance. Like, it is the worst thing I've ever seen. I will say that there are worse ways to, to ask out girls. And if this video gets 1,000 likes, I, I, I clear 1,000 likes all the time. But if this gets 1,000 likes in the first 24 hours, I will tell you the worst story of how to ask out a girl. And it's from me. It is a personal story. So you better smash like right now, and I will do it. I'm a man of my word. It is embarrassing, it is terrible, it is awful, but it is funny. And if it gets more engagement on the video, then I'll sell my soul for anything anyways. So yeah, the Roblox character is like breakdancing in the background. And <laughs> remember, this is during a history class presentation on the frickin' Civil War. And all of a sudden, there's this a Roblox character breakdancing while the Roblox kid, literally, I don't know if dude thinks he was asking to marry her, because the Roblox kid gets on one knee, and everyone's like, what is this kid doing? Roblox kid gets on one knee, and like, <laughs> I don't know why he was on one knee, but he was. I think he saw like a movie where someone proposed, and he's like, oh, this is how it works. He's like, Eve, will you be my girlfriend? And while this is happening... Like a really like poorly audio, like poorly edited in audio. So it's really grainy audio of like what makes you beautiful by One Direction is looping in the background while there's a video of this Roblox character breakdancing on screen. Like it is the biggest dumpster fire anyone has ever seen. Everyone at this point is completely shocked. Real quick, if you made it this far into the video, comment Roblox down below. That'll be the secret word of the day. I'll try and heart a bunch of the comments. I can't always because. Look, full-time college student as well, also trying to have a life. However, it's not that hard for me to go through and heart a bunch of them. So if you comment Roblox, I'll do my best to do that. And also, if you want to support the channel, the best thing you can do is after you're done watching this video, go ahead and binge watch a bunch of videos. And please let me know in the comment section how many videos you watched today or this week. Because when you watch my old videos, it helps the channel get promoted more, which helps our community grow. And it's awesome. It's great. I just want to say thank you. So let me know in the comment section if you are doing that so I can say thank you personally. Yeah, so just a little recap of what is happening. And by the way, prepare yourself for the cringe because it's pretty bad at this point. But anyways, the Roblox kid has gone up to give a presentation on Abraham Lincoln. The first two slides were crappily edited in Roblox characters, where the first one just has a top hat, and the second one just has his head falling off, right? So not super great. Um, and then it converts to like, let's talk about something more important. And then it's a video of his Roblox character running around, screaming out the lyrics to One Direction's like, what makes you beautiful. And then it turns to the Roblox character breakdancing while the Roblox kid goes on one knee and asks this girl out in front of everyone. So yeah, at this point, like Bryce is sitting into, uh, Bryce is just like so shocked and confused because dude, this all happened within the span of like two minutes. And the Roblox kid is like, yeah, so at this point, you know, I, I don't know, Bryce just wasn't expecting anything like this to happen. Like he's just like, this all happened so quickly, just for context. Like one second in, this happens. The next second in, like, or like one second in, they're all doing like Civil War presentations. The next second in, this Roblox kid is trying to ask out this girl with a Roblox dancing icon, and he's down on one knee. And it's just like a huge mess. It's just like, dude, what is even going on at this point? And, uh, yeah, it is the most awkward... Oh, my God, it's Connor Pugs. I've never seen your face in real life. You're so sexy. Dude, how do these fans keep getting in? <laughs> security! Security! <laughs> anyways, guys. Uh, <laughs> yeah, anyways, so at this point, the teacher is starting to realize what is going on. Like, the teacher, like, is kind of snaps to it. And remember, the Roblox kid is literally sitting, standing, or not standing, is literally on one knee, and is just like... Will you go out on a date with me? And, uh, poor Eve, bro. Like, everyone's just looking at her. And the teacher goes up to him. And is just like, what is, like, what is wrong with you? Like, the teacher full-on says, what is wrong with you? Which, like, the, teacher, <laughs> the teacher's not wrong, dude. Like, what is wrong with this kid, bro? Like, can't be going up to people in class and just, like, asking them out when you're supposed to be doing the life of Abraham Lincoln. Like, it's a little bit different. And the Roblox kid is like, 
You're a hater of my love. You're a hater like John Wilkes Booth or whichever one shot Lincoln. You're a hater just like him. I'm like Lincoln. You're like John Wilkes Booth. And you're shooting me in the head metaphorically. And the teacher's like, why didn't you say that in your thing? It's like, (laughs) because the teacher started to like freak out because the Roblox kid actually knew the history. He actually knew who shot Abraham Lincoln. He knew the context, but bro decided not to put it in his presentation because he was too busy doing like, Dude, he was too busy doing Roblox dances to ask out this girl. So at this point, the Roblox kid is like, you can't stop me. You can't stop me and my love. And at this point, Eve just has her head down on the desk like, oh my God, dude. Oh my God. And everyone feels so bad for her. But they're also just so curious, like what is going on with the Roblox, the mind, uh, Roblox kid, right? So at this point, the Roblox kid, like the teacher starts walking towards the Roblox kid because the, the teacher is going to escort him to the front office. But the Roblox kid says, no, no, I must have an answer. You can't take me away. So the Roblox kid starts to run around the classroom. So the desks are kind of in a, uh, just imagine a normal classroom. So the Roblox kid starts weaving in and out between the desks. He's just kind of like dodging in between the desks sliding under chairs, knocking stuff over. And while he's doing this, right? Cause like the teacher's starting to close in on him, but the teacher's not gonna like, the teacher's not gonna slide tackle him, dude. He knows better. But while he's doing this, he's shouting like, Eve, Eve, do you hear me? Eve, Eve, will you be my Roblox girlfriend? Eve, Eve, will you be my Roblox girlfriend? And at this point, Bryce is like, oh my God, what is going on right now, dude? What is going on in the Minecraft? Uh, Sorry, the Roblox kid is just kind of like jumping around, jumping, jumping. And at this point, right, you know, I think Eve is starting to realize that if she doesn't say, like, this is a terrible position and I feel really bad for her because, like, dude, right, you definitely don't want to. Ball, uh, you know, thing. Oh, are you recording right now? Yeah, uh, my balls are, my balls are actually, yeah, I got my set of balls in on Amazon. Wait, they can't hear this. No! We've had a lot of lore in today's video, like a lot of, uh, anyways, though. So at this point, the teacher is just like, he's running after the Roblox kid. The Roblox kid is running back and forth. And I think Evie at this point kind of just knows that she needs to say, like, she needs to say something. So she kind of, like, stands up, which is tough for her, because, like, this is obviously super embarrassing. She stands up and says, I'm sorry, like... I don't think we should, like, go on a date or something. Or, like, I have to decline. However she said it, she said it very politely. She said it very nicely. And, uh, you know, the Roblox kid stops running. And that's when the teacher catches up to him and kind of grabs him. And the Roblox kid literally slumps on the floor. Almost like he was shot with, like, a tranquilizer dart, dude. Like, he just slumps on the frickin' floor. Like, he's just down. Down for the count. And, uh, you know, everyone is kind of looking around because it's like, uh... What, what, what do we do about this? And the teacher is like, come on, get up, get up. And the Roblox kid's like, no. When my heart is broken, my legs are broken too. Like, kid is being super melodramatic. Apparently, like, he's never even talked to this girl, the one that he asked out in front of the whole class. He's never spoken to her once. He just saw her once and was like, oh, this girl's pretty. Let me ask her out during my Abraham Lincoln presentation because that makes a lot of sense, right? And the kid's literally slumped on the floor. He's like, no, my broken heart has paralyzed my entire body. And the teacher's like, dude, get up. He's like, no, I will get up when she says yes. And at this point, the teacher's like, ah, hell no. Because, like, the teacher, look, it was already in a terrible, she's already in a terrible situation. You got some weirdo in front of everyone being like, go on a date with me now or else. And then all of a sudden, this kid decides that he is also going to pull a, if she doesn't go on a date with me. I'm just going to be collapsed on the floor forever. (laughs) Feel bad for me, guys. Like, no, that's definitely, like, he's cut, he's drawing the line there. We're we're not letting this one slide, Uh, basically, right? So the teacher pulls him up, because the teacher, you know, he can't be too physical with this kid, because he can get in trouble in lawsuits and whatever. But he grabs the kid by the scruff of his collar and, like, yanks him up and is like, You've had a, you've like, you've been distracting enough today. Like you caused enough drama. You've caused enough trouble. You're going to the front office with me. So he drags him out to the front office. And afterwards, the classroom is just dead silent. Until one guy who's sitting next to Eve kind of speaks up and says, I'm so sorry. And literally after that kid says, I'm so sorry, the whole class, the whole classroom dude, including Bryce, chimes in to say, yeah, I'm like, that's so sorry. Like, that's so tough. I'm so sorry about that. If you need anything, like everyone was being so nice to her because they realized this like, dude, like this is day of a presentation. This is already kind of a stressful day, but everyone kind of knew that like, 
yeah, no, I mean, no one wanted this, and she definitely did not ask for this, and, like, if the, if this happened to any of them, they would have known that they would have just, like, they would have had the worst day ever, so, yeah, everyone was super nice to Eve after that point, uh, the Roblox kid did get in trouble, he obviously, f he, he would have failed his presentation, um, but the, the teacher said, I'm gonna give you another chance to redo the presentation, and he did, and the presentation actually wasn't that bad, but the kid didn't get a great grade because the teacher's like, I'm not gonna give you a great grade even if the presentation's really good, but just feel lucky I'm giving you a chance to try at least again. So yeah, moral of the story is don't ask out uh, your crush via your Abraham Lincoln presentation and with a Roblox video dancing to One Direction, going on one knee and run. Dude, I think the moral of the story. Click on the video clear. on screen right now. I know you'll enjoy it. Just click it. Do it. What's up, guys? Welcome back to a brand new story. Today we have a story of the stinkiest Minecraft kid ever, who smells really bad, and he thinks that his stink. His natural odor gives him unlimited risibility, and he can pick up any girl ever on the face of this earth. This is quite the story. I know you'll enjoy it, so sit back, relax, leave a like on the video to claim your free nothing, limited time by the way, and let's just jump right into it. So we're going to call the subscriber who submitted this story Wallace. So anyways, Wallace was 12 at the time. This happened uh, not that long ago. Maybe Wallace is still 12, I don't know. He just told me at this time he was 12, right? And he and his boys were kind of hanging out one day when uh, Wallace's mom came down and said, hey, like, guys, and talks to Wallace and his friends. There's a new kid moving into the neighborhood. Um, I, thought it'd be cool, I thought it'd be good or cool if you guys went and talked to him. So I set something up with you and him tomorrow and then also with you and him two days from then. Basically, the plan was that Wallace and his friends were going to go over to this kid's house, get to know him a little bit, and then the next day they were all going to go to the mall together, as that was a thing that Wallace and his friends enjoyed doing. So Wallace and his friends really had no objection to this. We're just going to call his friends uh, Ben, collectively. Like, I'm going to refer to them both as Ben, because they don't really have any, <laughs> they don't really have any, like, qualities in the story that they need to be separated by. So we're just going to call them both Ben. But anyways, Wallace and, Wallace and, we'll say Wallace and his friends, and I'll say Ben if necessary. Wallace and his friends had no objection to this, as they thought, okay, well, that's cool. New person, no, maybe he's cool. And worst case scenario, he's not, and we're just not friends with him. Like, <laughs> we'll figure it out pretty soon. So anyways, fast forward to the day where Wallace and his friends go over to this guy's house. And uh, this was the beginning of the end, man. This is where things, uh, it, they, they only went down from here. So anyways, they're driving up to the house, and uh, Wallace's mom drops them off and says, doesn't plan to stay as she has to go and do things. And they're basically going to be stuck at this guy's house for two hours, which, you know, that doesn't sound bad. I mean, especially if you like the guy, if you, or at least you could like the guy, that's probably a good thing because, you know, you're spending more time with your friend. However, this was about to be one of the hardest experiences of their lives. I mean, they're only 12, so it's not like they've went through that much. But anyways, yeah, so they're walking into the house, and or they walk up to the house, they knock on the door, uh, the Minecraft kid's mom. We're going to call him the Minecraft kid, by the way. And uh, I have to use this disclaimer all the time just because people don't get it. I, I'm this, this is not dedicated towards anyone who plays Minecraft. I think it's pretty clear that I enjoy the game, or at least used to enjoy the game a lot when I was a kid, as shown by the background footage I'm using. Look, the term Minecraft kid, it isn't really even meaning you like Minecraft. It almost means the one that is someone who is embodied by Minecraft, wearing the same creeper hoodie every single day, being on Discord 24-7, and having the hygiene of a Discord mod. That is basically what I mean by Minecraft, kid. I don't mean you just like Minecraft. So just stop being mad in the comments and use your common sense for one second. So all I ask is one second. Anyways, they walk up to the house and the Minecraft kid's mom greets them at the door, lets them in. Wallace's mom leaves as soon as she sees her kids and or her kid and his friends go into the house. They enter the house and the Minecraft kid's mom says, okay, well, uh, the Minecraft kid's actually upstairs right now. He's in the middle of one of his little uh, gaming sessions. I'm sure you boys know what it's like to be in the middle of a gaming session and have your mother interrupt it. I'm sure it's the worst. They all kind of look at each other like, I guess, bro. Like, all right. What? <laughs> okay. <laughs> I don't know how else to respond. All right. Yeah, so she's like, well, he's actually just up there. So Wallace leads the, uh, leads the other two up the stairs. And they go up the stairs. They make a left, and they go down this hallway. 
And immediately, something just smells wrong. Like, it doesn't necessarily smell, okay, it does smell pretty bad. It's like a little pungent. It's like, I don't know, you left something in the trash that maybe you shouldn't have left in the trash. Like, you left some, like, food in, the, in, an, in an, like, an exposed trash or something, and you forgot to take the trash out for weeks. And it just, like, got stuck somewhere, and then after a while, it starts to decompose and rot and make this little smell, right? So, the thing is, though, as they get closer and closer to the room where they hear creeper explosion noises and Minecraft dragon noises, the, st the smell gets stronger and stronger and stronger. And one of Wallace's friends, Ben, says, like, oh, dude, like, do you smell that? It smells awful. And Wallace is like, yeah, it's like something died in the walls, bro. Like, what? So, yeah, anyways, they get closer and closer to the Minecraft kids' room, and the smell gets worse and worse. And that's when they get to the door. And they're looking at the door handle. Thankfully, right, it was a push door. You didn't have to pull it to open it. Because looking at the door handle, the door handle had all this crust and grime and sludge and probably just, like, the, the, this Cheeto dust that's been molding because it's been there for three years. It is the most disgusting thing ever. And also the door somehow has, like, sludge all over it, which, bro... I get it if you're messy. My room's not always looking the greatest. So I try and keep it as clean as possible, but we all have those days where you just forget. But dude, how does it get so bad that the door gets gross? Like, how do you get to a point where the door is getting gross? So I know I've said up to this point, the hallway smelled pretty bad, but it was nothing for what they were about to experience. So uh, Alex decided, or sorry, Wallace, Alex is the name of the last guy, Wallace, opens the door, not with his hand, he literally uses his foot to gently push open the door. And when I say jump scare warning, <laughs> there should have been a jump scare warning for Wallace and his friends because boom, he gets hit in the face. Not hit in the face with anything physical. It's not like a ball was thrown at him or shot with a Nerf gun or something. Not like the Minecraft kid was playing a prank on him. It was a wall of stink. It was a wall of stench. It was the most foul. It was the most putrid. It was the most disgusting. It was the most egregious smell they have ever smelled in their lives. They've talked about this after the fact, and they all agreed that nothing has ever smelled this bad. Not even close, right? So it's as if, like, I don't know, a, a, something died in the Minecraft kid's room, and it was just literally rotting away in the middle of the room. It was as if the Minecraft kid went to the bathroom primarily in his pillow and slept on his pillow every single night. It was as if, insert the grossest thing ever that would smell terrible, and then just apply it to the smell of this room. This room was terrible. And not only was it terrible, there was crap all over the floor. It was stink. There was flies all in the room. It was disgusting. It was the worst room they've ever, ever, ever stumbled upon. And the kid rolls around, or not rolls around, but is in his spinning chair, spins around, is like, Hey guys, my name's Minecraft Kid. Actually says his real name, but we're going to use Minecraft Kid. He's like, hey guys, my name's Minecraft Kid. What are your names? And, uh, you know, the, uh, what do I call him? Wallace. Wallace is like, hey, this is Wa I'm Wallace, that's Ben. And points his other friend, that's Ben. Maybe they had different names, but for the sake of this. Uh, it's nice to meet you. We're the friends in your neighborhood. Minecraft kid's like, okay, cool. If you guys don't mind, I'm gonna get back to my Minecraft game. And he literally turns around, and he just goes back to, like, clicking. And, like, they're looking at his keyboard and mouse. His keyboard is basically a flat surface. It's a flat surface because there's so much gunk and crap in between the keys that it's there's almost no physical divots. It's just like a flat edge. It's just a flat surface because all the divots where the keyboards are just fill of, filled with like gamer gunk and it's disgusting, right? And his mouse too was sticky. Like his mouse, like when you click down, it like stuck a little bit, which he was complaining about like, man, my clicks per second are actually not that high. I don't know why. And they just hear, <laughs> that was like the mouse sound, bro. It was not good. So yeah, they walk over. First of all, they were just like, at this point, Wallace was just like really proud of his friends for not projectile vomiting or just collapsing on the ground. Right, He was very proud of them for not doing that, just by the, the sheer smell of the room that they entered. Very, very proud. Extremely proud, actually. 
So they walk in, and they see just, like, a thousand Monster Energy cans sitting on the desk. And I know that there's some Monster Energy fans in here. Guys, please. <laughs> it's not good for you, man. Look, live your life, and I'm about to make people mad, but bro, please limit yourself. That stuff is not good. You're basically, you're basically snorting seed oils and red dye number 40. I know those two things are not in Monster Energy, but it's the, it's the health equivalent of doing that. But you can do what you want. Just look, in general, do things in moderation. There was like a thousand Monster Energy cans, half of them spilling all over the place, right next to his game, what the Minecraft kid called his gaming battleship, aka his desk. And he was just like clicking around, and he was sitting in, like, the squatting. He was, like, very sitting very weirdly. He's sitting, like, I don't know if you guys ever saw Death Note, but you know L from Death Note. It's, like, literally the only anime I've ever watched. Anime just isn't really my thing. However, that one show, Death Note, fire. That was so sick. The rest of it, does I don't really like. But anyways, he's sitting like that, and he's like, bro, I'm not even going to go into it. But his feet were not well manicured. That's all I'm going to say. And I'm not trying to say that he wasn't going to a, a spa every single day. I wasn't trying to say that, like, I don't know, he's not adding, like, a coat. I, 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 I don't know. Let's just say that things were not looking great down there. It says it, I don't know if you guys have ever been to the pool when, like, an 80-year-old grandpa walks over and, like, he's got his dogs out. And you know that he doesn't have the ability to bend over and, like, clip them or whatever. And his dogs are just the worst things you've ever seen. Like, they might be the worst things you've ever seen. Like, they're big bad. It, basically, the Minecraft kid had the worst pair of dogs on his feet as you've ever seen, right? And it's just like, like, at this point, the smell was almost accumulating in the insides of Wallace and his friends' noses. Eventually, the Minecraft kid loses his Minecraft match. He's like, drat. He turns around. He's like... Hey guys, so, what do you guys do for fun? And Wallace and his friends are like, uh, uh well, we actually, uh, well, uh, I don't know, we'll, we go for hikes and stuff, we, uh, go around, play some frisbee, I don't know if you're into that. He's like, nope, I do not like sports or anything with physical activity. And they're all just like, alright, cool. We also like going to the mall. He's like, sigh, I know, we're going there tomorrow. That's the worst I can't play Minecraft if I'm in the wall. In, in the, <laughs> if I'm in the wall. If I'm in the mall. Yeah, I bet you wouldn't be able to play Minecraft if you were in the physical wall, bro. But anyways, right. They're kind of just looking at him. And Wallace and his friends are looking at each other. And then they look back at him. And then they look at each other. They have a feeling. A sneaking suspicion. A slight uh, inkling. They have, a, they have a feeling, right? That maybe they're not going to be the closest, uh, dearest... Uh, most connected friends with this guy because they have literally nothing in common and his his room is not the easiest. It, like, for example, they could not imagine a sleepover in his room without passing away. They would have to write an, a, a letter to their parents about how much they loved them before they went over to this kid's house for a sleepover just in case they suffocated from too much stink accumulating in their lungs overnight. Who even knows? Anyways, so this kid goes on to talk about, like, they're talking about some stuff. The conversation is pretty terrible, but whatever. And that's when the Minecraft kid brings up his, like, the most interesting quote of all time. The Minecraft kid's like, guys, do you guys have any Riz? And they're all like, bro, what? He's like, yeah, Riz, like, charisma. Like, are you good with the ladies, bro? And, like, Wallace kind of was. Like, Wallace isn't trying to brag or anything. But he wasn't doing too bad in that department. You know, he got it done. He wasn't like, I don't know. He wasn't some Leonardo DiCaprio, bro. He wasn't like, uh, I, 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 look, he, but he was doing fine. He was, he was chilling. You know, he did what he needed to do. But Wallace wasn't about to be like, yeah, I got plenty of riz. Because if anyone says that, unironically, they probably don't have any. Like, let's just keep it a buck right here. But anyways, the Minecraft kid's like, so one of my pastimes is actually investigating how to get the ladies to like me. I've been making many experiments and game plans for it. And they're all kind of looking at each other like, all right, let's take advice from this guy of how to like secure like a beautiful girlfriend. Yep, let's, I'm, I'm all yours, man. I'm listening, bro. Uh, I'm paying attention to whatever you're saying. Go for it, man. Let's hear it. Let's hear it right now. And uh, yeah, the Minecraft kid goes on to say that he has found 
the Rosetta Stone. He has found the secret. He has found the fountain of youth if youth is equal to getting the women right. He has found the 100% guaranteed guide to getting laid 1,000% of the time. And you know what his secret was? And he was explaining to them. So, women, instinctually, very deep down, they have primal urges. And they're all like, oh, bro, why do you have to say it like that? You're so weird. They didn't say that, but they're like, bro. And he's like, yes, they have primal urges. So I was thinking about it. What is the most primal thing that you could do? Like, think about the cavemen. They're all like, uh, I don't know, hunt, um be outside a lot basically the opposite of the minecraft kid he's like no 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 those were just things that they did what about the cavemen is stands out most to you and uh you know wallace and his friends they they weren't able to figure out exactly what the minecraft kid was looking for um so the minecraft kid eventually is like fine i'll tell you have you ever smelled a caveman before and they're all like what and he's like well you probably haven't because they've been extinct for a while but think about it. Do you think the cavemen ever showered? And they're all like, uh, what, bro? He's like, yes, think about this. The cavemen never showered. The cavemen are old-fashioned. Women's natural instincts will bring them to want to go back to their roots. Cavemen are their roots. Therefore, I should not shower, and I have ultimate riz because of it. At this point, Wallace was just like, bro, <laughs> you gotta... Ain't, ain't no way, bro. There is no way. There is simply no way that this is how it's going down. Real quick, if you've made it this far into the video, comment Minecraft down below. Uh, by the way, these videos will be on Spotify, and also short-form videos will be on TikTok, and all the other links to submit stories to my Instagram and Twitter. All that stuff will be in the description of the video. Finally, if you want to support the channel, the best thing to do is first... Finish this video all the way till the end, and then when you're done with the video, go ahead and watch another one of my story videos. A great way to do this is the story time playlist in the pinned comment down below. Anyways, let's get back to it. So anyways, Wallace and his boys are looking at each other like, did this bro really just say, did bro really just say that because he doesn't shower, that he is going to have ultimate riz and get all the ladies to love him? Yes. The Minecraft kid literally just said, oh, okay, because I don't shower, and cavemen didn't shower, and women have instincts, therefore, I am irresistible to the ladies, guys. You should listen to me, I know what I'm saying. Like, bro, you can't be serious right now. And yeah, Minecraft Kid was serious right now. And uh, yeah, so <laughs> Wallace and his friends kind of look at each other. It's, it's basically an in-real-life try-not-to-laugh challenge. Because this is, this is a pretty difficult try-not-to-laugh challenge. Wallace is not going to lie. But he's like, uh, he's got to, Wallace got to ask the pressing question. Uh, has it ever worked before? Because here's the thing. You know you got that friend who has all the, he's always given the most advice. Bro's always dishing out the most advice when it comes to the ladies. He's saying, man, you got to do this. You got to do that. If you're not doing this, you're an idiot. If you're not buying my how to get the ladies course, you're a fool, right? They're always saying the most. And then you ask them, hmm, when is the last time you've actually had a good interaction with a woman? And they're all like, well, so I've actually been working on my shelf recently. Dude, if they say that, that just means like, not in the last forever. Last, last time they saw You Know What was the last time they came out one, bro. That's all I'm trying to say without getting demonetized. But anyways, right? So, sure enough, uh, Wallace is like, hey, has this ever worked? And the Minecraft kid's like, well, actually, I've been honing my stink for so long that I've not spoken to a woman in, uh, I don't know, five years. Dude, they were like 12, by the way, bro. By the way, Riz to them meant, like, talking to a girl and holding her hand was, like, 20th base like 25th base was holding her hand and they were legit scared to hold hands because they're like bro what if i hold her hand too hard and the stork comes with the baby bro oh my god and anyways right so they're just like oh well we're going to the and wallace is like oh well dude we're going to the mall tomorrow you should really use some of that riz because i feel like i feel like you've definitely accumulated enough stink to uh 
to really have a presence. He's like, oh, really? It was like the most, it's funny, because it was like Wallace just complimented the Minecraft kid in the most genuine, best compliment the Minecraft kid could have ever wanted to hear. Imagine someone says, you smell like, I don't know, dog, you smell like my dog's butt, right? And you're just like, oh my God, bro. You really mean that? Do you really mean that? Yo, that means so much to me, bro. Thank you so much. I, I, thank you, bro. You don't know how much that means to me, dude. I'm tearing up right now. Yeah, so anyways, the, Wallace and his friends are there for the next like hour or so. Ben and like Ben is like has to go to the bathroom several times for a mysterious illness that may or may not because of all the stink that is accumulating in his nose. They eventually get picked up, and uh, when Wallace sits down in the car, his mom's like, "Oh God, what the, f- bro? What? You all smell so bad!" Like Wallace's mom was super blatant about the fact that they smelled bad. And that's when Wallace and his friends realized that just by standing in this kid's room, they basically got sprayed by a stunk, a skunk. They basically dove into the dumpster. They basically decided to just go to the bathroom in their pants and not even care about it at this point. So yeah, they had to explain to his mom that it wasn't them just like, I don't know, peeing their pants and letting it marinate for an hour. It was the fact that the Minecraft kid had certain behaviors and tendencies that maybe did not align with peak cleanliness with peak, uh, I don't know, hygiene with peak smelling not terrible. So yeah, after explaining to his mom that the Minecraft kid did not smell so good, his mom's like, oh, well, you know, boys, I can always try and make up something to get you out of the, the play date tomorrow if you're really thinking about, like, if you really don't like this kid. And Wallace is like, look, I don't think we're going to be friends long term. We have nothing in common. I don't really have a lot of respect for him. All he does is play video games and accumulate stinks by, I don't know, peeing his pants or something and letting it marinate for eight hours while gaming and playing League of Legends. However, he did say that he was going to pick up a girl tomorrow. And mom, I don't mean to be a jerk, but I really want to see that. His mom gives him a look like, bro, you're being mean right now. Because we all know this kid is not going to be picking up the ladies. And he's like, eventually the mom's like, okay, fine. It's going to be easier to let you guys go. Just don't be mean. And they all agreed. So anyways, the next day came around. And Wallace's mom drove Wallace, Ben, and Ben over to the mall. And they got out. And uh, Wallace's mom's like, okay, I'm going to be back in an hour. Like, I'm just going to say I have to get you guys early. But don't be too mean. I'll be back. So anyways, right, they walk in. And they sit down at, I don't know, there's this little bench or whatever in the mall. And it's a place that they normally meet. And they got the kid's uh, Snapchat or number or whatever. And they, somehow they text him, right? They're like, hey, we're at X location. And eventually, after five minutes of waiting, they see the Minecraft kid walking over in the worst outfit on planet Earth. One of the most... <laughs> it, is, it is so bad. And they can... First of all, not even the fact that he has a walking aroma, but it is... A cre- First of all, the Creeper hoodie is not bad. You know, if I when I was 12, not bad, right? Creeper hoodie, not too terrible. However, he was walking over in the Creeper hoodie that had massive stains on it. It had massive blotches of crap that he just spilled all over it and never found, like figured out to clean up. And then he also had the strangest pants on planet Earth. They were like... <sighs> They were, like, anime girls with, like, making weird faces or something, and it was, like, black and white. However, those also had big splotches of crap and big yellow marks all over them. And then he literally came in slides with no socks. Look, a lot of people walk around, and a lot of people I respect, they got the slides on and they don't have the socks on. And I gotta talk a little quieter so that I don't offend anyone in my suite. But I just don't suggest doing that. And especially if the dogs are not well taken care of. And the Minecraft kids' dogs were very much not well taken care of. They were definitely looking like snakes, bro. They were not look they were not dogs, bro. They were snakes. They were coming to bite. They were definitely the, the, the dogs were venomous, bro. It was not looking good. So yeah, he comes in in the most atrocious fit on planet Earth. And he also says, oh, by the way, I forgot to say the cherry on top 
bro's rocking a redditor fedora he might as well have his discord mod kitten with him as well his like in real life waifu no he guys she's real anyways right so he walks over and they all are just looking at him like oh my god and this is when wallace spots two girls who he kind of recognizes from living in the neighborhood sitting at a table on the other side and you know the kid sits down and uh you know he's all like he's like what's up guys how's it going and they're all like good and wallace is like so you ready to use your riz yet he's like guys i don't really know i'm kind of thinking about letting my stink get a little stinkier but uh, i guess it's up to you guys and wallace is like no 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 we need to like test it now just so you can adjust it like if it doesn't work, you'll know that you need to smell even worse. <laughs> he's kind of being a dick there, bro. But he's like, yeah, he's like, if we need to know, like, if it doesn't work to, like, ramp up the rancidness on your stink. Um, yeah, so, yeah, I think we should do it today. And then Minecraft Kid's like, <sighs> fine. You know, I could be playing Minecraft right now. They're all like, yeah, but ladies, dude. He's like... <laughs> You know, I have plenty of Discord kittens, by the way. I really don't need the ladies right now, but I guess I will cheat on all my various Discord kittens. I've been told by many people I am basically the Minecraft Andrew Tate. <laughs> Dude, I'm having too much fun with this story right now. But anyways, Wallace is like, bro, what? And he's like, okay, man, um, sure, whatever. I don't know how to respond to this. Um, I, I, my brain is malfunctioning because what did you just say? But anyways, uh, over there. And he points to these two girls. He's like, you think you can riz them up, bro? And the Minecraft kid's like, dude. Dude, there is a 100% chance I bag both of them tonight, bro. They will both be in my crib. They will be on my bed watching me play Minecraft and being like, oh my god, Minecraft kid, you're so good. <laughs> Sorry. Anyways, Wallace is like, okay, bet. Let's see it. So the Minecraft kid's like, okay. Steps up, starts like walking over, walks over to the table. Looks like he's about to walk past them. It's very weird. And he walks past them. And Wallace turns to his friend and is like, bro, is this guy not... Is this guy not pursuing the lit? Is he, is he dipping? Is he not going through with it? And the Minecraft kid starts, he doesn't walk past them. He walks around them. He starts circling their table. And then he starts running around their table. And then he throws his arms back and he sonic dashes around the table. It is the most insane thing that Wallace and his friends have ever seen. So yeah, this kid is sonic dashing around the table similar to how like a shark circles its prey it is the weirdest thing ever and eventually the minecraft kid who is extremely not so athletic because minecraft and peeing his pants all day doesn't make him the big strong athlete right he eventually sits down and he's like ah, hi guys <laughs> and the two girls are just looking at him like oh my god what and he's like hey guys watch good my name is Minecraft Kid. And, you know, at this point, Wallace and his friends are sitting close enough to overhear the whole conversation. And they're just like, um, what? Yeah, and the two girls are just not having it right now. He's like, show. I wanted to know what you thought of Minecraft boys. Are you, like, into the e-boys? Because you could say that I'm an e-boy like that. <laughs> <laughs> These two girls are just like, What? no he's like that's fine i was joking about being an e-boy by the way <sighs> yeah it's totally not me i'm like the opposite of that in a super sexy way and these two girls are just like bro what is this kid on right now and wallace and his friends they're dying bro they were trying to they, they just failed the try not to laugh challenge one of one of the bends basically falls over in his seat is on the ground is on the dirty mall floor but he doesn't care bro because he's watching the craziest thing he has ever seen in his entire life go down and he's trying to hold it together. And he's not doing a good job, which I can't blame the man. I, I wouldn't be able to hold it together well either. And Minecraft kid's like, show, with that all being said, are, 
Which one of you girls is coming back to the crib tonight? And they both look at each other. And then one of them is like, oh. And, and look, Wallace is like, oh, no. And one of them's like, what's that? Oh, what's that? Sm- oh. It gets up. One of the girls gets up, runs to the nearest trash can, and <laughs> literally vomits into the trash can. She must have been really faint of smell, uh, faint of stomach, right? Or she must have had a really sensitive stomach because, uh, you know, the smell was really, really bad. But to actually vomit over a smell is pretty intense. So this girl must have just happened to have been had a really weak stomach, or maybe really was on the cusp of vomiting, anyways. But yep, she got up and she was just like puking into the trash can. So the other girl sees this as a perfect opportunity to escape the Minecraft kid. And she gets up and she's like, oh, I have to go talk to my friend. Sorry, goodbye. And Wallace walks over to the Minecraft kid and he's like, oh, no. Maybe this stinks a little much right now. And the Minecraft kid's like, no, 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 no. You guys don't understand. You didn't hear what was going on. You weren't catching on. You weren't, you weren't signaled into the primal vibe like I was. I was luring them in. They were feeling me so hard until the other girl just happened to be sick. It's probably like all the uh, the hormones that were going through her body when she was smelling my smell. Just too much for her, man. Just she just she just couldn't handle it. I think I'm actually going to increase the smell so that the hormones will be so strong that she just immediately comes back to my crib. And uh, you know, at this point, Wallace is like, "Yep, no, that makes sense. Um, one hundred percent. I back this choice. Uh, you are right." 100% right. Correct. I stand by what you're saying. Minecraft kid, you go. Yes. And uh, yeah, eventually Wallace's mom picked them all up. And uh, Wallace had quite the story to click tell. Click on the video on screen right now. I know you'll enjoy it. Just click it. Do it. Today we have a story time of a Gen Z kid who fakes being disabled for attention and clout. This kid literally pretends to be completely disabled from the waist down, but he gets exposed in a really funny and just awkward manner that I know you'll enjoy. So sit back, relax, subscribe if you're new, leave a like on the video to claim your free nothing, and let's jump right into the story. So we're going to call the subscriber who submitted today's story, Gerald. So anyways, Gerald was starting the eighth grade and every single year in his school, there were new kids that would come in and, uh, you know, you're always supposed to give special attention and make sure that the new kids felt good at the new school. As I'm sure a lot of you guys know, if you started a new school, especially not with a bunch of other people, you're one of the few new kids. It's very difficult as a lot of kids have already kind of formed groups and uh, cliques or whatever. So it becomes difficult to get friends, right? So this new kid, right, who we're going to call the Gen Z kid, was not like most kids who showed up. So this kid showed up in a wheelchair, right? So on the very first day, it was very apparent that there was a new kid there because he didn't look like any of the other kids there. And everyone was really good about giving this guy extra special attention to make sure that he was, you know, doing all right. Extra special attention, I don't mean like staring and pointing attention. I mean asking, you know, if he needed, you know, needed help bring stuff, you know, from a book bag, like his book bags around, needed help, uh, you know, guides to class, stuff like that, right? And on the very first day, uh, this kid actually, you know, a lot of people were giving him a lot of positive support, right? So Gerald was one of those kids. No, no one at this moment, literally no one at this moment, believed for a second that this kid was faking being in a wheelchair for attention. Nobody yet. Gerald would be one of the first ones to, you know, find some evidence that was suspicious, and then Gerald would be, you know, basically lambasted and made a pariah because everyone was thinking, wow, how could you accuse, you know, this kid of something with such baseless accusations? You're a heartless man, but Gerald turns out to be correct. But anyways, right, so a couple weeks in the school, what happens is the Gen Z kid, since he got so much attention off the bat for one being a new kid, but also being in a wheelchair, that it almost, he almost like immediately climbed up the social ladder to like the most popular guy. Because basically the Gen Z kid, you know, he got a lot of attention from being in the wheelchair and he definitely abused it. And let me just say that a lot of times kids in school with disabilities, you know, they get picked on a lot and it's really, really unfortunate and you really do hate to see it. But the Gen Z kid was almost like a master manipulator in a sense. And so he kind of used, first of all, this is not a real, he's not actually in a wheelchair, but he kind of used his like 
positioning of getting a lot of attention in the very beginning and then use that to form like, you know, friendships and relationships with people that were kind of already known as the top dog or whatever. And then the wheel and then the Gen Z kid almost immediately became like the number one alpha whatever. And here's the thing. The Gen Z kid was one of the most brutal, meanest people there. However, here's the thing, right? He's already in, like, he's friends with everyone at the top, or the top of the high school social ladder, which, I mean, high school social ladder, it's kind of irrelevant or whatever, but the thing is, he was already friends with a lot of people, and the other thing is, like, if you were mean back to them, you would just be uh, immediately accosted by everyone around you, because, bro, you're being mean to the person who has to, like, you know, who's going around in a wheelchair, like, you're actually an a-hole, bro, like, that's how people would perceive it. So the Gen Z kid was like actually a secret evil genius or whatever, or a super villain basically. And uh, Gerald didn't really think about, like didn't really think that much. Uh, but one day, about a month into school, he was having a sleepover with another friend. We're gonna call this friend Ben. So Gerald and Ben went to the same school and they both knew about the Gen Z kid. And uh, Gerald, you know, I don't know if you guys experienced this, but when I have sleepovers with the boys, at a certain time, like, it's just, like, late enough at night, once you stop playing, I don't know, video games or going out and doing something, and you're just kind of chilling, you guys have those deep talks, if you guys know what I mean. So, Gerald didn't want to be the guy who's, like, I don't know, uh, dunking on the, on, the, on the kid in the wheelchair, bro. He didn't want to be that guy, right? So Gerald very sheepishly is like, oh, what do you think of uh, the Gen Z kid, right? And I say Gen Z kid not because, like, literally in the Gen Z generation. I just mean Gen Z in the fact that, like, wants extreme amounts of attention and will basically use other people's life situations to, to try and get more attention and for their own gain. That's what some people are confused. They're like, oh, well, are you all in Gen Z's and a whole generation? That's what I mean. It's colloquial, not actually the, the, the direct exact term. But, uh, yeah, so Gerald kind of, like, turns his friend Ben, he's like, yay, so, you know, the Gen Z kid, he's, he's pretty popular now. I mean, it's been a while since, like, a new student kind of rose the ranks that quickly. And Ben's like, yeah, he's cool. And Gerald's like, yeah. They were both very obviously trying to, like, skirt around the fact that they did not like this kid at all. Remember, not because of his, any of his disabilities or anything, or quote-unquote, huge quotations, disabilities. This kid was actually taken away from people who really have those disabilities and have to live their life with it without a choice, right? But at this point, everyone believed it was real, so let's speak as if it was real. But then Gerald was like, you know, I thought for a kid who's been through so much hardship that he would uh, that he maybe be a little nicer to other people. And Ben's like, you know, I kind of agree. You know when you, like, you and your friend have this, like, slightly controversial opinion? Maybe it's not even that slightly controversial, but you, you don't know if they share the same opinion, and you know if they, if they disagree with you, they're going to be really mad. So you slightly, slowly kind of, like, kind of, like, ease towards that opinion, right? And then they slightly ease towards that opinion. It's almost like you're going in for a kiss, bro. Oh, wait, wait kiss the homies? Wait a minute. Whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah, but anyways, eventually Gerald and Ben... They're talking, and they just get straight to it, and they're like, I can't believe this kid's such a jerk to everyone. I mean, the Gen Z kid would literally start, like, being, like, uh, like just calling people up for no good reason. He'd be, like, you know, rolling with his, like, group of other popular people, and it would be, like, I don't know, man. It would be, like, uh, he'd be rolling by with, like, the other people, and they'd pass by some kid who was, like, I don't know, a little scruffy-looking. The Gen Z kid's, like, when's the last time you took a shower? And would, like, point at some kid, and all the kids rolling with him would be, like, laughing or whatever. And, dude, if this kid was trying to clap back, you know, they'd all be like, wait a minute, man. This guy's in a wheelchair. You can't come for him. And th th that's the most messed up thing. The Gen Z kid was literally using other people's life struggles, other people's serious issues as a kind of shield to defend against him being a bad person and him being able to do what he wants, which is, you know, absolutely ridiculous, right? So at this point, Ben and Gerald have been talking for like an hour about how like insane it is that everyone just kind of lets this behavior go, that no one has an issue with this, on and on and on. But other than that little conversation that Gerald and Ben have, it's not as if they do that much. It's also not as if they're going to share that opinion. Because the thing is, people will kind of look at them the wrong way. Yeah, this kid was a jerk, but he was also fairly popular. And also, you know, the very, you know, the elephant in the room is people are going to be like, man, like, 
relax. Like, he has a tough life. Like, maybe he's just taking it out on people. So, uh, Gerald and Ben, while they have this opinion and they do share it together, and it was almost like, it was almost like a relief that he was able to share that opinion. I don't know if you guys have ever, like, felt like, ah, I can't say what I'm thinking, and then you're able to, like, I- express that opinion with your best friend or with a friend. It's just such a relief, right? But anyways, um, so they get back to school, and for the next, like, couple weeks, it is just on and on and on of just, like, the kid's getting worse. Like, I, like, everyone's thinking, like, how could this kid possibly get worse? D- the Gen Z kid continues on his rampage. It's like he just refuses to stop. He just continues to be a big jerk. And he just will... It's like he's refusing to stop being a massive jerk to everyone. And it's kind of ridiculous. And he's getting worse and worse. And there's a little bit of growing sentiment against the Gen Z kid, right? But everyone is way too scared to, like, form any opinion. Look, this is only eighth grade... Or to share an opinion. Look, this is only eighth grade right? This is only eighth graders, but this kid might actually be like a, I don't know, a, a, a Marvel supervillain. He's got that crazy planning, bro. Like, I, I don't know, man. Like, he's somehow been able to orchestrate, like, a kind of a social defense system where he can be the worst kid ever and actually be a massive jerk, but no one can oppose him without being weird. So any or being uh, ostracized by their community. Anyways, here's the thing. So this, uh, the, the downfall of the Gen Z kid all started one day. So Gerald was walking alone in the hallways. It was kind of close to after school. And he walks around and he tor- turns a corner and he sees the Gen Z kid. And for a split second, he thinks to himself, wait a minute, because he looks at the Gen Z kid and it looks like he sat down. It looks like the Gen Z kid just sat down into his wheelchair, which doesn't make sense. The lower half of his body doesn't move, but he was certain what he saw. But he also, while he was certain what he saw, he was thinking, well, maybe it was just some kind of an illusion. Maybe I just wasn't seeing things right. There was a lot of possibilities. And eventually, you know, Gerald does turn the corner and he's in the same hallway as the Gen Z kid. And, uh, Gerald is, like, so distracted in thought that he kind of, like, trips over his own feet a little bit. He doesn't trip and fall on the ground, but I don't know if you guys have ever experienced this. I definitely have. Where you're walking, but you're just not paying attention, and you just kind of, like, trip over your own feet, but catch yourself pretty quickly. And as he's walking by, the Gen Z kid's like, oh, oh, man, watch out, your feet are there. Kind of as, like, a joke of, like, you just tripped over nothing, bro. How do you trip over nothing? Like, seriously, how do you trip over nothing? Kind of like a joke like that. And, you know, I don't know, Gerald is kind of looking at him like, all right, man. And Gerald just keeps walking, and he just can't get over the fact that he knew what he saw. He was like, no, this this can't be right. Because, like, while he, had, while he was thinking that the Gen Z kid was, a, you know, a pretty big jerk, and there was no question about that, at the same time, Gerald did not for a single second until this, or before this, ever thought that the Gen Z kid was faking, you know, being in a wheelchair. He just thought that, wow, like... This kid is, like, a jerk and also happens to be in a wheelchair. Like, you can be both of those at the same time, you know what I mean? So, uh, he, Gerald just can't get this out of his mind. He just is, like, he, he just keeps walking, keeps thinking about it, and for the rest of, the like, the day, he can't focus in class. Actually, no, not focus in class because it was towards the end of the day. For the rest of the time at home trying to do homework, he was, like, struggling, bro. He was struggling to pay attention because he was like, I know what I saw. I, I, I know what I saw. Yeah, so he gets back home, and this is where he does a little uh, investigating. So basically, the Gen Z kid told everyone a very specific story about what happened in his life and how he got there. Basically, the Gen Z kid said he got in a really bad car crash when he was four years old, and that, you know, uh, I, I, I don't know, like after that point, he had to be in a wheelchair, and the bottom, like his, his, like, uh, bo- like his bottom half didn't work, right? Or it was like paralyzed or whatever. So that was the story that he told everybody. And uh, Gerald was just like, he's like, I, I, I'm just so, cute. like, he goes on this kid's Instagram. And sure enough, this kid has like one post and it's him like holding a fish or whatever. And he's in the wheelchair. And it was, it was very recent, right? It was a post made like while this kid was at school and he had no other posts. So what Gerald does is he goes to this kid's uh, tagged post. So on Instagram, by the way, follow me on Instagram at Connor Pugs. You can submit your stories there, and also you can watch my shorts on there or reels or whatever it's called, right? Uh, I do little short stories on there. Anyways, right, so he goes in the kid's tagged photos. He's looking through the tagged photos, and he's just, you know, finding, like, I don't know. He's not finding that much. 
And he's finding, like, a lot of, like, memes or whatever that his friends posted on their Instagram and, like, tagged him in or whatever. I don't know, but, like, back when I was in eighth grade, I would just, like, screenshot funny memes and post them on my main Instagram. Like, now I just don't post anything, bro. I'm just like, nah, I'm not posting anything. But that's how I'd use it back in the day. But he just kept scrolling, and he found the photo at the very bottom of the tag. It was from five years ago, so quite a while ago. But the Gen Z kid was definitely older than four at this point. So it was a photo of a bunch of kids all standing up together. First of all, <laughs> I think you guys caught it. They're all standing up together. But it must have been either a camp or a school they used to go to or some kind of after school program or something. And uh, since they were in eighth grade, it was like four or five years ago or whatever, you know, the Gen Z kid was probably like third or fourth grade. When you're in fourth grade, you are significantly older than four, unless you're baby Einstein or whatever. But he was obviously much older than four. And Gerald is just staring at this photo. And he can't stop staring at the photo. Because he's looking at the photo, and every kid is standing upright. And there's a kid who looks like the Gen Z kid when he was like three or four years younger, probably. This kid was standing up. This kid was 100% standing up, no questions. No wheelchair in sight, no nothing. And Gerald is just like, oh my God. Like this kid cleaned up his profile. Like he must have like, he probably had photos from back in the day that he scrubbed and all this kind of stuff, right? And maybe if any of his older friends who still follow him commented on the post saying, wait, you're in a wheelchair now? Deleted those comments, right? He did a good job scrubbing his profile except for one photo. Here's the thing though, Gerald made a bit of a mistake. Instead of screenshotting the photo, he just assumed, oh, well, you know, this is in the tagged, so I can just tell people to go check out the Gen Z kids tagged photos. So anyways, the next day in school, Gerald immediately is like, all right, well, I gotta spread the truth because, you know, even though I do have an agenda against this kid, I don't really like him. I, I, it's better that people know the truth and that's the most important thing. Anyways, though, so right, Gerald now has information. Gerald now has proof that the whole time the Gen Z kid has been faking it. Gerald doesn't totally understand why. Gerald doesn't understand how. Gerald doesn't understand a lot of details. However, what Gerald does know is that there is a photo on this kid's Instagram page that shows him very clearly standing up when, you know, he can't stand up. This kid cannot stand up, bro, at least from what he's been told or what he's told everyone else. So Gerald knows this and he knows he's, you know, this is what he's going to spread. So there was a very strict no phones policy at school. Everyone's phones had to be in their backpacks and like teachers would legitimately like take someone's phone for an entire week if they saw it. So the problem was, was that for the longest time, not, not, not the longest time, but for the duration of the day, you couldn't be on your phone. A few kids would occasionally like sneak them around, but just, just the whole risk of having your phone taken away for an entire week, you weren't even allowed to get it at the end of the day. You had to wait till the end of the week to get it, man. So a lot of kids were just like, all right, fine, whatever, we just won't go on our phones. So here's the problem, right? Gerald immediately starts telling everyone in person about what's happened. So instead of sending them the Instagram post, over Instagram DMs the night before or waiting till he got back to send Instagram, like the Instagram post to people. What Gerald does, and he admits this was a mistake in retrospect, was he just simply tells people, if you go on, this, on the Gen Z kids Instagram tonight and you go to his tag section, you scroll all the way down, you will find a photo from three to four years ago in which the Gen Z kid is very clearly standing up. And if you remember his story, well, he was like paralyzed in a car crash at the age of three or four, not like 12 or 13. Huge discrepancy right there. So word spread extremely quickly. This is a relatively small school, so word tends to spread kind of quickly, but especially some allegation of this like magnitude. The other thing that happened was that Gerald's name was attached to this allegation. Basically, he said this, and everyone went around saying Gerald is saying that the Gen Z kid is faking it and he has proof. Real quick, if you made it this far into the video, comment proof down below. That'll be the secret word of the day. And while you're in the comment section, check out the pinned comment on the video. That's a link to the Spotify page in which I, in which I upload all these story times as podcasts on there. And also a link to three other channels I run and post daily on. So please subscribe to all three of those uh, to help me out. And yeah, let's get right back to it. So anyways, right... Uh, 
word spread extremely quickly that Gerald was claiming that the Gen Z kid faked everything. So pretty big al uh, accusations, uh, allegations, whatever, right? And uh, here's the thing. So Gerald was, uh, he, you know, he told everyone people were talking about it and uh, no one really had access to their phones. A lot of people wanted to, but... What ended up happening was the school day eventually ended, and like every, this was like everybody was talking about it. And when I mean everybody, I mean everybody was talking about this, bro. Like everyone was talking about it. So uh, yeah, Gerald, uh, you know, he, he got back home, or he's getting in the car with his mom, and he goes into his backpack and he pulls out his phone. After about like five minutes, he receives a text notification from someone in his class. Not that he's like super close friends with, but I think they must have had like a uh, either a grade large group chat or maybe he needed to exchange numbers for a project they did in class but for some reason right he had gerald's personal number and uh, so gerald receives a text from some guy he's kind of friends with being like and it says something along the lines of bro why did you make up that stuff about the gen z kid so gerald is like super confused at this point and he responds to the text what do you mean and the kid says I went to the Gen Z kids page and I can't find the post. Like, there's no post at all. And, you know, Gerald's like, what? So Gerald opens up his Instagram and he goes to the post or he goes to the Gen Z kids account. And he goes to the tag section and he scrolls all the way down and he keeps looking. He looks all for it. Like, he's like, oh, maybe it's not the very last one and I remembered it wrong. Maybe it's like a couple posts down, but not the very last. Gerald looks through every single tagged post and it's gone. The, basically, the proof of the Gen Z kid faking it is gone. And that's when Gerald realizes that what must have happened was that because word spread so quickly and that Gerald didn't attach any actual proof with his, uh, with his accusations, he told people to go look for it, word must have got back to the Gen Z kid. The Gen Z kid brushed it off like, oh, no, no, no. Then the Gen Z kid must have immediately taken the risk and gone on his phone and removed himself from the tagged post, right? Because you can go to Instagram and you can rem remove yourself if you're tagged in a post. And the thing is, Gerald, I said this earlier, never got a screenshot, bro. He never got a screenshot. He never, he could not for the life of him remember the name of the account that like tagged him because it was like, uh, it was like, uh, I don't know, uh, Megatron 48 768 Pi Square. It's like some crazy username that you just won't remember. So at this point, Gerald's like, oh, no. So, yeah, within the next 30 minutes, Gerald probably receives 25 different messages, either on Snapchat, Instagram DMs, text message. Uh, probably got a few faxes coming in, too, basically being like, dude, that's crazy for you to like. It was either along the lines of, that's messed up for you to make that stuff up about the Gen Z kid, or something like, dude, can you send me the post? I can't find it. Or just like, wait, are you sure that you saw what you saw? Like around, it was basically a bunch of variations of those three messages. Yeah, so Gerald was like, oh, crap, bro. There's no way. Uh, yeah, Gerald got bamboozled. The Gen Z kid, he should have realized he got, you got to get screenshots. You got to get the receipts, man. Especially on something where the guy can get rid of the receipts. And the thing is, too, if the school didn't have such strict rules about having no phones or whatever, kid probably would have just pulled out his phone, checked and been like, yep, here's proof, right? But no, people just waited till they got back. But I guess the Gen Z kid realized that he needed to take the risk and go on his phone. And honestly, like, Gerald didn't even see this coming. I think he totally forgot about the fact that you can remove yourself from an Instagram post. So yeah, Gerald got completely frickin' bamboozled here, bro. He got absolutely owned. And let me just say that socially... He got really owned. So, yeah, he received a ton of text messages that night. Along, you know, I already told you the three. Basically, the either being like, how dare you do this, or the I can't find the post, or are you sure you saw it correct, bro? And, uh, yeah, so Gerald, so, like, Gerald wasn't like, I don't know, the popular kid that, you know, oh, no, his reputation's ruined. The only thing he has going for him is the fact that he's quote-unquote popular in high school, which... Oh, yeah, that means so much, bro, of course. Yeah, but at the same time, like, Gerald, like, would have kind of, like, friends, people. I don't know if you guys have this, but, like, more casual friends in class, people he would be... There are some people Gerald was really close with, but there's also a lot of people that he was just kind of friends with. And, like, people he'd sit with, people he'd get lunch with, people he'd walk with. Like, you know, he was a... He wasn't necessarily a popular guy in the sense he was, like, I don't know, on the hockey team or 
had some kind of like social clout like that, but he was a very kind of like, he was a very talkative person and he spoke to a lot of people. And for that reason, he was always like, he had a lot of people that he was kind of casually friends with and not like two very close friends and that's it. So yeah, for the next week, Gerald has like one of the worst social experiences of his life. He's completely ostracized as everyone thinks that he made this up about the Gen Z kid just to make him look bad, which not only are you making some kid look bad based off, you know, factless or just like not true accusations, you're also trying to like tear down the kid that like already has a difficult life because he's disabled and in a wheelchair. It's a terrible, terrible, terrible look for Gerald. Yeah, so this is probably one of the hardest weeks because a lot, some people still hang out with him, some people don't really care. Like, obviously, or not, I shouldn't say obviously, but his closest friends are still friends with him. That didn't change, which is pretty cool. I shouldn't say obviously because, I don't know, sometimes close friends aren't actually as close as you think. And even some of his casual friends don't care and they're like, all right, bro, whatever. But a lot of his kind of like casual friends, while they weren't like, you can't sit with us, a lot of them would like, I don't know. There's a lot of like uh, things people can do to kind of, uh, you know, imply that they don't want to hang out with you, such as you sit down somewhere in your unassigned assigned seats and then they decide to sit somewhere different, even though they've sat in the exact same spot for half a year. I don't know, if you normally walk with someone, they quickly walk to their next class instead of waiting for you, or they stay behind. Just a lot of, like, things that Gerald was noticing that people were definitely avoiding him, which partly he couldn't blame because he's like, dang, I don't know if I'd want to hang out with me too if, like, I believed the rumor going, or I believed what people believe. And Gerald also didn't blame people for believing what they believed. I mean, people went to the Instagram page and nothing was there. Why would they believe him? Of course, all this did end up changing when the Gen Z kid exposes himself as a fraud in front of basically everyone at the school. And Gerald gets an instant redemption when that happens. So let me just kind of jump to that situation. So it's about two weeks and after Gerald, like two weeks of like turmoil for Gerald where no one wants to hang out with them. People are always like, a lot of people are talking about him, about he kind of, he got exposed. Oh my God, Gerald seems like such a nice guy, but he's making fun of the Gen Z kid, making up rumors about him. Like, wow, Gerald's actually a snake, blah, 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 all this kind of stuff, right? And so it's a really tough week for Gerald or two weeks or whatever. And uh, this school doesn't have any fire drills. I think they have like the most lame excuse for a fire drill you've ever seen. Like, I think the school, what they'll do is they'll like, I don't know, I think they'll put on like, they'll be like, all right guys, if there's a fire, what do you do? And they say, uh, walk out or like, I don't know, walk outside. And the teacher's like, good, okay, let's get back to class. So they never, never really had an actual fire drill. So uh, when the fire alarm went off during the school meeting, when everyone was there, it was almost a bit of chaos that ensued. Yeah, so they were in just a meeting, and since they never had the fire alarm ever go off, because they never had a real fire drill, as I was just explaining, when the fire alarm goes off, everyone freaks out and panics. This is why you have fire drills. So when it actually goes off, and by the way, there was no fire. It was like, I don't know, some kind of bug got into the system, like an actual physical bug climbed in there and set it off or something. But uh, yeah, when there's, that's why you do drills. So when it actually happens, you don't panic, freak out, all this kind of stuff, right? Um, so anyways, right, uh, everyone freaks out, and everyone's sitting in the auditorium. So immediately the teacher runs up to the, to the speakers, like, everyone get up, file, single file out of here, go immediately to the front lawn, and people were, were cramming the door. It was an absolute disaster, bro. It was a blank show. It was not good right now. And I think afterwards they started implementing actual fire drill just because of how bad this was, even though it wasn't an actual fire. But anyways, everyone immediately gets up and starts running towards the door. Listen to my sentence, the words I just said very closely because I did not misspeak. Everyone gets up and starts running towards the door. Everyone. You know who's in that meeting? The Gen Z kid. So everyone, at the moment, no one really notices. Maybe a few people are like, wait, what? I'm hallucinating, bro. But no one really notices as everyone is running very quickly to try and get out the door. And so they all get outside and they all kind of like, form a big clump or whatever in the grass, the fields outside, and the teachers are like, all right, uh, like go by your, everyone, find your fifth period class, like find your teacher for your fifth period class, they're going to take your attendance, make sure you're all here. Fifth period was going to be right after school meeting anyways. So everyone gets in those lines, right? And Gerald is like kind of all frazzled or whatever as the energy was insane, and he was like, oh my god, like everyone's going crazy. 
But he looks over, he's just kind of like casually looking around. And he looks at the Gen Z kid who is standing in line, standing. And the people in the Gen Z's like kids is like class or whatever, the fifth period class are kind of looking at him, looking at him with this weird look. And Gerald taps like the shoulder of his friend, Ben, who happens to be in the fifth grade class. The one, remember way back when he had a, like a sleepover and him and Ben were like, oh, that kid's the worst. Taps his shoulder, points at the Gen Z kid, and sh- he's standing, he's standing there. So slowly, everyone starts staring at the Gen Z kid. And the Gen Z kid doesn't even realize what just happened. And so, yeah, uh, everyone starts to realize that the Gen Z kid is standing there. And eventually, the Gen Z kid realizes what's up. And he, like, he just, st- he freezes. Like, he was kind of, like, casually, like, standing there. But you could just tell that, like, Gerald could tell the moment that the Gen Z kid realized that he messed up. Because the Gen Z kid was just standing there stiff as a freaking broomstick, frozen with fear because he doesn't know how to get out of this situation. He's probably going through like a billion calculations in his head of, oh, what's the most optimal thing I can do to save myself? But he went through all of them and none of them worked. Zero. There's no way to explain this. He starts like turning to his classmates and be like, oh my God, guys, I don't know how this happened, but I'm, I, I, must, I must have been cured. Like I, I'm feeling so much better. And they're all just looking at him. Because they knew the rumors that he was faking it. And then they all were like, wow, he got accused of faking it and it's false? So everyone in the back of their mind was now kind of like open to the idea that he might be faking it because a rumor spread about that even though that rumor was proven to be false. So now that there was proof that all of them could see the Gen Z kid was faking it, now there was nothing the Gen Z kid would do. From that day on, the Gen Z kid did not come in with a wheelchair because he's not actually disabled, right? He's an he walks normally immediately to the very bottom of the social structure no one wanted to hang out with him even the kids that nobody liked didn't want to hang out with him no one wanted to hang out with him and gerald immediately kind of got the whole like no one apologized to gerald which is pretty funny but like the, you know how i was telling you earlier that some people who like stopped walk, like would like kind of like walk faster than him or wouldn't wait for him or would sit at different tables all those people just started hanging out with gerald again like nothing just happened One thing I will say is Gerald will always remember the people that stuck with him through thick and thin, the people that either believed him or not, but knew his character, so decided to kind of, like, make a bet on him. Make a bet on him actually being a good person and not doing what people said that he did. Gerald will never forget those people. And still to this day, the Gen Z kid is super ostracized. And uh, Gerald said that actually by the end of that year, the Gen Z kid had moved schools and was going to another school. So by the time ninth grade rolls around, he will no longer be in the school with Jared. If you want to support the channel, the best thing you can do is watch another video like the one on screen right now. Today, we got a story time of a crazy furry couple that tries to stalk and harass the subscriber, but ends up embarrassing themselves so incredibly hard on Zoom class that they completely drop out of the class. Anyway, so this happened more or less kind of recently. And uh, so Alex's class, uh, they, they went back to school. They weren't on Zoom class normally. But what would happen in about a week? Would there be a flu that went around? So the school just told the kids to stay home for a couple days and take class on Zoom. But before all that happened, Alex had the misfortune of crossing paths with the furry couple. The first thing I want to say is, like, I know that some people who, you know, engage in the furry stuff watch my videos and enjoy it. I just want to let you know that I have nothing necessarily against it. You can do whatever you want to do in your free time, and genuinely, I don't really see anything wrong with it. However, if you act like these people in the video, well, then that's, that's where we start to draw a line of that there's actually something wrong with it. So anyways, Alex was minding his business one day. This is where it all started. And he was walking down the halls of his school. And he was walking down the halls of his school when he accidentally bumps into this kid. This kid's a little bit strange. He always wears the same green hoodie. Not a Minecraft hoodie, by the way. He's not also a Minecraft kid. You know, the last, uh, you know, he wears, you know, this green hoodie. It's all, I don't know, it's always stained and smudged up. He's got this very weird odor slash musk aroma that always comes off of him, and it definitely wasn't intentional. He has this very bad kind of, like, crappy mustache. Guys, if you're, like, a, if you're just, like, hitting puberty, don't grow out your mustache, man. It never looks good. Even now, like, I'm, like, 20 or something. I'm about to be 21. I can grow, like, a lot of facial hair. It doesn't look good. It doesn't look good. Facial hair looks good, but only when it's fully formed. Anyways, this kid also had a little fur tail that he always kind of walked around in. So Alex doesn't know this kid personally. 
but he accidentally bumps into him in the hallway. And this kid, who we're going to f- call the, the furry boyfriend, um, was with the furry girlfriend. And the furry boyfriend must have thought that, like, oh, my God, like, Alex bumped into me. He disrespected my honor in front of my girlfriend. I can't let this stand. So he's like, excuse me, what did you just do? So Alex is like, no, bro, sorry, like, I accidentally bumped into you, my fault. So Alex tries to do what every other normal person in the situation would do. He just tries to walk away. I mean, what's the point of actually trying to start anything with the furry guy? Like, you already know that nothing good is going to come out of this. However, the furry guy was not going to let this go. He's like, "Eh, bro, excuse me. Like, you can't just let me, you can't just bump into me and disrespect my honor in front of my girlfriend and then expect to get away with such madness and tweezing. And uh, Alex turns and, like, looks at him and uh, looks at, like, the girlfriend. And she was, like, she was low-key playing into this. She was enjoying this. She was kind of like, yeah, honey, go get him. Like, you're really showing him who's boss. And Alex is like, all right, bro, I don't know. Alex literally walks away from this. Like, he doesn't want to engage in this anymore. So Alex gets up and walks away. Because, you know, he's like, you know what, man? I'm not dealing with this. Not today. So he gets up and he leaves. And so, you know, he can kind of hear, like, the furry boyfriend yelling at him, like, you can't just get up and leave. Like, you can't do that. But Alex is probably thinking to himself, yeah, and why can't I just get up and leave? Why can't I just do that? Like, dude, come on now. So, yeah, Alex doesn't think much of it. Alex kind of does genuinely think, um, okay, who cares, whatever. One thing that, you know, is true is Alex does have a class with the furry guy, with a furry boyfriend. Um, However, it's a really large class. There's probably about 50 people in this class. So when I say it's a large class, I mean it's a really large class. So there's probably about 50 people in this class, and the furry boyfriend always sits in the very, very back. So while Alex was aware of him, aware of his presence, uh, Alex never had a single conversation with this kid before. He didn't even think that the furry boyfriend knew who he was, let alone knew that they were in the same class together. However, this would be proven wrong, because Alex would be stalked by the furry boyfriend in just a second. So let's, let's skip ahead to the next day. Alex gets into school. And as he's walking into school, he's walking through the front doors. He hear he like, he, you know that feeling when you feel like someone's watching you? Most of the time, it's, I don't know, it's just, you know, your brain's playing tricks on you or you're being really just like freaked out over nothing. But one thing I will say, and I think I say this throughout, throughout a lot of my videos, is sometimes, guys, you got to pay attention to your instincts because sometimes your instincts really do have something like, you know, it's your body's way of kind of like, thinking it's your body's evolution through all the times where we've been in like the jungle and there's been like predators and all this kind of stuff there's there's stuff that your you know conscious can't understand but your subconscious understands in this case it might not have been a mountain lion but alex's subconscious was 100 percent right because the furry kid was slowly stalking behind him So anyways, the furry kid is stalking, is like coming up behind him, stalking him. And Alex doesn't even really realize until it's too late. So he turns around and the furry kid like literally takes a, like takes this marker and does like a big slash on his sweatshirt. And Alex is like, dude, because it was like one of the black permanent uh, Sharpie markers. And the furry kid is like, this is the mark of the beast. It is coming from me. I am the beast, by the way. And, you know, Alex is like, dude, what are you doing? Like, you just sla- you just like slashed a mark on my sweatshirt. Like, that's not cool, bro. He's like, you don't understand. It is a mark of the beast. Uh, you are officially my enemy. And Alex is like, what? Because he's kind of like forgotten at this point that he bumped into this kid and allegedly, quote unquote, disrespected his honor or whatever this kid wants to say. So Alex is like, bro, like, can you just, like, leave me alone? Like, and the, the kid doesn't take this as, like, leave me alone because you're weird. Takes this as, oh, my God, oh, good heavens, please leave me alone. I'm so scared of you. And the kid's like, I get it that you're afraid of uh, the beast right now. <laughs> Guys, never call yourself the beast. Unless you're literally Mr. Beast, do not call yourself the beast. Yeah. But this kid's like, you have, you have gone against the beast and just the mark of the beast and the beast will be after you. And he kind of like turns around and he like shakes his butt as to like shake his tail. But his tail literally falls off when he does this and it falls onto the ground. And Alex is like, you drop something. And he's like, oh, my tail. I mean, <laughs> he literally, literally just hisses at him. Does like a Nikocado avocado hiss, bro. He takes his tail and like runs away. 
So Alex at this point is like, oh my god, like, jeez. Uh, so yeah, uh, Alex has to deal with a lot of nonsense for the next like couple weeks or so. For example, the uh, furry kid would like do a lot, nothing like too bad. Like the furry kid never like stole anything like valuable. He never like physically assaulted him or anything. There was nothing really that bad that was ever going on. However, right, uh, the furry kid was being extremely annoying again and again. Like, this kid was actually being super annoying. He would do stuff, like, he would start barking at Alex as Alex was, like, walking down the school hallway. So, obviously, everyone was a little bit weirded out by this behavior. I mean, because it's weird behavior, that's why they were weirded out by this behavior, man, because it's freaking weird. Um, but anyways, yeah, Alex would just be like, oh, my God, I have to deal with this again or whatever. And uh, yeah, um, so this behavior came to a stop suddenly when a flu went around the school. So it's your very standard uh, yearly flu. And uh, ever since Zoom classes were introduced, some schools have been using them to their advantage. One thing that personally makes me a little bit sad is I've heard that there's actually like not going to be school day or snow days anymore because instead of coming into school, you can just go on Zoom. Yeah, so anyways, yeah, that makes me kind of sad because I feel like instead of going in, like on snow days, it was always so special, at least for me, being able to wake up, look outside and see all the snow on the ground, knowing that I wouldn't go like be going into school. I could hang out with my friends for one day, but I feel like now they're just going to have you on Zoom, which is really sad to me as that was a big fun part of my childhood. Anyways, though, so there was a flu going around the school. And so that Monday they were informed that for the next two days, they were going to go on Zoom class so that the sick kids could stay home and that the kids who didn't know that they were sick wouldn't come into school and spread it anymore. So anyways, they logged into Zoom class on that day. So little did Alex know that this Zoom class was probably going to be the most eventful Zoom class of his entire life. This Zoom class was about to be one of the cringiest, most embarrassing, most difficult Zoom classes that he's ever been a part of. This was going to be the Zoom class that the uh, furry kid and his... And her, and, his girlfriend, the furry girlfriend, were about to embarrass themselves so bad on Zoom class that, yeah, they were literally going to drop the class because of it, or at least the furry boyfriend. The girlfriend wasn't in the class. And because of that, the furry boyfriend would have actually com will actually completely leave Alex alone because he doesn't even want to associate. He's so embarrassed. So strap in because this is pretty crazy. So, yeah, let's, you know what, let's just jump to the fateful day. Let's just jump to the fateful class that will go down in infamy forever. So anyways, everyone logs into Zoom class like normal. And I'm sure you guys can remember Zoom class or Microsoft Teams or Google Meet or whatever you guys use. Basically, you'd log in, you know, you'd have your camera, you'd have your mic or whatever. And as soon as you logged in, 90% of people would literally just log off and turn off their mic and turn off their camera so that there wouldn't be any video footage. Video is the secret word of the day. So if you made it this far into the video, if you made it this far into the video, comment video down below in the comment section. And while you're down there, make sure to check out the pinned comment on this video as there's a link to the Spotify page in which I upload all these stories as a podcast, as you can listen on there. And also a link to my second channel in which I upload stories every day like I do here, except I upload them from Reddit instead of from you guys. So make sure to subscribe to that channel too. But anyways, in this, in this Zoom class, right, they all log in. And the teacher's like, hey guys, can you please uh, turn on your cameras and uh, unmute your mic for a second? So everyone turns on their cameras and unmutes their mic. Because one thing over Zoom class, if you guys, I don't know if you guys had this happen, but everyone would literally just turn off their cameras and turn off their mics, and then they would just go off and literally do anything else besides class. So the teacher, at least at first, is like, guys, can you please say hello? So everybody turns off or, or turns on their cameras, turns on their mics, and he basically does attendance. So he's like, hey, is, and this takes like forever, bro. This takes like 10 minutes. Normally he does it as people come in, but I don't know why he was taking this long, but he did. Because it takes a long time to go through 50 people. Yeah, so everyone does that. And the thing is, right, this is, that was, that one action, the one action of telling people, hey guys, can you unmute your mics for a second, literally doomed the furry kid. Because while the furry kid does turn off his camera, it must have just, he must have just forgotten to mute his mic. So anyways, they start class. And here's the thing, everyone else's mics are muted, everyone else's cameras are off and most people aren't paying attention. 
So that's when, uh, and I think the teacher Loki wasn't paying attention either because the teacher was like not paying, cause like everyone else was muted. So I feel like the teacher, I think what the teacher did was had their camera pointed towards like a whiteboard or something. So the teacher wasn't even really listening to what people were saying. They were just going through lecture, whatever. So that's when, right, Alex is just minding his own business. He's kind of just chilling. He's just kind of like, you know, in the Zoom class. And that's when he hears, that's when he hears something a little bit, uh, a little bit strange. The, uh, the furry kid starts talking, right? And it's very obvious that he's not talking, asking a question. Like, it, it, I don't know, you're just like, you say something in a certain tone of voice when you ask a teacher a question versus when you're talking to someone. I feel like it's pretty obvious to tell the difference between the two. So the furry kid was very clearly not talking to the teacher, meaning that he must have been talking to someone else and not realize his mic was off. However, if he was just having a normal conversation, who would have cared? Like, everyone forgets to turn off their mic sometimes, everyone forgets to do whatever, these things happen. However, this was very far from a normal conversation. Because the furry kid was having a conversation with the furry girlfriend, right? And it was not a normal conversation. All right, guys, I got to give you a cringe warning. So leave a like in the video or you will die of cringe. No joke. Not nah, like I'm not, not trolling you guys. I actually got to leave a like or you will die of cringe. If you leave a like, though, that'll actually protect you from the cringe radiation that will be coming from this video. Yeah, so uh, basically um, what ends up happening is the furry kid is like, Hey, baby. Yeah. And you hear on, like, the line, What's up, my sugar fox? So at this point, Alex is like, Oh, God, bro. Oh, hell nah. Oh, hell nah. This, like, vine boom thud sound effect. Like, the Among Us imposter sound. Like, like all this kind of stuff is going off in his head, bro. Like, it is just a bad moment to be alive for Mr. For Mr. Alex. And the whole class is like, Wait, yo, what just happened? The thing is, though, I think, like, the furry kid must have had his, like, his mic muted or something. Not his mic muted, but his, uh, his audio really down low. So he, so just so he wouldn't have to pay attention to the teacher and could listen to his girlfriend, right? And he's like, hey, baby. Meow. There's, like, some kind of, like, cr crappy cringe meow sound. And everyone's like, oh, hell nah, bro. What the, uh-huh. Right? And he's like... Hey, do you want to rub tails late? Because remember, they got like some furry stuff going on. And here's the thing, bro. I don't care if you want to rub tails with your significant other. Look, I don't know what that means, bro. I don't really care. But look, you can't be like attacking people, saying that you're part of the furry cult and will like eat them or whatever this kid did to Alex, and then expect to get away with something like this. Yeah, he's basically like, yeah, do you want to rub tails later? And she's like, yeah. And then we can stroke each other's tails. I'm like, yo, what? And Alex is like, hey, this person's sus. What is going on? Someone please stop them. So obviously, right, after this conversation goes on, even for a few seconds, the entire class is like, yo, 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 someone, st someone stop them. Someone, please, God, please, no. Yeah, so I think someone, because they don't really know what to do, because no one is, like, close enough with the furry guy to, like, text him, because they don't have, so no one has his personal number, no one has him on Instagram, because he only has, like, Tumblr and what's Wattpad or whatever, right? Um, so, sure enough, they are just basically have no way to contact him, because they don't want to start yelling and interrupt the class, but at this point, they might as well do so. I think some people try to send him a message over on Zoom, but it's not like he's paying attention to that anyways, because he's very busy in his role play with his girlfriend on Zoom class right now. So Alex, low-key, bro, he's not going to lie. He's kind of sitting back and eating popcorn while this whole thing's going on, because he's like, you know what, man? Maybe I would have stepped in and done something, but uh, you know what? Maybe you shouldn't have been so weird to me, too. Maybe you shouldn't have tried to make my life difficult because I bumped into you in the hallway once, and then you want to become the big man for your girlfriend, bro. I don't know. Maybe if that didn't happen, I would have been nicer. Yeah, so then the furry guy went on to say, like, Oh, my kitten, mm, do you want to hear about how I bullied Alex in class? And Alex's eyes, like, kind of perk up. He's like, oh, God. And the furry girlfriend's like, yeah, say how you dominated him again. And Alex is like, yo, 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 chill, chill, chill. So the furry guy's like, yeah. I literally clawed him, and he was like, oh, please let me go, no. And that's when Alex is like, oh, hell nah, bro, I'm not letting this slide. So Alex literally, like, unmutes his mic. He's like, hey, class, 
interrupting everyone, right? Hey, class, that's not what happened. Uh, the furry kid came up to me, splashed some water in me, and I was like, can you go away? And then he hissed at me and ran away. That's what actually happened. So at this point, the whole class, like, breaks into laughter, not just because, like, Alex, like, exposed the kid, but also because Alex was, like, the one to break the awkward, cringe silence. And then once Alex broke the awkward, cringe silence, it was almost like Alex broke some dam to a massive waterway, and it all came pouring out. So, yeah, everyone was hysterically laughing at this point. They just couldn't keep it in because, like, bro, I don't know about you, but I think I'd, I don't know how I'd act in this situation. But that's when the teacher's like, hey, hey, like, what's going on over here? And uh, the teacher comes over and, like, I guess, like, the furry kid must not have even noticed because his volume was down or whatever. And he's like, yeah. Like, tell me about your day, baby. Describe yourself. What are you wearing right now? And the whole class just keeps laughing. So the teacher's yelling like, furry kid, furry kid, obviously says his real name. But we're calling him furry kid for the sake of this video. Yeah, but uh, anyways, right, eventually the teacher is able to like get like is able to yell loud enough that the furry kid's like, oh, what? And he like realizes that his mic's been off the whole time. So the whole class is like laughing and the teacher's like, furry kid, you've had your mic on the whole time. Can you please turn it off or be quiet? We can hear everything that you've said. Yeah, so I don't think the teacher even realized how bad the conversation the furry kid was having. I bet he just thought that the kid was having a phone call and was like, oh, I'm going to do this kid a favor and let him know that we can all hear it. Little did he know that, you know, the phone call was not your average phone call. It was about, like, stroking each other's furry tails and, like, talking about how he dominated Alex. And then Alex came in and was like, no, you didn't, bro. So, yeah, um, after this, the furry kid literally just leaves the Zoom class, like, just disappears. And the teacher's like, oh, uh, okay, I guess I'm going to have to mark this guy off for attendance then, but whatever. Um, so he goes back to teaching. And two days later, or the next Zoom class, uh, the furry kid doesn't show up. And Alex is like, well, you know what I mean? I get it. Like, you need some time to recover from such an epic self-own right there. Like, I totally don't blame this kid. I would probably do the same. Yeah, but what actually ended up happening was the furry kid didn't even come to class the next day and didn't come to class after that. So while the furry kid still attended the high school as he can't just like drop out because he wants to, he worked with the administration saying that something happened in the class and he physically cannot return. So yeah, the kid was able to drop the class. It's actually really hard to drop classes in high school, especially once you've done them for a little bit. A lot easier in college, but yeah, the kid drops the class and after this, he stops messing with Alex because he realizes that, you know, he just admitted something that wasn't true to the entire class, and he heard from other people that Alex, like, owned him or whatever. So, yeah, he leaves Alex alone. Alex basically never sees this kid again, except once or twice, like, very far away in the lunchroom. He sees him at the back of the cafeteria. And, uh, yeah, happily ever after, I guess. Leave a like for nothing. I mean, dude, I'm honest, so leave a like. Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome back to a brand new story. And just for a second, imagine you're just chilling in class. You're having a pretty good old time, right? And then all of a sudden, right, this Roblox kid goes to the front of the classroom and just confesses his love via a Roblox video of him doing certain things. Yeah, I, I can't even really get into it. I know this sounds very vague, but uh, it's really bad. So sit back, relax, subscribe if you're new. And let's just jump right into it. So anyways, we're going to call the subscriber who submitted this story, Bryce. So anyways, there's this kid in Bryce's class who was always playing Roblox. Like, he always sat in the back of the class, and he always had his computer out. He was playing Roblox. I think the teacher kind of knew that this was the case, but there are so many kids in the class, and the teacher was kind of with the mindset, like, if they want to learn, they'll learn, and if not, like, I'm not going to interfere, which I don't know if that's a good mindset or a bad mindset, but either way, it just was how it was. So anyways, he was kind of known as the Roblox kid because every single day, without fail, he would be playing Roblox. Like, if you ever saw him, he would be playing Roblox, and sometimes he'd even have the sound on, which is kind of funny, but whatever, right? And occasionally, he would wear, like, a Roblox hoodie or something, but the reason is, every single day, without fail, this kid was playing Roblox. Like, literally, no matter what, he was always playing Roblox. So, uh, we're skipping towards the... We're literally skipping right towards the juicy part. I mean, the whole thing's the juicy part, but we're getting to it right away. 
they had a presentation this Thursday, and we're actually going to jump to Thursday. It was a pre- this was a history class, and they were studying, uh, you know, the Civil War. And each of them was supposed to go up and present a slideshow of important th- of just like something that happened in the Civil War. It could be a battle. It could be a general overview. It could be a character piece. Like you could do one about the life of Abraham Lincoln. These kids were given weeks to do it, right? So anyways, the subscriber Bryce goes up and he speaks about the battle of Gettysburg or whatever. A little fun fact, in eighth grade, I actually went to go like to see like the like Gettysburg and like the battlefields and all that cool stuff with my class. It was a really cool time. But anyways, right, you know, Bryce goes up there. He does a good job with his presentation. And the next person to be called up is the Roblox kid. And normally I save like very interesting stuff like this for later on. I'm blessing you guys because we're jumping straight into the cringe. Actually, I don't know if I'm blessing you guys or if I'm cursing you guys because we are jumping. We're jumping straight into the cringe. And when I say straight into the cringe, I mean legitimately straight into the cringe. Like, this is bad. This is so just prepare yourself mentally, physically, and spiritually because this is going to be quite the experience to say the least. So, anyways, the Roblox kid goes up to the front of the classroom. And everyone's kind of just looking at him, right? And he flips on his presentation, and from the very start... Actually, no. In the very start, it looked normal. Because it was an image with text on it that says, like, The Life of Abraham Lincoln by Roblox Kid. He obviously said his real name, but for the sake of this, The Life of Abraham Lincoln by Roblox Kid. The Immediately, the first slide is, like, the goofiest thing ever. So Bryce is looking at it, and on the first slide, it is, <laughs> it is a Roblox character with a top hat on, and there's an arrow pointing to him, and then text that says Lincoln. And then there's more text that says, Lincoln was a good guy. Lincoln was a president. And then, and and the Roblox kid went up there and is literally just reading out, Lincoln is a good guy. Lincoln was a president. And then he goes to the next slide, and it is, (laughs) dude, this is the funniest thing ever. It is the Roblox character of Lincoln, but his head is on the ground. It's, like, decapitated from his body. And the next slide says, Lincoln died. (laughs) It literally just said, Lincoln died. Okay, at least he didn't say, like, Elric, like, Lincoln took the ratio, young boys better than Lincoln. At least he wasn't, like, going like that, right? But he was like, Lincoln died. Literally, no context. Who was he shot by? He was shot after the Revolutionary War. Did it happen in a movie theater? Or, like, not a movie theater, you know what I mean? A theater well, was, like, who was the name of it? No, just Lincoln died. And then it was a photo of a Roblox character with his head on the ground decapitated. And an arrow pointing to him saying... It literally, an arrow pointed to it and said, died. Not, here lies Lincoln from whatever, right? It just says, died. So the entire class is, like, holding back laughter because this is, like, the worst presentation on planet Earth. Because, like, oh, look, these kids are, like, in 6th or 7th grade or something, so it's not like they're coming out with a college PhD thesis type things. These are not dissertations that are being dissected by other professors, right? Sure, whatever. It's a little slideshow presentation. However, most people had pictures and a lot of text and the pictures were not roblox characters with arrows pointing to them saying lincoln or not lincoln but here's the thing it gets so so much worse so much worse that you guys probably won't even be able to comprehend how bad it is right so the next slide (laughs) i i I don't even know if i comprehend how bad this is the next slide is just text so just a little recap We've had three slides so far. The first one saying the life of Abraham Lincoln. The second one being a Roblox character with a top hat saying this is Lincoln. He was cool. He was chill. He was a chiller, right? The next slide was the Roblox character with his head on the floor saying he died, lol. And then the next slide says, okay, okay, let's talk about something much more important. So at this point, Bryce was sitting in the classroom. He's like, bro, much more important. This is your presentation, dude. Like, what are you talking about? Like, are you trying to sabotage yourself here? Because it definitely feels like it. And, uh, you know, everyone in the class was kind of confused. And for some reason, the teacher wasn't stopping the Roblox kid. I think the teacher was kind of hoping that the Roblox kid, like the first couple of slides were like a, a joke. And while the teacher didn't find it very funny, the teacher was hoping that the Roblox kid was going to make a bit of a recovery. So I bet the teacher at this point thought, oh, OK, well, the Roblox kid was obviously kidding. Like he's saying, let's talk about something more important. He's probably going to like go over to talking about, like, the life of Abraham Lincoln. No. The teacher and everyone else was unfortunately wrong because the Roblox kid 
goes on to just do the the most insane thing I've ever seen. And you guys, look, I told you before to buckle in, like, buckle in for the cringe. You guys got to strap in for the cringe. Like, this is an atomic blast of the cringe. So you have to lay straight down on the floor. Make sure it doesn't destroy your lungs and eyes and everything. All your internal organs don't turn inside out with this. So just prepare yourselves. So anyways, the, the Roblox kid clicks onto the next slide. And it is a video. So you know how in like Google Slides you can click onto a video? It is an unlisted YouTube link. So he clicks into it and it goes over to YouTube. And all of a sudden, <laughs> oh my God, I don't know if I can do it. Guys, guys, I think I'm, I'm going to pass away from the cringe, guys. Leave a like and subscribe to the channel to help me survive. Anyways, so all of a sudden, uh, you know the song like What Makes You Beautiful by One Direction? Yeah, that starts playing. And everyone is super confused because Bryce knows for a fact that this was definitely not music to fit the timepiece. <laughs> yeah, I don't think this is like Civil War Abraham Lincoln music. I don't know, man. This just doesn't really seem like it. And all of a sudden, while that song, the, you know, What Makes You Beautiful by One Direction is playing, a video appears on screen of the, of the Roblox kid Roblox character. And it's like a screen recording of him running around this map with like text appearing on the screen. You know how it's like you can have like your Roblox character have like a text bubble. I, I don't know if that's actually true. I don't really play it myself, but I've seen like meme images or whatever. So at first, he, the Roblox character is just like saying the words of the lyrics. So he's like, you're insecure, not sure what's for. Dude, I'm not looking at their lyrics right now. Like, uh, turn in heads when you walk through the door, or something like that. Okay, you, you know the song I'm talking about. I butchered the lyrics, but in all fairness, I'm trying to get them from the top of my head, and I haven't heard that song in, like, a year, or last night, either one. Um, but yeah, so everyone is super confused. Bryce kind of turns to his friends. The teacher's just like, okay, like, I'm gonna let this play, because, like, I don't know where this is going. But everyone is realizing that this is going downhill extremely quickly. And no one realizes, like, why this, like, where this is actually going. Until, like, after, like, a little bit of the Roblox characters, like, dancing on screen and, like, singing the lyrics to the One Direction song. Eventually, right? Eventually, like, the Roblox character, like, it, it zooms in on him. And the music's still playing in the background. But the text is no longer, like, the text of the song. It is... So there's a girl who we're going to call Eve in this class, and she's sitting in the front row. Rest in peace, Eve, bro, because she's about to get slammed by the Roblox kid. Completely embarrassed in front of everyone. So, uh, yeah, uh, the, the text on screen of the Roblox kid's presentation turns from saying the One Direction lyrics to saying, like, I have a super important question for you, and then... Eve, her name appears on screen, and everyone, dude, I feel bad for this girl, because, like, as soon as her name appeared on screen in this dumpster fire of a presentation, literally everyone, including the teacher, turned their heads to look directly at her, which is just such a tough situation, because, like, bro was just existing, bro was just chilling, trying to, like, live life or whatever, and then all of a sudden, she just gets completely destroyed, gets a left hook to the face, like, you just simply hate to see it, right? And all of a sudden, like, the text on screen turns to, like, Eve, will you go out with me? And it says this for, like, five seconds. And Bryce, it, like, even though it was only on screen for, like, five seconds, Bryce says that this is probably the longest five seconds of his life. He's never seen a five-second duration go by any slower. And all of a sudden, right, the Roblox character on screen starts doing, like, a break dance. Like, it is the worst thing I've ever seen. I will say that there are worse ways to... <laughs> to ask out girls and if this video gets 1000 likes I, I i clear a thousand likes all the time but if this gets 1000 likes in the first 24 hours i will tell you the worst story of how to ask out a girl and it's from me it is a personal story so you better smash like right now and i will do it i'm a man of my word it is embarrassing it is terrible it is awful but it is funny and if it gets more engagement on the video then i'll sell my soul for anything anyways so yeah, the Roblox character is like breakdancing in the background. And <laughs> remember, this is during a history class presentation on the frickin' Civil War. And all of a sudden, there's this a Roblox character breakdancing while the Roblox kid, literally, I don't know if dude thinks he was asking to marry her, because the Roblox kid gets on one knee, and everyone's like, what is this kid doing? Roblox kid gets on one knee, and like... <laughs> 
I don't know why he was on one knee, but he was. I think he saw like a movie where someone proposed and he's like, oh, this is how it works. He's like, Eve, will you be my girlfriend? And while this is happening, like a really like poorly audio, like poorly edited in audio. So it's really grainy audio of like what makes you beautiful by One Direction is looping in the background while there's a video of this Roblox character breakdancing on screen. Like it is the biggest dumpster fire anyone has ever seen. Everyone at this point is completely shocked. Real quick, if you made it this far into the video, comment Roblox down below. That'll be the secret word of the day. I'll try and heart a bunch of the comments. I can't always because, look, full-time college student as well. Also trying to have a life. However, it's not that hard for me to go through and heart a bunch of them. So if you comment Roblox, I'll do my best to do that. And also, if you want to support the channel, the best thing you can do is after you're done watching this video, go ahead and binge watch a bunch of videos. And please let me know in the comment section how many videos you watched today or this week. Because when you watch my old videos, it helps the channel get promoted more, which helps our community grow. And it's awesome. It's great. I just want to say thank you. So let me know in the comment section if you are doing that so I can say thank you personally. Yeah, so just a little recap of what is happening. And by the way, prepare yourself for the cringe because it's pretty bad at this point. But anyways, the Roblox kid has gone up to give a presentation on Abraham Lincoln. The first two slides were crappily edited in Roblox characters, where the first one just has a top hat, and the second one just has his head falling off, right? So not super great. Um, and then it converts to like, let's talk about something more important. And then it's a video of his Roblox character running around, screaming out the lyrics to One Direction's like, what makes you beautiful. And then it turns to the Roblox character breakdancing while the Roblox kid goes on one knee and asks this girl out in front of everyone. So yeah, at this point, like Bryce is sitting into, uh, Bryce is just like so shocked and confused. Cause dude, this all happened within the span of like two minutes. And the Roblox kid is like, yeah, so at this point, you know, I, I don't know, Bryce just wasn't expecting anything like this to happen. Like, he's just like, this all happens so quickly, just for context. Like, one second in, this happens. The next second in, like, or like one second in, they're all doing, like, Civil War presentations. The next second in, this Roblox kid is trying to ask out this girl with a Roblox dancing icon, and he's down on one knee. And it's just, like, a huge mess. It's just like, dude, what is even going on at this point? And uh, yeah, it is the most awkward. Oh my God, it's Connor Pugs. I've never seen your face in real life. You're so sexy. Dude, how do these fans keep getting in? <laughs> security, security. <laughs> anyways, guys. Uh, <laughs> yeah, anyways. So at this point, the teacher is starting to realize what is going on. Like the teacher like is kind of snaps to it. And remember the Roblox kid is literally sitting, standing or not standing, is literally on one knee. And it's just like, will you go out on a date with me? And, uh, poor Eve, bro. Like, everyone's just looking at her. And the teacher goes up to him. And is just like, what is, like, what is wrong with you? Like, the teacher full-on says, what is wrong with you? Which, like, the teacher, <laughs> the teacher's not wrong, dude. Like, what is wrong with this kid, bro? Like, can't be going up to people in class and just, like, asking them out when you're supposed to be doing the life of Abraham Lincoln. Like, it's a little bit different. And the Roblox kid is like, you're a hater of my love. You're a hater like John Wilkes Booth or whichever one shot Lincoln. You're a hater just like him. I'm like Lincoln. You're like John Wilkes Booth. And you're shooting me in the head metaphorically. And the teacher's like, why didn't you say that in your thing? It's like, because <laughs> the teacher started to like freak out because the Roblox kid actually knew the history. He actually knew who shot Abraham Lincoln. He knew the context. But bro decided not to put it in his presentation because he was too busy doing like... Dude, he was too busy doing Roblox dances to ask out this girl. So at this point, the Roblox kid is like, you can't stop me. You can't stop me and my love. And at this point, Eve just has her head down on the desk like, oh my God, dude. Oh my God. And everyone feels so bad for her. But they're also just so curious, like what is going on with the Roblox, the mind, uh, Roblox kid, right? So at this point, the Roblox kid, like the teacher starts walking towards the Roblox kid because the, the teacher is going to escort him to the front office. But the Roblox kid says, no, no, I must have an answer. You can't take me away. So the Roblox kid starts to run around the classroom. So the desks are kind of in a, uh, just imagine a normal classroom. So the Roblox kid starts weaving in and out between the desks. He's just, just kind of like dodging in between the desks sliding under chairs, knocking stuff over. And while he's doing this, right? Cause like the teacher's starting to close in on him, but the teacher's not gonna like, the teacher's not gonna slide tackle him, dude. He knows better. But while he's doing this, he's shouting like, Eve, Eve, do you hear me? Eve, 
Eve, will you be my Roblox girlfriend, Eve? Eve, will you be my Roblox girlfriend? At this point, Bryce is like, oh my god. What is going on right now, dude? What is going on? And the Minecraft is... Sorry, the Roblox kid is just kind of like jumping around, jumping, jumping. And at this point, right, you know, I think Eve is starting to realize that if she doesn't say, like, this is a terrible position and I feel really bad for her because, like, dude, right, you definitely don't want to. Ball, uh, yeah, thing. Oh, are you recording right now? Yeah, uh, my balls are my balls are actually, yeah, I got my set of balls in on Amazon. Wait, they can't hear this. No! We've had a lot of lore in today's video, like a lot of, uh, a a anyways, though. So at this point, the teacher is just like, he's running after the Roblox kid. The Roblox kid is running back and forth. And I think Evie at this point kind of just knows that she needs to say, like, she needs to say something. So she kind of, like, stands up, which is tough for her, because, like, this is obviously super embarrassing. But she stands up and says, I'm sorry, like, I don't think we should, like, go on a date or something. Or, like, I have to decline. However she said it, she said it very politely, she said it very nicely. And, uh, you know, the Roblox kid stops running. And that's when the teacher catches up to him and kind of grabs him. And the Roblox kid literally slumps on the floor. Almost like he was shot with, like, a tranquilizer dart, dude. Like, he just slumps on the frickin' floor. Like, he's just down. Down for the count. And, uh, you know, everyone is kind of looking around because it's like, uh, what, what, what do we do about this? And the teacher is like, come on, get up, get up. And the Roblox kid's like, no. When my heart is broken, my legs are broken too. Like, kid is being super melodramatic. Apparently, like, he's never even talked to this girl, the one that he asked down in front of the whole class. He's never spoken to her once. He just saw her once and was like, oh, this girl's pretty. Let me ask her out during my Abraham Lincoln presentation because that makes a lot of sense, right? And the kid's literally slumped on the floor. He's like, no, my broken heart has paralyzed my entire body. Meh. And the teacher's like, dude, get up. He's like, no, I will get up when she says yes and at this point the teacher's like ah oh, hell no because like the teacher it, like it was already in a terrible she's already in a terrible situation you got some weirdo in front of everyone being like go on a date with me now or else and then all of a sudden this kid decides that he is also gonna pull a if she doesn't go on a date with me i'm just gonna be collapsed on the floor forever <laughs> feel bad for me guys like no that's definitely like he's cut he's drawing the line there we're, we're not letting this one slide uh yeah basically, right? So the teacher pulls him up because the teacher, you know, he can't be too physical with this kid because he can get in trouble and lawsuits and whatever. But he grabs the kid by the scruff of his collar and like yanks him up and is like, you've had a, you've like, you've been distracting enough today. Like you caused enough drama. You've caused enough trouble. You're going to the front office with me. So he drags him out to the front office. And it, afterwards, the classroom is just dead silent until one guy who's sitting next to Eve kind of speaks up and says, I'm so sorry. And literally after that kid says, I'm so sorry, the whole class, the whole classroom dude, including Bryce, chimes in to say, yeah, I'm so, like, that's so sorry. Like, that's so tough. I'm so sorry about that. If you need anything, like everyone was being so nice to her because they realized this like, dude, like this is day of a presentation. This is already kind of a stressful day, but everyone kind of knew that like, yeah, no, I mean, no one wanted this, and she definitely did not ask for this, and, like, if the, if this happened to any of them, they would have known that they would have just, like, they would have had the worst day ever. So, yeah, everyone was super nice to Eve after that point. Uh, the Roblox kid did get in trouble. He obviously, f he, he would have failed his presentation, um, but the, the teacher said, I'm gonna give you another chance to redo the presentation, and he did, and the presentation actually wasn't that bad, but the kid didn't get a great grade because the teacher's like, I'm not gonna give you a great grade even if the presentation's really good, but just feel lucky I'm giving you a chance to try at least again. So yeah, moral of the story is don't ask out uh, your crush via your Abraham Lincoln presentation and with a Roblox video dancing to One Direction, going on one knee and run. Dude, I think the moral of the story is Click on the is video clear. on screen right now. I know you'll enjoy it. Just click it. Do it. In today's subscriber story, this Roblox kid who is being a jerk to a lot of people gets absolutely destroyed when he tries to be a jerk to this girl. And it was hilarious. So there's this kid, right? And he's known as the Roblox kid. And he's not known as the Roblox kid because he, you know, is just a big fan of Roblox, just plays the game a lot, enjoys the game. You're totally free to play the game and enjoy the game and not be called a Roblox kid. For example, I'm not going to call you a Minecraft kid just because you play Minecraft, man. That's just not how it works, right? Roblox kid has a certain connotation to it that, like, 
you're doing a lot of stuff along with like in Roblox. For the duration of this story, I'm just gonna call this guy Roblox Kid, right? So Roblox Kid had had a history of terrorizing people in my subscribers class. If you don't know, a subscriber sent in the story, you can always do that, link in description, all that information's down there. Anyways, right, so this guy, known as like the Roblox Kid, had been terrorizing my subscribers class ever since he transferred to his school about a month ago. This story took place in like the very beginning of the year and this new kid transferred in and no one really knew what, you know, he was going to be like. And the thing is, when you have like a kid transferring in and like he doesn't know a lot of people, of course you want to be nice to them. If anything, I encourage you to be nice to them. So everyone in my subscribers class, including my subscriber, you know, he was very nice to this new kid and like they didn't know him as the Roblox kid who like was menacing and terrorized people yet. They just knew him as like, you know, you know, just a kid, right? Just a new guy who's probably doesn't know a lot of people who probably feel isn't feeling so good, right? And it's only within the first couple days that they start to realize that something is up. The first thing the Roblox kid did wasn't really necessarily a bad thing that made him a menace. It just started off on the wrong foot, right? So all these kids, they wanted to follow this guy on Instagram because, you know, you want to connect with him even if you don't see him a lot out of school. You want to make him know that, like, everyone in the new school that he just transferred to is, like, really open to him is really open to you know new people coming in they want to make him feel welcome so they all decide to go follow him on instagram so they look up his name and obviously his name's not roblox kid even though i will be calling him that and they find his instagram account but what they find on the account is a little bit weird i'm just gonna be honest so you know those kind of like roblox like roblox kid cringe videos that like poncho and pegasus and tag swag and those people would do you know those types of posts like those in like those like tiktok posts that like they they reacted to. Uh, those were the type of posts that this kid posted unironically. And uh, ever since then, he kind of gained the reputation as the, you know, the, 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 the Roblox kid, because he would post stuff that was just like, oh boy. Like he posted one of those videos where it was like, I'm talking in my real voice, and he's obviously not talking in his real voice. He's talking in some kind of like, fake deep voice to make him sound all cool and like oh my god the ladies are gonna love me now man because i'm talking in this weird voice so like here's the thing while that was all pretty cringe to them they're like oh my god right it doesn't mean that he was a bad guy it was what he did next that definitely solidified himself as being known as a bad guy so right after, you know, some people follow him on Instagram, they see like some kind of weird posts or whatever, they aren't necessarily like going to not try and make him feel welcome. They still decide like, okay, this might be a little weird, but we don't really care. Like, sure, man can like enjoy posting weird stuff, but we're still going to be nice to him, right? So it's a couple days in the class and, you know, over the first couple days, Roblox Kid was kind of just kept to himself, right? He was just kind of like shy. He wasn't really saying anything. But he definitely grew comfortable really quickly, which normally is a good thing, but in this case was not a good thing. Yeah, so basically, right, within a week of Roblox Kid being in class, the teacher would say something and he would just laugh. And the teacher would look back and say like, oh, you know, what's so funny? Like, what, what joke did I miss? And the Roblox Kid would say, nothing. And people just were like, okay, that's a little strange, right? That's a little weird. And he just kept doing that. But then he started to do it when, like, someone would, like, say an answer. Like, the teacher would be like, does anyone know what whatever is, right? And someone would answer, and the answer would be wrong. And he would le let out a little laugh, right? And the teacher would be like, what's so funny? He's like, nothing. And he would just keep doing that, right? And he definitely, he especially did it when people were, like, somehow a little bit vulnerable. Like, you know, you, you said an answer and it was wrong. And he would make sure to just have a sneak a little laugh in there. Quickly, if you enjoy story time videos, make sure you're subscribed to the channel. That's it, back to the story. The level of snarkiness coming from Roblox Kid only increased every single day he was there. And at one point, someone came in with like an outfit. I think it was some guy and he was wearing green on green, which you know, yeah, neon green, like top with a neon green bottom normally isn't the move. Look, I'm not a guy who like knows a lot about fashion, but even I know that like probably, you know, wearing neon green on neon green probably isn't the, you know, the hottest look ever and all the ladies aren't gonna be fawning over you. But when this guy came in, Roblox kid looks at him, kind of like, like it gives this little laugh and then is like, uh, and he turns to the guy and he's like, do you need to have your eyes checked, buddy? And then the guy's like, uh, what do you mean? He's like, uh, looks at the outfit. He's like, uh, do you see what you're wearing? 
the guy's like, uh, I was like, I got out of bed late. I just threw on what I had on. And then people kind of like looked back and they're like, oh, that's that that was a little aggressive, man. Like that was a little aggressive for literally no reason, dude. Like, yeah, the guy didn't have the greatest outfit of all time. Like lock him up. Like, OK, it's just class, bro. Like no one else is no one else cares. Why do you have to have such an attitude? What did he do to you? And just after that point, the snarkiness and like backsided comments and just kind of like Roblox kid being like a massive jerk, it just kind of like went up every single day and it got worse and it got worse and it got worse. For example, a couple weeks in, like the after he had that last comment to the kid and was just being snarky and laughing at people, right? So in the very beginning of class, before class started, kids were kind of kids kind of like sat down and like the teacher was kind of getting the stuff together. But Roblox kid was sitting sitting kind of near this girl and he kind of like looks over, he says, hey, and she's like, hey, what's up? And he's like, are you wearing makeup right now? And she's like, uh, no, I'm not wearing makeup right now. And he's like, maybe you should. So that comment was like, first of all, I just want to say to the guys out there, never say anything like that to like a girl or really don't say anything like that to anyone in general, like common decency. But like, I don't care if you think you're funny, man, like it's going to really have a negative impact on someone. And in this case, it did. Like, the, when he said that to the girl, like, she already was having, like, her own insecurities. Look, a lot of people, like, around their age, I, I don't know exactly, like, what grade this guy, the subscriber who sent in the story was. I'm probably going to say, like, 6th, 7th, 8th grade. Probably, like, late middle school, early high school. That's when you're most... Honestly, bro, that's when you're like you're most insecure over everything. When you think all these things matter and words like this, is it's really going to go a long way. This girl ends up running out of the classroom, like crying and like some like her friends go running after her. And this is the first time that the teacher actually does have to get involved and like talk to the Roblox kid. He's like, Roblox kid, obviously he says his name, but we're going to say Roblox kid, like go down and see the principal, like the go to the principal's office, like. Yeah, uh, what I I heard what you said. It was unacceptable because he was close enough to the front of the classroom now where he sat because he didn't sit in the same seat every day. He decided to terrorize a new person every single day by sitting in a new seat and also disrupting the unassigned assigned seats. If you know what that is, then you know that that's criminal behavior. But anyways, he was close enough to the front of the classroom that the teacher's like, I heard what you said, go to the principals. So when Roblox kid went to the principal, apparently the principal said, since this is your first offense, like we're not gonna give you a punishment, but basically no, you're on very, very thin ice. And next time we hear of something like this, you know, you're gonna be suspended. And so the Roblox kid's like, okay, like, I'm so sorry. It was just a little mistake. Like, I'm having a bad day. Trying to, like, weasel out of it and also pretending like he has not been doing this for months on end to basically everyone. But anyways, right, from this point on, you might be thinking, okay, did Roblox kid actually improve? Did he become a better person? No. He was just more careful when he was being a jerk to people, right? He didn't do it in front of the teacher. And he was also a little bit more careful who he did it to. But this didn't mean that he wasn't, like, continuing on his tirades of terrorizing people, you know, as being a jerk, right? He started sitting more in the back of the class, and he started making his comments then. He also started making comments in the hallway with people. For example, someone would walk out of, like, a class, like, his class with him, and they would have gotten, like, a, a pretty bad grade on the test. And as they were walking out, the Roblox kid would be like to all the people around him, like he'd say really loudly, he's like, I can't believe you got a, you know, a whatever score on that test. Maybe study next time. Roblox kid probably f failed the test, dude. Like we're gonna be honest. He was too busy making those, hey there baby girl Roblox edits to get like three likes on TikTok. But like he needed to make sure that it was everyone else's business that the guy next to him failed the test. Right, so you might be thinking, like, Connor, this story is kind of depressing. Like, this guy just is, like, a terrible person to everyone, and he just keeps on getting away with it. And let me just say that, like, if this, if there was no good ending to the story, if there was not, like, a satisfying conclusion, I would not be telling the story, right? Just hold out a little bit longer. Trust me. The ending is good, and karma, baby, karma is sweet. But before we get to the sweet, sweet ending, I'm going to interrupt this video to tell you that the secret phrase of the day is tree. So if you made it this far into the video, comment tree down below. I want to see how many people actually made it this far, and I appreciate you if you do. So there was this girl in the subscribers class. Uh, let's call her uh, Ashley, right? So Ashley was known as, like, you know, a very, being, like, very nice, very, like, kind and respectful, at least when you were being kind and respectful to her. 
But she was also known for, like, standing up to herself and standing up to herself firmly and, like, really well. Like, if you tried to come and, like, roast her, man, you were going to come out scorched. That is not a flame fight you want to enter into. That's all I'm trying to say, bro. Ashley was something else. But she was also very kind and respectful and was a good, very solid friend that, like, she was just an overall very good person, as long as you were a good person to her. She really had a whole eye-for-eye eye mentality when it came to stuff. And let me just say that Roblox Kid, since he was still kind of new to the school, he didn't know Ashley's reputation. But he also kind of like got a sense that she was a little, had a little bit tougher skin. So he decided that she would be the next victim of like his, like, you know, his heart is basically his, his being a jerk, right? His trolling, right? She was going to be the next victim because she probably wouldn't break down crying and get him in trouble and get him suspended. But she would also be like, you know, she would be a perfect target. Little did he know this was a huge mistake. But one day the Roblox kid went up to Ashley when they're leaving class and he just like kind of looked at her and he's like, hey, ugly. And she didn't respond. And she's like, and he's like, oh, I'm talking to you. Oh, it's just like something really stupid and lame, but like just like really just trying to come for her. And she kind of looked at him and she kind of like smirked and said, you're going to regret that, buddy. And he kind of like was like taken aback a little bit because like people had either been like, like, like go away or like they'd start crying or they'd just be like, bro, they never like smirked and said, you're going to regret that. He didn't think much of it after that, at least for a while. But let me just say that, like, that was the beginning of his downfall. He should not have messed with Ashley, bro. So coincidentally, wink, wink, nod, nod, right? The Roblox kid starts talking about his, like, his new girlfriend, right, that he meets on Roblox. And he's talking about how, like, oh, man, I met someone who's perfect for me. Like, you guys suck. You're all single. L, L plus ratio plus young boy better. Like, saying that in real life, like, something you would actually do, right? Like, was this every single day was telling everyone he possibly could about the girlfriend he met on Roblox and how he's so much better now than them because he had, he's in a relationship and they're not. So one day, right, he comes into class and... And just like, he's just going off on someone. He's calling someone ugly. He's calling someone stupid, right? And then he's also bragging about not being single. And then Ashley comes up to him, right? Out of nowhere, after about three weeks since their last encounter. So Roblox Kid has not thought for a second about what, you know, about Ashley. And he's like, oh, oh, what's up, ugly? Because uh -huh, he remembered his joke. And she said, what's up and then said something very specific and his face just went super cold and the subscriber doesn't remember exactly what she said but apparently right what he had said what she had said was word for word what his roblox girlfriend said to him like the night before and he's like oh what and then before he could say anything ashley kind of turned to people like turned to the class before the teacher was there because they got there a little bit earlier before the teacher some days and this was one of those days and she turns to everyone and she's like you know this girlfriend that he been he's been talking about for the last like week? Well, that was me. Get trolled, get roasted, and the Roblox kid is like, "That's not true." And she said, "All right, open up Roblox." He boots it up. He's like, <laughs> "Right." And then he boots it up. She opens up her like laptop or I don't know if you can have an app for Roblox. She let's just say she opens up her laptop. I think that's what she did, right? That's this is what I'm told. And basically, she just sends him a message. And he receives it. He's like, <sighs> packs up his stuff, just, just walks out of the class. Walks out of the class. And he's not back for the entire day. And apparently the next day he came back and he was just silent. And for the rest of that week, he was silent. And for the rest of that year, he wasn't silent. Like he spoke in class and tried to speak to people a little bit, tried to make friends. But basically he was done being a jerk to people because he got absolutely decimated. If you enjoyed today's story video, consider watching another one. Watching old story videos after watching this video really helps the channel. And if you want an easy place to find all the story videos I've made, top link in the description is a link to my story time playlist, which will have all the stories. With that being said, thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace. Today we have a story about an arrogant kid who got absolutely humbled incredibly quickly by his crush. Enjoy. Subscribers said in this story, uh, we're gonna call him Mason, right? So Mason was in class, and there's this kid in his class, we're just gonna call him Roblox Kid. And by the way, disclaimer, right? I, I know there's already people typing in the comment section right now, Connor, I play Roblox, does that mean I'm a Roblox Kid? Uh, I hate you, I'm gonna unsubscribe.
Once again, similar to when I call people Minecraft kids, look, I love Minecraft, and if you love Minecraft, cool, me too. You're not a Minecraft kid. If you like Roblox, you're not a Roblox kid. If you want to know who a Roblox kid is, look up the videos that, like, Poncho or Pegasus made. Those are Roblox kids. And this kid was a Roblox kid. Anyways, right, he wasn't just a Roblox kid. He was super arrogant. He was super full of himself. And he just loved telling the entire class about how many women he got, how he was just the king of women. And here's the thing, guys. Sit down. Sit down on my lap. Uh, actually, don't. That could be weird. Sit down on my metaphorical lap. Uh, or chair next to me, that's a lot less weird. Sit next to the metaphorical chair next to me, right? And learn a little lesson, right? If someone keeps bragging about their game, if someone can't stop talking about how many women they get, uh, but you've never seen them actually, you know, uh, even talk to someone, even talk to like another guy, not even a woman, like it has never even spoken to another, another human being before, right? If there's literally not a single moment of evidence besides what they say, uh, I'm going to give you a little spoiler. I'm going to cut to the chase for all of you guys. Yeah, they probably are just full of it, like 100% full of it. Anyways, right, so Mason is in class, right, one day, and he happens to sit down, and the Roblox kid, he sits down next to Mason, and Mason is, like, friendly enough with a Roblox kid. Mason's a good kid. He's not going to be a jerk for no reason. So anyways, right, Mason's like, yo, what's up? Like, whatever, and the Roblox kid's like, hey... Just done bagging some tens, bagging some hotties. Complete cringe. Don't don't say that, okay? Don't unironically say that. Even ironically saying it is like kind of skirting the line of like complete cringe. I don't know. He's like, yeah, I just I was just like, oh, typical day, man. Just got another ten. Like they can't stop hitting me up. By the way, these kids were in like seventh grade or whatever when this happened, which is pretty funny. Um, I'm not saying, I, I know I got a lot of people that are probably in seventh grade watching. I, I'm not like coming for you. I was in seventh grade, actually a wonderful period of my life. Uh, actually, you know what? I don't care if you're in seventh grade. I don't care if you're in 12th grade. I don't care if you're in college. I don't care if you're the CEO of JP Morgan Chase. I don't care if you're like a grandfather. Please do not say, I've been bagging hotties. I've been getting tens. Uh, just, just don't say that for me. If you're not going to say it for you, don't say it for me, dude. Anyways, right, so the Roblox kid is, like, completely mouthing off to Mason about how he's... So many women are just flooding his DMs, man. He, he just can't hold them back. Like, the, 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 the female, the female species is just... They're just lustful to him. They're just always on top of him. They can't let him go. At this point, Mason's like, hey, bro, like, for real? Like, that, that definitely isn't real. <laughs> he's like... <laughs> he's like... Nah. The Roblox kid looks Mason square in the eyes, and he, like, leans in a little bit, and he looks around the classroom, and he's like, Mason, look around you. Mason looks around him, sees, like, all of his classmates, and he's like, hey, Mason, these lustful, lustful women, Mason, they won't leave me alone. They want me. They want me, Mason. At this point, Mason's like, hey, yo, bro, like, stop, stop. Plus, there was also this girl, uh, we're just gonna call him Roblox Kids Crush. I don't really feel like giving her a name. Uh, I, I, I just wanna juggle too many names. I mix them up, and, uh, you guys always remind me in the comment section. Uh, so, uh, I just don't feel like it. We got one name, we got Mason, we got Roblox Kid, we got Roblox Kids Crush. So we're just gonna call her The Crush. Anyways, right, so the Roblox kid starts, you know, starts talking about this girl specifically, the crush. And, you know, uh, you know, Mason is actually, like, he's not friends with the Roblox kid, necessarily. I would say he's acquaintances. He's not buddies. He's, like, he, he's working friends. Like, he's work friends. Or school friends, because they're not at work, right? But sometimes school friends implies that you're closer than you actually are. I feel like work friends adequately implies that, like, you just get along with each other because you're in the same place doing the same thing you don't really want to be doing. But anyways, right, he's kind of known about the Roblox kid's crush for a while, and, you know, he doesn't know her that well, but he definitely knows that, like, uh, you know, no offense to Roblox kid, but she is definitely out of his league. Uh, unfortunately, right, a Roblox kid starts to go on this tangent to, 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 to Mason, poor Mason, right? Roblox kid starts talking about how his crush, right, how we could totally pull her, dude. Like, uh, no questions, no questions asked, no problems, no issues at all, actually. 100% guaranteed, 1,000%, 100% guaranteed win for a Roblox kid. Like, I'm not even kidding, dude. 100% win. 
And he keeps going off about how he can totally get his crush and how his crush, he actually starts, like, changing it. He doesn't just talk about how he, you know, you know, his crush, he will totally love him, right? Will totally fall for him if he, like, says anything or even starts talking to her. Because, right, at this point, Roblox Kid had not even spoken to this woman, right? But he starts, he changes the conversation a little bit. You know what he starts doing, guy? You know what he starts saying? He starts talking about how she is actually secretly in love with him. Yeah, no, I'm not even, I wish I was joking, I wish I was kidding, I wish this wasn't real life, I wish the Illuminati had reprogrammed my mind to just interpret reality backwards, but no, no, this is real life. Uh, he actually started going off about how uh, the, his crush, someone who's completely out of his league, who he's never spoken to, etc., right, uh, is actually in love with him. At this point, right, Mason, Mason isn't, uh, Mason isn't about to correct this kid, right? Mason's not about to correct this kid, because... You know, he needs to be humbled, man. And uh, Mason kind of believes at this point that reality will catch up with him and will humble him. Mason doesn't need to have any blood on his hands. He doesn't need to do any of the dirty work. He doesn't need Roblox Kid plotting against him because he hurt his feelings. Reality will take all of that. We'll take care of all of that for him. Anyways, right, so uh, the Roblox Kid starts to explain, starts to explain to Mason about his master plan, about not the Technoblade master plan, not one that's actually gonna work, right? But the master plan, the master plan to uh, get this girl to fall in love with him, which like, why does he need a master plan when she's already in love with him? Uh, don't ask me, dude. Anyways, right, so what you need to know is in this class, they had a very, like, a, not a very large, but they had a, a project due the next day. In that project, they had to present in front of the entire class. And so basically, right, the Roblox kid, he explains to Mason, the subscriber who sent in the story, you can send in stories too to my Instagram in the description. He explained to Mason that he was going to basically ask his crush out via his class presentation. And Mason was like, dude, you know you're gonna fail the presentation if you do that. He's like, yeah, totally worth it though. Like, I already have 100% in this class. Also a lie, but whatever. So the Roblox kid explains to Mason the details of what he plans to do. And I'm not gonna explain to you the details because I just wanna tell you what actually happens without spoiling it. But let me just say that, you know, Mason was sitting there and was like, no shot this kid actually does this. Like, that's insane. But he also thinks to himself, if this kid actually, the Roblox kid, if he actually does this, right? If he actually does this, this is this is the instant humble. This is the instant karma. This is the thing that will bring him back to earth. This is what he needs, man. Just a little public humiliation is good for the soul. So Mason does something that maybe you guys might not be the biggest fan of. Maybe Mason wasn't the greatest guy on planet earth for doing this, but I honestly don't blame him and it does make it for a better story. Mason tells the Roblox kid, hey man, that's a great idea. That's a great, do it, dude. Like, I'm 100% behind you. Yeah, you could argue that, you know, maybe he kind of like set him up for failure, but look, I think this kid was gonna do it either way. I don't blame Mason. And it makes it a better story, so even better content. You love to see it. Anyways, right, so the next day rolls around and it's the project. And Mason is like one of the first people to present. He goes up and he gives his presentation. And he feels like he does a pretty good job. So anyways, he goes back to his seat. And since he's sitting next to the Roblox kid, he's like, hey, dude, are you, are, are you actually like going through with it? And the Roblox kid's like, yeah, of course. <laughs> and Mason's like, all right, dude, good luck. <laughs> kind of a little, little mean, but whatever, right? It's, it's funny. It's funnier. It's better if it's funny. And also Roblox kid, Loki needed to be humbled a little bit. So probably for the better anyways. Anyways, so like, you know, Mason's sitting there listening to his class, you know, go up there, give some presentations, whatever. And yeah, eventually the teacher calls up the Roblox kid, and all of a sudden, it's the moment of truth. So the Roblox kid goes up there, connects his computer to like the projector, and uh, what, the, uh, what Mason sees on screen, oh boy. Oh boy, that's all I can say. Today's phrase is Roblox. So if you made it this far into the video, I'd like you guys to comment Roblox in the comment section down below. I'm gonna try and heart as many comments as I can that say Roblox in them, or just say Roblox. That's actually easier if you just say Roblox so I don't have to read it. Make sure you guys aren't saying something evil or whatever, I don't really know. Uh, just know uh, I'll probably be unpacking or moving into a new dorm slash flying on a plane tomorrow. So I won't be able to get, and that's when this video is going up. So I won't be able to heart a ton of comments. I'm gonna do my best but don't take it personally if I don't get to yours. Also, today, today's your lucky day. Today's your lucky day, man. I, I don't know how to break it to you, but today 
is your lucky day. Because for every single person who leaves a like on today's video, they will actually receive their very own nothing in the mail. Two to three, two to three days shipping, by the way. So once you leave a like on this video, you will receive your nothing in two to three days. Amazon shipping it. So if you have any complaints, bring it up to them, not me. Leave a like, 5,000 likes, and I'll cry myself to sleep. With that being said, back to the story. Anyways, right, so Roblox Kid, he goes up to there, connects his computer, opens up his presentation, and you know what? For the sake of the story, I actually do need to give his crush a name. Let's call her Abby. Let's hope I remember that name. I do not have it written down right now. So he opens up his screen, and the first slide, it says, Hello, class. And he stands up. He's like, Hello, class. I have a very important announcement. And then he turns around and he goes to his computer and he clicks the next button. And on screen, it's a photo of Abby. The whole class is like, hey, yo, what the fuck? Box kid goes up there and he's like, looks at the photo of Abby. He's like, Abby, this is for you. And everyone's like, hey, yo, what the fuck? <laughs> what? <laughs> he's like, Abby, you're so beautiful. I think you're the prettiest girl in the entire world. And everyone's like, what the fuck? Will you? You. <laughs> oh my god, I'm sick. I can't do this. Yeah, yeah, Abby. You're so beautiful. And I'm so handsome. We're perfect together. And he goes to another slide and it's like a photo of him. It's like under it, it says like 10 out of 10. At this point, Mason's like, dude, okay, um, I, 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 know, I, I know I said yes. I know I greenlit this, but I somehow feel responsible. For this tragedy, not not for Roblox Kid, right? Mason didn't feel bad for Roblox Kid. He felt bad for everyone else in the room at that point. Which, like, honestly, honestly, everyone else has a right to blame Mason partly for this. Eventually, Roblox Kid, he clicks to the final slide. And he, he, he all it says on the slide is, it's like, will you be my dot, dot, dot? And then he's like, Abby, will you be my... And then he clicks onto like another, okay, it wasn't final slide. Sorry, I lied. And he clicks on the final slide and it says like girlfriend, but it's in this like really weird like fire font, like something that'd be like, haha, so lit guys. Like something you'd say in like, I don't know, fourth grade or something with like one of one like the, the emojis with like the sunglasses and something. It's like, it says girlfriend. He's like, girlfriend. And he's like, so Abby, uh -huh. you want to go out with me? And look, Abby, here's the thing. Very nice girl, uh, but she's she also like will definitely speak her mind. She doesn't have a lot of filter. She doesn't have much of a filter. That that's okay, you know. Especially if something like this just happened to you, I think you kind of have the right to say literally whatever you want. So small but very important detail I forgot to say earlier. Um, Roblox kid kind of stank. Like I don't know how else to say it, but he was a uh, unhygienic young man. His cleanliness was definitely a zero out of ten, even though his confidence was an eleven out of ten. And uh, Abby kind of just ripped into him. Abby stands up in front of the whole class and goes, "I will never, ever go on a date with your stinky, unwashed little self." And Roblox kid was like, "Abby," no, I'm just kidding. At this point, right, Mason is just like. Yeah, I'm partially responsible for this, man. Like, this is partially on me. This is partially on me, dude. I feel kind of responsible. But no, the whole class is sitting there just like mouths wide open like, oh my god, what? Huh? At this point, right, Roblox Kid is stunned. He's just, he's a deer in the headlights right now. And then he turns to Abby, he shuts his computer, and he's like, Emmy, you're actually very mid. You're ugly. Uh, L, L, L ratio, and then he just, like, runs out of the class. Yep. Yeah, and, uh, kid failed, um, the, the assignment, and, uh, he had to go to the principals because the, you're not allowed to do stuff like that. Like, that's crazy. And, uh, yeah, he, he got humbled pretty fast, to say the least. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Now go click on another video. Like, there's some videos on screen. Click them. Why have you not clicked? From a kid who tries to use Robux in real life to a kid telling the teacher that Roblox was a country, these are the craziest Roblox kids ever. So in this first story, right, there is a Roblox kid who tells all of a sudden, right, tells all of his friends that he is taking them out to the mall for a treat. This adventure to the mall will be on him and it's going to be a big surprise and it's going to be really cool for all of them. So obviously the subscriber and all of his friends are pretty excited for this because, I don't know, I mean, the kid says like there's a big surprise at the mall for all of them. I mean, if I was a kid his age, I'd be pretty excited myself. 
But anyways, right, so sure enough, the subscriber and all of his friends are excited to see why the Roblox kid has invited them to the mall, and they all tell their parents that the Roblox kid has invited them to the mall, so their parents drive them to the mall and drop them off. They're about like 12 to 13, so they're at the age where their parents are kind of okay with them being away by themselves for a little bit, but definitely not for too long of a time. So anyways, right, uh, sure enough, the Roblox kid comes up to the subscriber and all of his friends and is like, hey guys, like, I want to let you guys know that I have been, I've been doing a lot of business, a lot of mogul moves. I'm quite a businessman myself, and I wanted to let you guys know that uh, you see that toy store over there, and they point to like, I don't know, like a the Toys R Us before they went bankrupt or something like that, some kind of toy store, right? And all the kids are like, yeah. And the and the the Roblox kid is like, you guys can pick any toy in there and I will pay for it. So first of all, right, the subscriber and all of his friends are immediately super excited. They're immediately super happy because, I mean, they're now able to get whatever toy that they want. This is a pretty good deal. This is pretty cool. But then immediately the subscriber afterwards kind of thinks to himself, this is really cool, but is this like too good to be true cool? Like this is great and all, but this just feels a little bit, just a little bit too good to be true. But at the end of the day, if someone's offering you a free toy and you're a kid, what are you going to do? Say no? So yeah, sure enough, the subscriber and all of his friends, they rush they all rush into the uh, you know, the toy store, they're going around, the subscriber finds something he likes, and they all make it to the front desk. So sure enough, they're all like walking up to the front of the, uh, the toy store, they all find the Roblox kid, and the Roblox kid is looking so smug, he's looking so full of himself, because you know, he's the generous one today. He's the one who's buying all of them a gift, because out of his generosity, he feels like it, he, it's time for him to give back, guys. It's time for him to give back. When in reality, he is, uh, you'll see. So sure enough, they all get to the register, and they start ringing it up. And the subscriber watches as, like, 15 kids ring up toys. And they're not ringing up, like, a pack of Pokemon cards, which is, like, $5, which is still $5 is a lot for a pack of cards. They're ringing up like legit 20, 30, 40, 50, $100 toys. Like they, they find the craziest toys that their parents would never buy them. And if the, I, I don't know, man, if the Roblox kid says, hey man, I'm gonna buy them, then they're like, okay, dude, then here we go. So sure enough, they all go to the front and they ring up all these toys. The total is like legitimately $1,500. I don't think there's ever been a case at this store that a single person has rung up this much money, this many items. So sure enough, like the guy behind the cash register is kind of looking at them very suspiciously. Because I don't know about you, but I would definitely be suspicious if a bunch of like 12 year olds came up to the front of a toy shop and rung up $1,500 hundred dollars worth of items like i don't know about you but i would be at least a little bit suspicious so yeah sure enough right you know you know the the, the cash register the cash the kid the cash register the cashier is like okay um that's gonna be fifteen hundred dollars and he says it with kind of a confused look because it is fifteen hundred dollars and he looks at the kids and he's like okay so are your parents here to pay for it and all the kids, including the subscriber, they all turn over and they look at the kid, uh, the Roblox kid, who promised that, you know, he would be paying for all of this. And sure enough, the Roblox kid is like, no, 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 that will be no problem. I will be paying for this. And the cashier kind of looks at the Roblox kid, looking at him like, um, bro, are you really going to be paying like 1500 Are you sure? Are you positive that you will be paying $1,500 for these toys? Like, are you 100% certain that you will be paying $1,500? And the kid looks at him. He's like, yep, this will be me. And he goes in and he pulls out a iPad. And on the iPad, he brought his like backpack to the store. On his iPad, he has Roblox. And he opens up Roblox and everyone is so confused right now because they're like, okay, this kid literally just told us that we can have whatever item we wanted. And when he goes to pay, instead of paying, he pulls out his Roblox game. Like, bro, this might not, this might not be the time to be playing video games. This might be the time to, I don't know, pay for the thing you said you'd pay for. 
But sure enough, right, the Roblox kid, what he ends up doing is he pulls up his Roblox account and it says that he has 2,000 Robux. And he goes and shows the cashier and he's like, hey man, so I have 2,000 Robux. Well, th this should be more than enough to cover it. And everyone is looking, all the kids are looking at the, the Roblox kid and they're just assuming, oh, this is a joke, right? Like he doesn't actually expect the cashier to accept Robux as a legal tendency, ten, legal tendency, as legal tender. The, the, he doesn't actually expect the cashier to accept his Robux to pay for the $1,600 worth of toys, right? And that's when it all made sense to the subscriber. This kid didn't have $1,500. He had 1,500 Robux. And I think the kid must have assumed that there was a one-to-one -one conversion between this fake virtual currency that you can buy stuff on Roblox on and uh, in actual, like, in, like, the actual, like, U.S. dollar. So sure enough, the cashier looks at this kid and kind of just gives him a long look of, like, I know you don't know any better, but still, seriously? Like, seriously? So the cashier has to inform this kid that, no, he cannot pay with Robux. Sorry to break it to you. Robux is not legal tender, and he cannot pay with it. So the, you know, the kid starts to realize that he cannot pay with his Robux. So he has to turn around and tell everyone that, uh, hey guys, sorry to break it to you, but you gotta turn around and put all the stuff you just got back. Yeah, all that stuff you just got out, you gotta turn around and put it back. I'm sorry to say, it's almost like that episode of Scott's Tots from The Office. It's that one episode you watch once and you can never watch again. Yeah, so sure enough, uh, he had to tell every kid to walk back and put back the toys. And yeah, for the rest of the 20 minutes before the parents came and picked them up, it was mad silent because everyone was pretty mad at the kid. I think the subscriber wasn't that mad because he realized it was a genuine mistake, but everyone else was pretty mad at this kid and it was pretty funny. But if you thought that this Roblox kid was crazy, you weren't ready for the next one. So this all started one day in class. So basically, for some reason, there was a discussion going on. And the discussion entailed, uh, I, I don't even know how this conversation came up. The subscriber doesn't remember how this conversation came up. But basically, the question of, is Roblox real or not? And basically, there is a kid in the class who we're going to call the Roblox kid who was basically arguing with the teacher that Roblox was a country. So yeah, they were talking about countries, and they were going over countries in Europe. And the Roblox kid was convinced that Roblox, the game he played, was based on a real country in Europe. So anyways, they were going on the map, and the teacher's like, hey guys, can it, does anyone want to come up to the board and like write down three countries that you know exist in Europe? So someone would come up and they would write, I don't know, France, Italy, Slovenia. I, I, I don't know, something like that. And that's when the Roblox kid went up and was like, uh, I don't know, Italy, Germany, Roblox. So everyone looked at the Roblox kid and kind of gave him a double take of like, are you sure you meant to write that, bro? Like, are you positive? When the kid wrote down that Roblox was one of his answers. Because uh, I don't know if you guys know this. But uh, Roblox is not a country. It is, in fact, a name of a video game. But sure enough, the kid was very confident with his answer and kind of like walked back down like nothing happened. Half the class looked at the board confused. The other half kind of burst out a little bit into laughter. And the teacher must have had a son who played Roblox. He's like, hey, don't write down like funny jokes on the board. This is serious. Like write down three countries, like erase this and write down a third country if you can. And the Roblox kid legitimately looks at the teacher with this look of confusion, saying, I wrote down three countries. And the class laughs again, or at least the class, the part of the class that laughed before. And the teacher's like, that's not funny. Like, Roblox is a video game. It's not a country. Come on now. I have a son who plays it. Don't think you'd be able to pull this a fast one beyond me. And the kid legitimately looks at this guy and is like, I don't know what to say. I like I, Roblox is a country. Like I know it's a video game, but it's based off a real country in Europe. And this, and the teacher is just looking at this kid, and the subscriber is just trying to realize he's he. The subscriber first thought this kid was like pulling a, a prank on everyone by just how goofy this was. But apparently, this kid legitimately believed that Roblox was a real country in Europe. 
So sure enough, um, the teacher and the kid have this back and forth that legitimately lasts like five minutes of Roblox is not a country, bro. And then the kid's like, dude, Roblox is a country. And then the teacher's like, Roblox is not a country last time I checked. And once again, the, t- the kid's like, no, Roblox is a country and it, that is final and that is a fact. And the teacher's like, no, it kind of goes back and forth like this for a while. And this is when the kid starts to get angry. And he starts yelling at the teacher, no, Roblox is a country. And at this point, the teacher's like, don't raise your voice at me. Look, you know what? How about this? If we go on the globe right now, because the teacher had a globe, like, you know, those like real life spinning globes or whatever. The teacher had a globe. So the teacher's like, you know what? All right, let's have a bet. If I go on here and I find that, you know, Roblox is actually on the globe, or if you can find Roblox is actually on the globe, then guess what? You get to, you get recess for the rest of class. And the kid's like, okay. And then like, what do you get? And the guy and the teacher's like, okay, if we look on this globe and we find that, uh, you know, Roblox is actually not a thing, not an actual country, then guess what? For the rest of class, you need to write up a paper about how you're sorry for wasting the classes and my time. And the kid is like, yeah, okay, get ready to lose, bud. This kid was so confident for some reason. And he goes up to the front of the class. And he goes up to the, to the globe. And he's looking at the globe. And he goes over to Europe. And he's like, I'm pretty sure it's next to France. And he looks next to France. And sure enough, Roblox, the country, does not exist. So he's like, actually... I was just kidding with you guys. Roblox is right next to Germany. He looks next to Germany. He's like, uh, I mean, Roblox is actually a Nordic country. And he goes up to like the Netherlands and I live those places. He's like, uh, actually, Roblox is a island off of, uh, in the UK. It's off of Wales. He looks over there and sure enough, Roblox is not an island off of Wales. He's like, um, I mean, uh, Roblox is actually in Asia. And he's like, teacher, do you, I, 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 I totally messed up. So the, the Roblox kid looks at his teacher and says, teacher, I totally messed up. And the teacher's looking at him with this kind of smug look of, yeah, okay, bro, I know Roblox is not a real country. And the kid's like, um, so basically Roblox is actually in Asia. I'm sorry. Can I amend my bet? And the teacher's like, sure. Amend your bet to say that Roblox is actually a real country in Asia. Go ahead. So the kid is frantically looking all around Asia, and he doesn't find, he's like, actually, Roblox is a real country in Africa, my fault. The teacher's like, look there as well. And eventually, the Roblox kid, he doesn't say it's a real country in Australia, or a real country in Antarctica, Antarctica or something like that, or North America. Eventually, the Roblox kid realizes that he's been wrong the entire time. And the Roblox kid sees that there's like, you know, 10 minutes left of class, and he's like... I, I, I think this globe is outdated. And the teacher's like, nope, look at the date. And sure enough, the globe was bought like two years ago. So the Roblox kid is like starting to like be in a stage of denial. He's like, uh, no, you changed this globe last minute so that it wouldn't have Roblox the country. And uh, so the teacher's like, all right, well, we can use my computer and look up Roblox the country. We can look up global maps that are updated daily and that I don't control. And if Roblox isn't there, then I win. And at this point, I think the Roblox kid realized that Roblox was not actually a real country, but he was just super stubborn. So he said, um, you probably just hacked the internet. And the teacher is looking at him. He's like, really? I hacked the internet? And this kid was just looking at the teacher. And this teacher was just looking at the kid and they were just looking at each other and the kid literally bursts out crying and runs out of the Click on the video on screen right now. I know you'll enjoy it. Just click it. Do it. So spoiled kids are extremely annoying. They're super entitled. And today, a spoiled kid just starts getting away with so much and just is so annoying that he actually makes the teacher who's been teaching for like 15 years quit their job. Yeah, this is a pretty crazy one, so buckle up, subscribe if you're new to the channel, and enjoy story videos, and let's just jump right on into it. So we're gonna call the subscriber who submitted the Today's Story, Luke. So anyways, in Luke's class, there was a kid who we're just gonna call the Spoiled Kid, and they had a pretty major assessment that was coming up. 
So the teacher decides to put Luke and all the other classmates, including the spoiled kid, into small groups to review. So basically, they've had an entire week to study for this test. It's like one of the major tests that will have a pretty big impact on the grade. So they're put into small groups to kind of just go over material, just kind of like go over stuff that they need to do. And so they're in the small groups, and Luke happens to be put into a group with the spoiled kid. And the spoiled kid almost immediately starts... I don't know if it's bragging or just... I, I don't know what this is. I think it's bragging, but I'm not sure. He starts telling everyone in a bragging tone that he has not studied at all. So all the kids, including Luke, look at him a little bit uh, confused and also a little bit concerned. Because this wasn't some easy class that you could kind of figure out. I think this was like biology or something. It's one of those classes where it is really memorization-based. And in maybe some, I don't know, other types of classes, you can kind of wing it. However, in memorization, like, heavy classes, it's a lot harder to wing, wing it because it's less about common sense and more about information recall, which you can't really wing information recall unless you're literally attached to the internet through, like, N Elon Musk's Neuralink or whatever, right? So, uh, yeah, the kids in Luke's group with the spoiled kid kind of looked at the spoiled kid with this look of concern it, like genuinely just concerned about him because they're like, bro, how are you actually going to make it through this exam? Because like Luke and all the other kids in the class had actually been studying for this for a while. Because I think this was actually an AP class. I think this was AP high school biology, which is known for being a very difficult class. I mean, different classes, different schools can teach it at different levels of difficulty, but it is overall a very difficult class. So Luke pipes up and says, bro, like, you should probably start studying, like, for your own good and your own, like, success. You should really consider, like, studying, bro. Like, you really should consider studying. And the spoiled kid looks at them and says, No, not have I only not studied, but I don't plan to study at all. And guess what, guys? I'm going to get an A, and I guarantee it. So all of them look at the kid like he's completely delusional, which, I mean, he is a little bit. But also, he knows the thing that they don't know. His daddy's a big shot freaking lawyer, bro. Yeah, so basically the spoiled kid had a father who was a lawyer and was like one of the most successful lawyers in like their state. Like he was always like representing private, he was doing all these things, right? And he also ended up owning his own law firm. Like he was very powerful, very successful. And here's the thing, there are children of successful people and sometimes they turn out to be, you know, really great driven individuals who are humble and grounded, and they just happen to have more resources at their disposal. So sometimes they use that just to, you know, to elevate themselves and to be able to do even more. However, other kids sometimes will let the, kind of like the resources and power that, you know, their parents and family have go to their heads as if they were the ones who rightfully earned it, right? As if they didn't just luckily spawn into existence into the right family, dude. Yeah, so this sort of entitlement definitely followed around Luke. And unfortunately, Luke's parent, not Luke, sorry, the spoiled kid. And unfortunately, the spoiled kid's parents completely encouraged this type of behavior. They would, you know, whenever the spoiled kid would have a tantrum, they would basically back him up. So because of that, he was super inflated, like inflated ego, inflated confidence, inflated just like everything like that. So the spoiled kid was basically bragging about how the fact that he hasn't studied and he doesn't need to study. The thing is, though, Luke and everyone else in the group with the spoiled kid, they don't realize that the spoiled kid is going to pull the daddy is a lawyer card. They just think that this kid's going to freaking fail. So they keep trying to tell him, dude, like, this is really hard. Like, we've been studying for even more than a week. Like, we've been preparing for this even before we knew that we had a test. Because they were told about that they were going to have a test in a week, but it was kind of clear what the material was going to be on because or what the test was going to have on it because it was it followed this very sequential uh a very sequential order of everything right so a lot of them including luke had actually just been reviewing after every single class because not only this they wanted to do on the ap test too and so it makes a lot of sense to review as you go along not even just for tests it'll make studying for the ap a lot easier have you guys ever taken an ap class in high school if you have let me know down below I took a few, but uh, anyways, right, so Luke is looking at this kid in this kind of, like, feeling of, like, oh, jeez, bro, bro's actually gloating about failing. Yeah, so little did he know that the spoiled kid had a trick up his sleeve. So anyways, after the spoiled kid brags about not studying and not planning on studying, 
but thinking that he was going to do super well. Everyone in the group just assumed that, okay, we tried to warn this kid that this is a hard exam. He's not heeding our warning. So like at the end of the day, what can we actually do? Like, what can we actually do about it? The answer is probably nothing. So they decide that they're going to go ahead and continue on doing what they're supposed to be doing in the first place, which is studying for the big exam. So yeah, sure enough, they, they study for the rest of the period, and the spoiled kid just completely goes on his phone, not even paying attention. So in other stories, like uh, the schools have been stricter about going on your phone. However, this school, it's kind of less enforced. It, like, there is a rule against blatantly going on your phone in class, or at least teachers are given the ability to enforce the rule really strictly. However, this teacher really did kind of abide by the, if you want to learn, you'll learn. If you want to like goof off or whatever, you can goof off. And especially since this is an AP test, it's like the teacher probably is thinking, if you don't want to study for the AP test that you're paying for and need for college, I mean, go for it. Like if you want to do all the studying on your own or like not pay attention to my class, like I'm not going to like force you to. So the spoiled kid was literally just on his phone the entire time while everyone else was preparing for the exam. So finally, the next day, Friday comes in and it is the first exam. It's really difficult, or at least that's what Tom says. And even the people who put in a lot of effort, including himself, and studied, it would, they did pretty tough. Like it was really hard. And by like the, the average was like a B minus, which a B minus is not a bad grade, but it's definitely like, on, I'd say average grades for a lot of things are like Bs, high Bs, not really A's, not really C's, unless you're in like a college physics class or something. Hey guys, the average is a 24%. Congratulations, you all did amazing. It's not like that, this is still high school. However, let me just say that the spoiled kid was the very lowest score. So basically, the teacher goes on the board before handing out the tests and says, all right, guys, so before I hand back the tests, I kind of want to just want to show you how this like scatters out. I know some teachers who do this, and it's always kind of interesting, but also a little, a little humiliating if you learn that you actually did the worst. So he says, all right, so he goes on the board and he says, the high on this test was a 90 um, and the lowest score was a 12. And he said, and then he kind of like drew a kind of like, you know, one of those like bell curves, but he didn't do it like a standard distribution. He kind of like had the curve go way up around the 70 to 80 range. He said, okay, the majority of the test scores were in the 70 to 80 range. We had a few in the 50s, few in the 60s, majority in the 70s, and a few and a lot in the low 80s. And 190, which was not 190, but 190%, he says that was the highest. So the teacher then goes ahead and walks around handing out the tests. And as soon as the spoiled kid gets his test, he looks at it, but he doesn't have a look of, like, shock. Like, sometimes when spoiled kids are really arrogant and think that they'll just be a genius and be able to pass their test because of their sheer genius ability and epic mind because they were always told by their parents that they were geniuses. No, no, no. So, and not in this case. The spoiled kid, in this case, knew that he wasn't going to do well. So instead of having a shocked reaction, he looks at it, and simply, very calmly raises his hand. So the teacher, expecting like a little bit of commenting from the kid who got an 11%, right? Uh, but didn't really expect the commentary to come as a class question. The teacher kind of expected the spoiled kid to ask to meet with him after class or during a free period, and they'd go over the test together and how the spoiled kid can salvage his grade in this class. However, it looks like the spoiled kid wanted to get attention for this in front of the entire class. So, you know, the teacher's like, however, you know, whatever, right? So the teacher looks at him and says, yes, spoiled kid, what is it? So the spoiled kid looks at him and says, you know, we're going to call him Mr. Davenport. Some of you guys have been asking, why is every teacher name Mr. or Mrs. Davenport? I used the name once and then similar to me using Ben as the secondary character. I'm just not creative and I like routine. So I've just been using it every time. So we're going to call the teacher Mr. Davenport. And Mr. Davenport looks at the spoiled kid and is like, yes. And the student, the spoiled kid, stands up and looks at Mr. Davenport and says this in a forceful yet calm manner. This spoiled kid is a lot more, uh, I don't know, uh, it, I don't want to say competent, but a lot more confident and a lot more tactical when he like goes about being a spoiled brat. He looks at this teacher and says, if you do not change my grade to an A, I will sue you and the school. So the entire class was like not quiet, not, not, not like speaking super loud, you know, they weren't all talking. 
But what the, the, the light hum of kind of like a little bit of talking, a little bit of movement that was present before this kid said that cuts out immediately and it is dead, empty silence. So everyone is just kind of like, oh, damn, did this kid actually just say that, bro? So yeah, um, the teacher has a very, Mr. Davenport has a very stunned look on his face because I don't know about you, but if I was a teacher and some kid very calmly stood up and said, hey, I, if you don't change my grade from a fail to an A, I'm going to, uh, I don't know, sue you and the entire school. Yeah. So the teacher kind of like laughs a little bit because genuinely, how do you react in a situation like this? And is this like, uh, <laughs> come again? So the spoiled kid looks at him and says, yeah, I think you heard me the first time, but if you don't change my grade from an 11% to a 90%, basically from a fail to an A, I'm not only going to sue you, but I'm going to sue the entire school. And this school will come crumbling down. So at this point, this is when the subscriber, Luke, realized that the spoiled kid did have no intention of studying but he didn't have any intention on doing well in the test from like the first time around. The spoiled kid had no intention of studying because he was going to basically threaten his way to an A. Look, there's a lot of strategies of doing well in high school. I do not suggest this one, guys. I, I mean, I don't know how many of you guys could pull this off. I know I certainly couldn't, but I really don't suggest this. Yeah, so uh, sure enough, um, Luke and everyone else in the class they're just like, oh my God, like, what did this kid just say? And, you know, the teacher's looking at the spoiled kid. And the teacher, like the smart, the, kind of like the smirk, laugh, smile the teacher had on his face. That wasn't really because he thought it was funny, but just because he was completely taken off guard. Slowly dissipates as he realizes that the spoiled kid did just say what he thought he said. And also said it with completely seriously. So the teacher kind of makes his tone serious as well and says... You know, I will not take such threats in my class. Like, you're going to sit down and nothing's about your grade is going to change. Like, you didn't put in the work, you performed poorly, and because of that, you threatened to sue me. Like, that's insulting. Like, just sit down. I'm not hearing anything else from you for the rest of class. So the class is, like, super silent as this kid sits down, as this is pretty crazy. Like, this is like, whoa, because this teacher was pretty chill. I mean, I don't know. He was a... Uh, he wasn't like, I'm going to be your best friend, but you kind of don't want your teacher to be your best friend. You don't want them to be so ridiculously out of touch that they like, I, I don't know, like that they can't actually like relate or they make things really hard, not realizing because they're just so out of touch. But you also don't want your teacher to be your best friend because, you know, they're also, they're supposed to be, have a figure of authority over you. They're supposed to be your teacher, not your friend. However, while this guy was very chill, they've never seen him lash out at anyone. So it was pretty uncomfortable for them to see this, uh, even though it totally, even though everyone agreed this was a totally justified response, because I don't know about you, but if I was a teacher and some kid threatened to sue me, I don't think I would just be like, oh, okay, that's fine. That's a totally normal thing that normal people say. I think I would recognize how insane of a thing that just, that was said just was. Like, I think I would, I, I don't know. I think I'd be upset as well. I don't know if you guys agree or disagree. You can let me know in the comments if you'd like. So here's the thing. Luke and everyone else in the class kind of assumed that the spoiled kid was pulling a massive bluff. They kind of assumed that the spoiled kid did not actually believe that he was going to be able to sue the school or that anything like that, or even try. So ever, some people, not Luke, but Luke learned a little bit later on, but other people knew that the spoiled kid came from a really powerful lawyer-type family that owned a law firm, and his dad was specifically one of the top lawyers, whatever, in the state. But at the same time, they were just like, no way that his dad is actually going to go along with it. Like, even if the spoiled kid, right? The spoiled kid might say, I'm going to sue you. But at the end of the day, the spoiled kid is not going to sue the teacher nor the school. It would really be the parents who own the law firm or to sue them individually, who even knows, right? And no one in the class thought that the parents would actually stoop that low. However, this is where they were wrong. Because, yeah, um, let's just say that the spoiled kid threatening to sue was not the most ridiculous thing. Sue. Sue is the secret word of the day, so if you made it this far into the video, comment sue, which is S-U-E, 
uh, in down below in the comment section. I'd love to see how many people made it as far into the video. And while you're down in the comment section, uh, make sure to check the pinned comment. In the pinned comment is a link to my Spotify account in which I have all these story times uploaded on Spotify. So if you want to just listen to them as a podcast and help me out as well, go ahead and do that. And also in the pinned comment, final thing is there are two channels, one which I post meme kind of type videos, and the other one are story times, but they're specifically Reddit story time videos. If you can go ahead and subscribe to both those channels and perhaps watch those videos, it would help them out a lot as they're a lot smaller and your, your viewership goes a long, long way, especially when I'm when, whenever you're trying to start a new channel. So anyways, let's get back into it. So sure enough, um, basically what happens is the spoiled kid his family gets in contact with the school. Yeah, so basically his family gets in contact with the school and they, uh, I don't know exactly how they do it. I don't know exactly what they say. They don't, okay, there's no way that they actually say, hey, you're stu like my son failed an exam because he's an idiot, but because we have money, we're gonna th threaten to sue you unless you change it back. They basically said probably something along the lines of some kind of BS like, emotional damage, unfair, something, something, um, a bunch of other stuff, legal jargon, basically saying that we're going to drag you through the mud because we have the money and resources too, but we'll totally let this go if you uh, make things right with our son. Correct his emotional damage by forcing an A in the class, right? So the thing is, the teacher, this is literally the worst news ever, and it is delivered to the teacher in the worst way possible. So the next day in class, everyone's sitting there, Spoil Kid is sitting there, you know. Spoil Kid's pretty confident, even though at this point I don't think he even knows that he is going to win this. Yeah, guys, the Spoil Kid actually wins for once, which is terrible, I know. And so the teacher is in midway through teaching something about biology. Uh, I'm not sure what he's teaching. I, I took biology such a long time ago, man. I think it was a good class. But uh, anyways, one of the faculty slash staff members walk into the room. They say, hey, Mr. Davenport, um, can I just talk to you for a second? And Mr. Davenport's like, okay. Mr. Da Davenport walks outside, has a conversation. So the thing is, um, the, subscriber, the subscriber, Luke, doesn't 100% sure know that this was a conversation exactly when Mr. Davenport learned the truth, or not the truth, but what he had to do. But uh, either way, he eventually learns. However, when Mr. Davenport walks back into the classroom, he is very clearly a little bit shaken up and also quite a bit angry slash upset because either he was just told or, I don't know, maybe he was informed that he really had to. He thought it was a joke. But basically, he had to change the spoiled kid's grade from an 11% to a 100% from a fail to an A plus or an A, however you want to go about it, simply because the school genuinely just saw that, that this family would drag them through the mud and burn them through all their resources for a case that wouldn't even amount to anything. If the, and the only thing they had to do was basically change this kid's grade back. Yeah, it's pretty messed up. I'm not going to lie. And the teacher, Mr. Davenport, also thought it was pretty messed up. Yeah, so Mr. Davenport was just super weird for the rest of the day, probably because he learned that he needed to basically give someone a fake grade, something that they didn't earn after threatening, which is after doing something insane, basically awarding their worst behavior ever and also giving someone a grade that they didn't deserve, all because the school was scared of this family, right? So the next day in class, the spoiled kid walked in 15 minutes late. And Mr. Davenport, while being pretty chill, was not a fan of, like, not showing up on time. He didn't care if you were a minute late. I mean, maybe if you're, like, three minutes late every single day, no matter what, like, he'd be like, dude, just, like, leave, like, walk a little faster, maybe don't take the same. I, I, I don't know. He would, like, figure it out, or if there's a genuine reason, I don't think he'd care. But this, he didn't like kids when they were late, right? He, he'd always give them a hard time. So the spoiled kid shows up 15 minutes late. And the reason why the spoiled kid showed up so late was not because, I don't know, he got out of class late or even because, like, a genuine reason. The reason was, was because the spoiled kid learned from his parents that the school had instructed Mr. Davenport to change his 11% to 100% and that he was going to have to go through with it. So at this point, the spoiled kid basically learns that he won and that Mr. Davenport will be forced to do whatever he says, practically. 
So the spoiled kid walks in 15 minutes late. Mr. Davenport turns to him and says, why are you 15 minutes late? The spoiled kid says, eh, I didn't feel like coming here on time. I came, I, I come on my own schedule. And Mr. Davenport's like, like, no, that'll be deducted from your grade. Like, you gotta be like showing up on time. You can't be like showing up 15 minutes late. And the spoiled kid's like, I don't know, Mr. Davenport. I kind of think I can do whatever I want. So yeah, he sits down and Mr. Davenport is very, very obviously very angry and steaming. However, he also seems a little reserved, a little bit held back. And Luke has no idea that the school has told Mr. Davenport that he needs to change his grade. So at this point, Luke is like massively confused because he's like, wait a minute, this kid just blatantly disrespected Mr. Davenport. And he looks and sounds extremely angry, but he didn't pursue this. This makes literally no sense. So Mr. Davenport just starts teaching, tries to get through it. And that's when the spoiled kid basically just keeps taunting him. Spoiled kid raises his hand because Mr. Davenport asks a question. And the spoiled kid raises his hand and says, doesn't really matter for me, might matter for those guys. I don't know the answer and I don't really care. And everyone in the class is just so confused by this answer. They turn around and they look at him. They're just like, what? And then after turning around and looking at the spoiled kid, they immediately turn to Mr. Davenport because they're like, oh my God, Mr. Davenport's going to chew him out again. Like some of them are rooting on for Mr. Davenport to just rip him a new one because they're like, this kid is literally the worst. He sucks. And I really like seeing a spoiled kid getting owned by their teacher, right? However... Mr. Davenport looked at him, and Mr. Davenport gave a long, cold stare, but he didn't say anything. And Luke was so, so confused. Luke was going to learn the truth in a couple of minutes. Stick around, as Mr. Davenport does kind of blow up on him in class. It's very entertaining. But anyways, Luke is just really confused at this point. He doesn't know what's going on, and he's like, what? Like, why is he putting up with this? So finally, the spoiled kid, after Mr. Davenport goes back to teaching again, the spoiled kid basically breaks the last straw. It's the last straw on the camel's, that broke the camel's back at this point. So the spoiled kid just starts playing a video on his computer. So kids weren't even really supposed to have their computers out, but you know, for some classes, you bring a computer in, and for other classes, the teacher would be like, hey, can you not have your computers out? And biology was one of the classes where the teacher asked very nicely, like, don't have your computer out. We don't have any need for it. And I know it's just going to be a distraction because let's be real, guys. If you have your computer out in class, if you're not playing jump or the dinosaur jump game or slither.io, or if you're not just like doing stuff on it, bro, what are you doing on that computer? I, I guarantee you, bro, I have, I sometimes sit in the back and I see, I have, I have a full perspective of everyone's computers. No one is doing what they're supposed to be doing, which in most cases is just paying attention. They're not paying attention, bro. If I'm a teacher, those computers are shut because I know for a fact no one's paying attention to me if their computers are open. That's kind of how it goes. But the spoiled kid not only takes out his computer, but he starts really loudly watching a movie. Like you hear the 21st Century Fox thing, like the da-da-da-da, da-da-da-da, like very loudly. It's very clearly a movie. So the whole class turns around again and sees the spoiled kid put his feet up on his desk, recline back, and literally opens up his backpack and pulls out a thing of popcorn. Yeah, the spoiled kid was planning his moves to be as disrespectful as possible. He literally popped popcorn in advance just so that he could be disrespectful to Mr. Davenport. Yeah, I'm not even kidding here. So at this point, Mr. Davenport stops what he's doing and he asks nicely, like, spoiled kid, could you please not play a movie in class? And once again, Luke and everyone else in the class is like, huh? Like, why is Mr. Davenport not going in? Like, he would go in on anyone else, and some of the kids were probably getting a little bit mad. Like, what is the special treatment of such a jerk of a kid, right? And the kid's like, nah, I don't think so. And he literally just continues to watch, and he pops more popcorn. And that's when Mr. Davenport just freezes. He doesn't say anything for literally 60 seconds. I think Ms. Davenport, Mr. Davenport was having just like, was really thinking, and what I'm about to do, is it really worth it? And eventually, Mr. Davenport came to the conclusion, yes, what I'm about to say is worth it. So Mr. Davenport takes his like, go, walks over to his desk, has all these papers on it, and literally swipes all the papers off angrily and forcefully. Papers go flying, and as he does it, he says, 
I'm done. And the whole class is like, oh my God. He's like, that's it. I quit. Mr. Davenport has been a teacher for over 10 years. And one thing that the kids don't know about Mr. Davenport is that he isn't like a lot of teachers. A lot of teachers, they need their jobs, um, or not they need their jobs, but they don't get paid a lot as teachers, right? Unfortunately, one of the most important professions gets paid somewhat near the least, especially when you compare it to how important it is, right? So the thing is, um, Mr. Davenport was not like most teachers. Mr. Davenport wasn't originally a teacher. He actually made a lot of money being like a stock guy before he was at, in hedge funds and stuff like that. However, he made enough money and then wanted to pursue something that he felt was more meaningful and where it didn't really matter how much he got paid. And that happened to be, you know, that happened to be teaching. So Mr. Davenport was actually like a multi-multi-millionaire, right? And he happened to work with the spoiled kid's dad. So he knows all about it, right? So Mr. Davenport, at this point, is really just teaching for fun. However, this, like, this recent thing that happened, which having to give a kid a false grade and letting him boss him around was a little bit too much. And Mr. Davenport decided that it wasn't worth it. So the whole class is completely silent because Mr. Davenport just like slammed all the papers off his desk and screamed that he quit, which is pretty crazy. Yeah, so uh, that's when Mr. Davenport decides to go in on the spoiled kid. So the spoiled kid kind of like, kind of straightens up his back, takes his feet off of his desk and pauses the movie because he's, Mr. Davenport has gotten his attention to say the very least. So Mr. Davenport starts walking in on the spoiled kid. He's like, everyone, I want you to know something. This kid's family threatened to sue the school that if I, if to, like, threaten to school, sue the school unless I change his grade from a pitiful 11% to 100%. And guess what? One of the faculty informed me that I needed to do this. And so everyone's like, oh my God. So everyone starts freaking out. They're like, oh my God, right? And the spoiled kid has a little sense of like arrogance and smirk or whatever. And that's when the, you know, the teacher goes in, Mr. Davenport's like, spoiled kid, you're so confident. You're so full of yourself. It's like, do you really believe that you've done anything? And the spoiled kid is like, my family, dot, 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 whatever. But Mr. Davenport catches him off. He says, yeah, your family, not you. You've done nothing. You've achieved nothing. And everything in your life is not because of you. You've contributed nothing. You're a little leech who's bitten, digged his little fangs into the side of our society and sucked and sucked and sucked it dry. And the spoiled kid was like, whoa, 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 whoa. Because the spoiled kid had never been spoken to like that before. And the spoiled kid's like, I don't think who you know you're messing with. And the teacher screams back at him because remember, this teacher used to be a super successful, like, hedge fund, millionaire, whatever, and he's kept his identity pretty low-key. However, he's also still kept up in the world. The teacher screams back at him, I don't know who you think you're messing with. Spoiled kid did not know this, right? So the teacher goes on to say, class, I'm sorry. I cannot do this anymore. As much as, you know, I love teaching, the school is corrupt if they'd let something like this happen. The school is corrupt. The system is corrupt. And from this day on, I quit. And the teacher begins to pack up his stuff. And the spoiled kid has a little bit of a smile on his face because the spoiled kid believes that he's won. And that's when the teacher says, oh, spoiled kid, I, I, I got to let you know something. D just so you know, you didn't get away with this. You didn't get away with this. And the spoiled kid kind of speaks up like, spoiled kid's a little shaken up at this point because this is like a crazy turn of events, right? But the spoiled kid speaks up a little shakenly, but a little bit more confidently than he would have been a couple, like a minute ago. He's like, how did I not win this? Like, I got my A and you quit. And the teacher's like, spoiled kid, do you think I've been a teacher for my entire life? And the spoiled kid's like, um, yeah. And he's like, no, there's some things you don't know about me. I never had to be a teacher in the first place. In fact, for uh, like, <laughs> and he's like, you know what? Might as well let it all go. I'm no longer a teacher after this point, so it doesn't matter. I, in fact, am a multi-millionaire. I used to live a completely different life, and I left it all and I left my job behind to pursue teaching. I haven't needed to teach a single day, but I came in every single day to do so. And he looks at the spoiled kid. He's like, "You know what? Also, you know what happened when I worked in the world of finance and business? 
I, I met a lot of people because we, we consulted with a lot of really big organizations. And some of these big organizations were schools. In fact, I've met with almost every board of a pension fund of every major college in the United States. And at this point, the spoiled kid's like, uh-oh. And the teacher's like, I just want to let you know something. I will individually reach out to them and let each and every one of the colleges know who you are, what you stand for, and what you've done. And I guarantee you, it doesn't matter what SAT score your parents pay for. It doesn't matter what extracurriculars that you make up. It doesn't matter what other fake grades you get from bullying other teachers. You will not get into any of those schools. And for once in your life, you will have, you will get into a school, you will get something that you actually deserve, my friend. And with that, <laughs> the teacher, dead, the class is dead silent right now because this is like the most mic droppiest mic drop of all freaking time. And so he walks back, the teacher walks back, closes up his suitcase, clicks it, walks out the door. The kids are literally silent for the last 10 minutes of class. How's it going, everyone? Today we have a story time of probably one of the most spoiled kids on planet Earth. You guys probably know that kid who's pretty spoiled or entitled, but take that kid, imagine him, and make him twice as worse, and that is the spoiled kid we have today. So subscribe if you're new, and let's just jump right into it. So we're gonna call the subscriber James, who submitted this story. So anyways, James was on a class trip, and in this class trip, uh, they were going to a kind of like a museum type thing. It was something that they would do every single year, or at least the fourth grade would do every single year. So James and his classmates were pretty excited for this, as it was a pretty big deal. So yeah, the, anyways, they get onto the bus, and you, were, you, didn't, you already had like assigned seats just so that everyone would be organized or whatever. Because whenever you have, like, a really long, like, trek out or whatever, like, it, it's going to be a lot of cases where the school just wants to be as organized as possible so that, they, so that they don't, you know, lose anyone. And because of this, you not only had assigned seats, but you also had an assigned buddy that you had to spend the entire time with. And because they wanted everyone to be with their, their buddies or whatever, just to keep people together. So Jack, the subscriber who submitted this, right, uh, he was really hoping that, you know, because he was really chill with the majority of people in the class. However, there's this one kid who we're going to call the spoiled kid who is just known as being a really entitled jerk. And Jack was like, oh God, please don't put me with this kid. Whatever you do, put me with someone else and don't put me with this kid specifically. So yeah, Jack was waiting outside the bus as, as well with everyone else, waiting for the teachers to read out the names. And Jack is like, please don't be spoiled kid. Please don't be spoiled kid. Please don't be spoiled kid. And the teacher was like, all right, Sam and Ben, Aiden and Steve, whatever, Jack. And, and it almost felt like there was an intentional pause. There probably wasn't. But I think it was just because Jack was so like in the mode of anticipation, really hoping that it wasn't the spoiled kid that, you know, it almost felt like there was a pause where there wasn't. And the teacher's like, and spoiled kid. And Jack is like, how, 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 how? Like, what are the odds that that's actually how it went? Like, genuinely, like, what are the odds that out of everyone possible, that is actually the freaking spoiled kid I get, par like, I get partnered with? Like, that is 100% my luck. Like, how is this even possible? There was like a hundred kids in his class and somehow he got partnered with the one kid that he didn't want to be partnered with but i'm pretty sure that's like murphy's law where it's like the whenever like uh, yeah something like that will always happen and it's like it's the one thing you don't expect to happen will always happen so be prepared for it but anyways eventually they uh you know jack is told and everyone else is told to go find your buddy so jack finds the spoiled kid and uh, you know the spoiled kid's like what's up and jack's like yo and so they go on the bus and they sit down and immediately, once they get to their seats, the first problem of many, the first of many problems arises because the spoiled kid is like, I want window seat. And like, the thing was like Jack was in front of him. So it was just easier for Jack to slide in. And it also didn't really matter. And Jack wouldn't have really cared if the spoiled kid was like, hey man, can I have the window seat? Like that'd be totally fine, right? Who cares? But the way that the spoiled kid was like, give me the window seat now just so unnecessarily rude and aggressive, really for just a 20 minute bus ride for who has the window versus aisle seat. Like it was so dumb. So anyways, Jack's like, whatever. So he steps aside and the spoiled kid like pushes him on his way to get to the seat. Like he literally pushes him, bro. 
So Jack is immediately already knows that this is about to be quite, um, quite something to say the least. Like Jack already knows that this is about to be uh, quite the adventure he's about to go on, or uh, the experience, I should say, because the spoiled kid is continuing to be a spoiled kid, right? He's continuing to do what spoiled kids always do. And so the kid is sitting there and he takes out his phone. And the one thing, a pretty strong rule was no one was allowed to have their phones no one was even allowed to really have their phones on them. They had to be zipped away in their backpacks. And you could, like, turn it on so you could hear if you were getting a phone call, because, like, I don't know, maybe your parents need to contact you, maybe there's an emergency. But really what should happen is the parents contact the school that contacts the teacher that contacts you. Uh, and But whatever, right? So the spoiled kid was on his phone playing some video game or something, and, uh, you know... That's when he gets bored of the video game and Jack is like talking to some of the people, right? Some of the classmates. Because when you have the aisle seat on the bus, it's a lot easier. I don't know if you guys experience this, but whenever I got the window seat, it was very difficult to talk to people because you'd either have to turn around, which is uncomfortable, and talk to the person behind you, or you talk to the person in front of you, but they would have to turn around and most of the time you don't want to do that. And uh, the people that are like across from you, you're kind of like blocked by the person sitting on the aisle. So when you sit on the aisle seat when you're taking a bus, it's just so much easier to talk to a lot of people. So remember, the spoiled kid demanded that he had the window seat. Like he demanded that he got the window seat. And so Jack was like, whatever. And he sat down the aisle seat. And Jack was like having a good time talking with people. And the spoiled kid like punches him in the arm. Doesn't like full blown like smack him in the arm, but kind of punches him in the arm to get his attention, which just like hurt a little bit and seemed super unnecessary. Like, could you literally not tap me, bro? Like, were you not like physically capable of just tapping my arm instead? So sure enough, Jack, it like turns right, he's like, yes. And the spoiled kid's like, give me the aisle seat right now. Stop hogging all the attention. And Jack is like, bro, what? Like, what do you mean I'm hogging all the, because <laughs> Jack is so confused because he remembers how, in how like intense the spoiled kid was acting and how like intent he was on getting the window seat that he was like super rude earlier and still left a bad taste in Jack's mouth. And now, 10 minutes later, when the spoiled kid gets bored of his video games that he wasn't even supposed to be playing, he now demands to have like the seat where he can talk to other people. So at this point, you know, Jack kind of just doesn't want to like switch seats. He's like, bro, it would be such a hassle to switch seats and I'm not trying to stand up. They don't want us to stand up on the bus. And the spoiled kid starts punching Jack in the arm. He's like, give it to me, give it to me, give it to me, give it to me. And, you know, he's like, stop, Jack, like, stop, stop. What are you doing right now? And the spoiled kid's like, I'm going to make your life a living hell unless you switch seats right now. So at this point, Jack is like, oh, okay, whatever, bro. Like, I really don't care. Like, fine, fine, dude, sure, whatever. So Jack stands up. And immediately hears, Jack, sit back down. So Jack sits back down, because one of the teachers in the front, because you can't be standing up while the bus is moving, just in case it has to stop abruptly. You would go, like, you'd fall over, maybe you'd hurt yourself, just for liability's sake. So he sits back down, and the spoiled kid starts punching him in the arm. He's like, bro, why do you sit down? Like, I'm trying to sit in that seat. And Jack's like, dude, I was just told by the teachers that I need to sit down right now. Like, I'm sorry. Like, you're going to have to climb over me. So the spoiled kid is like, fine. So Jack starts sliding in towards the window and the spoiled kid starts climbing over Jack and the spoiled kid legitimately like falls. Like he's trying to climb over and he loses his balance and then just falls on top of Jack. And Jack's like, dude, get off of me. And the spoiled kid's like, you get off of me, bro. Which is like, did you really just say you get off of me, bro, when you're literally sprawled on top of Jack? Like you are on top of Jack right now. You are sprawled on top of this guy. How is he supposed to get off of you when you have him pinned down? So eventually the spoiled kid gets the aisle seat. And uh, here's the thing. I think the spoiled kid just imagined that anybody, literally anybody, if you sit in the aisle seat, you will have people to talk to. But the thing was, uh, most people didn't like the spoiled kid because I don't know, uh, he's pretty clearly a big massive jerk, right? And it feels pretty obvious right now. So the spoiled kid, when he actually got the aisle seat, people like weren't talking with him. So the spoiled kid starts to get mad and t turns over to Jack, because Jack is now just looking out the window. Jack is not talking with anyone because he's not in the aisle seat. He's looking out the window and he hears bump, 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 or he doesn't hear. He feels up like a punching against his arm. He's like, I swear to God, this kid is gonna get KO'd from me if he doesn't stop it. So he turns around, he's like, what? And the spoiled kid's like, you tricked me into giving me you your like window seat. Like, I want it back now. And Jack looks at him and is like, dude, 
can you please just choose? It's literally, we have five minutes left in our drive. Like, can you not chill out for one freaking second, dude? And Spoil Kids, like, you tricked me. Like, you were making it seem so fun in the aisle seat so that you could have my window seat. Like, I want it back. And Jack's like, dude, okay, if I give this back to you, we're not going to switch again. Like, I'm not going to switch with you again. If we switch, well, I'm, we're never going to switch again, okay? And the Spoil Kids, like, yeah, fine, whatever. So when Jack and the Spoil Kid finally switch seats, Jack gets back to sitting, right? And he sits there. And remember, now the people that are sitting in the aisle, they see that Jack is sitting there. So they're like, oh, we like this guy. So they start talking to him again. And the spoiled kid starts to get super angry. And he taps Jack again. He's like, dude, why did you trick me again? And Jack turns around and is trying to keep his rage together. Because I don't know about you, but I would be pretty angry myself as well. But Jack is like, what do you mean now? And he's like, dude, like, you, you're, you, you tricked me again. Like, we gotta switch. And Jack's like, no, I'm not gonna switch. And so the spoiled kid's like, starts punching him. He's like, ah, ah, like, we gotta switch now. And Jack literally just clocks him in the arm as hard as possible. And the spoiled kid's like, Eeeh. and Jack's like, oh my God. So sure enough, the bus stops. And as the teacher gets up to take attendance, the teacher sees the spoil kid just having a complete fit or whatever. So, yeah, eventually the teacher comes over. Um, Jack is, like, is asked, like, what happened? And the spoil kid's like, Jack hit me in the arm. And the teacher's like, Jack? And, then, and so Jack was like, like, he was beating me in the arm again and again and again. I just did it back to make him stop. And the teacher's like, well, obviously, he wasn't doing it super hard to you, and you played way too hard back. No roughhousing. Apologize to the spoiled kid. And Jack is like, oh, my God. I need to apologize to this kid? Dude, like, I don't think I can, I don't think I can stomach apologizing to this kid. I just hate him so much, bro. Like, I just hate this so much, bro. Like, I can't take this anymore, dude. And so, yeah, um, the spoiled kid, um, you know, Jack is like, Sorry. The spoiled kid's like, it's okay. That's fine. I'll recover eventually. Maybe I'll have to amputate this arm, but I don't know. We'll see. Mm. And Jack is like, oh my god, I just want to beat this kid. Oh my god. Oh my god. And the teacher's like, all right, well, everyone get with your buddies and go off to the, you know, the museum or whatever. So uh, they, they get up and Jack notices the spoiled kid stops crying immediately. Like, he doesn't kind of like, you know, sometimes a kid will cry and they'll, they'll mean it. They'll actually be truly upset, but they'll slowly, like, stop crying. They'll cry less and less and less until they basically stop, right? This was not that. The spoiled kid was putting on an act, and Jack realized it, because he literally shut off his tears and any emotion the second they got up. The second the teacher walked away, he was a totally different kid. Yeah, so, uh, tears is the secret word of the day. So if you made it this far into the video, comment tears down below. Uh, that'll be the secret word. I want to see how many people made it. And while you're in the comment section, check the pinned comment. There's a link to my Spotify page where you can listen to these stories on Spotify as podcasts. As well, there are two links to my two other channels that very soon I'll be posting daily on. So please subscribe to them. It will help me out. And if you're listening on Spotify, please rate five stars on the main page. And anyways, let's get back to it. So sure enough, the spoiled kid and Jack, they start walking into the museum. And I wasn't told exactly what type of museum this is. So let's just say that... I don't know, it's a history museum. That's a pretty, pretty common type of museum because museums are like historical or whatever. Some type of like historical museum, whatever. And this was a pretty popular museum. Like a lot of people would come to go see it. So when Jack and the spoiled kid were walking in, Jack hears the spoiled kid go, oh my God. Ah, ah, ah. And Jack's like, what? And he turns around and the spoiled kid looks like he just saw a freaking ghost. So Jack is actually kind of curious. He's like, dude, like, what is it? He's like, look at all those people. What? Look at all the diseases they must have. And he, like, points at them. And Jack's like, what, what are you talking about? He's like, the lower classes, they're, they're everywhere. And Jack's like, wait, what? He's like, yes, the lower incomes, they're all around me. I might catch their disease and be like them. I can't have that happen. Oh.
and Jack's like, dude, shut up. Like, what are you saying? He's like, don't say shut up to me. I'm worried for you too, Jack. Even though you're probably one of the poors anyways. But you might become more like them. <sighs> and Jack's like, dude, shut up. Oh my God, please. So the spoiled kid was like, Jack, I need you to tell me. You are around the poors all the time, and you are one as well. Will they eat me if they see me? <laughs> and Jack's like, dude, shut up. What are you even saying right now, bro? Huh? And he's like, the, the, the under, the poors, I think they want to eat me and take all my stuff. And Jack's like, dude, shut up. And he just like grabs the spoil kid and drags it, man. The spoil kid's like, no, 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 Jack, no, you're betraying me. No, and eventually they get in. I think the spoil kid realized that the quote unquote poors are not going to eat him. And he's like, oh, I'm safe for now. They must think I'm one of them. Oh, gross. And Jack's like, dude, shut up. Oh my God. Yeah, so Jack kind of realized that being with the spoiled kid was going to suck, but, like, he didn't realize it was going to be this bad. Like, he knew it was going to be bad, but he's like, is he didn't expect it to be this bad. Like, this is a whole new level of terrible. Like, this is a whole new level of, oh my god, like, damn, bro. Like, it gets this bad? Yeah, so, anyways, they're walking around the museum or whatever, and the spoiled kid starts touching something, and... Uh, in the museum, you're not really allowed to touch stuff. At least in a lot of cases, there'll be signs being like, hey, can you please not touch the whatever exhibit? Like, you're just not supposed to. And a spoiled kid is just freaking full-on gripping this thing, right? He's just, like, feeling it or whatever. God, don't take this out of context. He's just like, <laughs> let's say it's a rock. Let's say it's a historical rock or something. He's just, like, feeling this historical rock or whatever, gripping the historical rock. I'm going to shut up. Um, and anyway, so one of the uh, people who work at the museum comes over and is like, hey, buddy, can you, like, can you not touch it? And the spoiled kid is like, what do you mean? I can't touch it. Like, I, I get that, like, the, the masses can't touch it. And he's like, but I, I, I'm VIP. And the, the guy working in the museum is like, sorry, no one can touch it. Like, I can't really touch it either. Like, I'm not supposed to. I'm just supposed to tell people that they shouldn't be touching it, right? And the spoiled kid's like, no, no, I don't think you understand. I'm actually VIP. And the... Uh, <laughs> Guy's like, uh, uh, no, I don't think you understand. Like, first of all, there is no VIP here. He's like, no, no, you don't, you don't understand, bro. I'm, I'm VIP. I'm VIP. I'm a spoiled kid. I'm the best. And the guy's like, sorry, there's no VIP. Um, that's not a thing. And also, even if you were, you would not be allowed to touch the historical things. Like, you just, that's just not a thing. Like, there's no, we don't let anyone do that. It's like for the, it's kind of the protect the integrity of it. If too many people t touch it, it'll kind of like rub down. It won't be as like nice as it was. And also, like, uh, if one person, like, touches it too hard and breaks it, like, we want to make sure that everyone can enjoy it, so please don't touch it, right? Yeah, so the spoiled kid doesn't, like, Ed, like most spoiled kids, he doesn't take no for an answer very well. So the spoiled kid is like, what, 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 what are you saying right now? You're saying, I, I can't, you're saying no? He says, you know what, well, then, mister, I'm actually gonna, uh, I'm actually gonna take it. So the spoiled kid literally picks up the rock out of, like, the exhibit thing or, like, the museum thing and grabs onto it. Okay, so that's when the security guard's like, all right, we got to take this seriously. So basically, the security guard takes the thing out of his hand, puts it back, and says, where, like, your, like, parental figures or whatever. So Jack is like, okay. So Jack, like, calls over one of the teachers. The security guard explains that, you know, the spoiled kid can no longer be in the museum anymore. Like, he's caused too much of a ruckus. He needs to be removed and says, like, as long as he isn't in the parts of the museum where there's actual exhibits, it's fine. So, uh, yeah, the teachers are like, oh, geez, because they can't drive him back personally. So they're like, hey, can we just plop him in the gift store? And the, and the guy's like, yeah, that's fine. And so Jack is like, okay, well, that sucks for him. <laughs> and Jack's about to walk away. And the teacher's like, Jack, where are you going? And Jack's like, wait, what? And the teacher's like, yeah, Jack, I mean, you're his buddy. I'm sorry to say, but you have to stick with him at all times. And Jack's like, no, dude, what? Yeah, so, <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, Jack now has to stay with the spoiled kid in the gift store for, like, the next hour because the spoiled kid is just an idiot and can't keep his, him, his hands to himself. So Jack is walking to the store with the spoiled kid, and it's, like, dead silent for a second because Jack is, like, really upset. And the spoiled kid's, like, after, like, a little bit, tries to break the silence. He's like, dude, can you believe them, bro? Like... That's actually so crazy, dude. Like, I can't believe that they would, like, so unrightfully throw me out. Like, that's crazy, dude. Like, that's that's unheard of, bro. And, like, Jack just kind of looks at him. 
just kind of gives him this look. Because he's like, of course the spoiled kid would refuse to take accountability for his actions. Of course the spoiled kid would believe that actually everyone else is in the wrong and he's in the right here. Because, oh yeah, it makes a lot of sense that he would be allowed to literally pick up the things that are like on display that no one is allowed to touch and they're only allowed to see. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense for him to be allowed to pick it up and mess with it and be totally fine. And Jack just kind of looks at him and gives him this look and then keeps going. This boy is like, bro, do you not agree? Like, do you not agree with me? Like, bro, what? And Jack looks at him. He's like, dude, you're going to go in one side of the store and I'm going to go in the other side of the store. Just because I have to be in the same room with you doesn't mean I have to be next to you. Doesn't mean I have to deal with you any longer. He says, you go to that side of the gift store. I will be on the other side at all times. We're in the same place, but I don't want to deal with you anymore. So Jack basically storms off, which I totally understand. I feel like if I was in this position, I'd be pretty angry too. I might just like, I don't know. I might just suck it up because I'm not the most confrontational person ever. So I might just be like, or whatever, and like just deal with it. But I totally understand why Jack wants to kind of distance himself from the spoiled kid because, yeah, I can't, I can't really blame him. The spoiled kid is not being the, Christ, the best right now, right? So here's the thing. I guess the spoiled kid... I mean, we all kind of know the Spoiled Kid's worldview is pretty messed up and it's really weird and it's like, the Spoiled Kid's insane. But apparently, he also believes that paying for stuff is for poor people. Which, <laughs> yeah, I'm going to repeat myself. Paying for items is for poor people. So, yeah, I think the Spoiled Kid for some reason believed that he was like, it, was, it would be totally big chillin' if he was to steal stuff from the store. That he could just pick stuff up and since he was so VIP and like exclusive and like, the best guy ever, the smartest, wealthiest, most handsome, whatever, that he would just be allowed to, like, just steal from the stuff from the store, practically. Yeah, because basically, Jack is trying to stay on the other side of the gift shop as the spoil kid, but occasionally he'll look over to see where the spoil kid is, just to see, like, where he is so he can keep the most distance. And he watches as the spoil kid picks up something and puts it in his pocket. Like, you know, when you see someone, I don't know if you've seen this, but like someone, if they want to like steal something from like a, I don't know, a thrift store or a convenience store or just like a store with a lot of like little things or whatever at the mall, they'll find something small and they'll normally just put it into their pocket, put it into their purse, whatever, right? And uh, yeah, so, so the spoiled kid is doing this, but he's not, do okay, so some people are kind of like, will be sneaky about it. They'll take one thing, they'll take the tag off, it won't get caught, whatever, right? I mean, still, that's not a thing you should do. The repercussions could be really bad, and it would it's not worth it, guys. Don't do that. Um, but the spoiled kid was literally just filling all of his pockets with all the toys and random stuff he could see. His pockets were literally bulging with merchandise and apparel. It was like the most, it was like top 10 dumbest criminals ever. He would be number one at this point. He basically was just filling his pockets to the brim. Like, they were probably, there were probably toys and merchandise flying out of his pockets, just falling out of his pockets, right? And, like, bro was not being nonchalant at all about it. Um, so, yeah. I, I guess maybe someone in the store would have assumed that he was just filling his pockets to come to the front and then pay for it, and he just didn't want to hold on to it all. But eventually, uh, like, 30 minutes later, the teachers come by and be like, all right, like, we're going, like, where, like, Jack, where's the spoiled kid? And uh, Jack's like, oh, um, I don't know. And he's like, I thought he was in the store. And so sure enough, they look around and they watch as the spoiled kid is walking out of the store, pockets full of stuff, and you hear beep, 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 beep. Yeah, he sets off the detector and uh, these two security guards walk over and they're like, son, do you have any unpaid merchandise? And the spoiled kid's like, uh-uh, I don't. And then like all this crap falls out of his pants. Yeah, so basically the spoiled kid starts to get taken, like is like taken away by these security guards. So the teacher runs over there and is like, stop, stop, stop. And they're like, is this your son? And they're like, no, this is, this is my student. I thought I'd just leave him in here because he was banned from somewhere else. Like, I'm sorry, like, what can I do to like bring him home? And they're like, well, we don't really care. Like, we were just gonna like hold him somewhere till we found his parents anyways. Um, they're like, all right, like, can you empty your pockets and the spoiled kid? And they like, the teacher goes through and makes sure he empties his pockets correctly, but his pockets are emptied out or whatever. And that's when like the security guard's like, all right, well, he can't really come back here, at least on a school trip, on your supervision. Uh, let his mom know about this. Like, that's really what we're just going to do. Like, this kid's obviously a kid. Um, we're not going to, like, actually, like, I don't know, <laughs> enforce the full extent of the law on him. We just want to want to make sure this isn't a pattern that consists into his teen and or early adulthood when it can actually affect him. And so the teacher's like, yes, yes, of course. I'm so sorry. 
So they're walking out, and the teacher angry is like angrily is like yelling at the spoiled kid, like, what are you thinking? First you try and like destroy something in the museum, and then you try and rob the museum. The spoiled kid literally has a blank face. Like the spoiled kid legit doesn't care, which is pretty crazy. But then the teacher says one of the most insane things ever, and I don't think Jack has been more mad in his life. The teacher turns to Jack and is like, how could you let this happen? And Jack's like, what? Today, we have a story time of a spoiled kid who literally gets so angry that he doesn't get what he wants that he goes on an unhinged rampage and actually says that his dad could buy the subscriber. Yeah, that's a little sus, bro. So stand back, or not stand back, sit back, relax, subscribe if you're new, and let's jump right into it. So we're gonna call the subscriber who submitted today's story, Brett. So anyways, Brett and the spoiled kid. There's also a kid in his class who we're just gonna call the spoiled kid. And the spoiled kid was a very standard, typical spoiled kid. He was the type of kid who literally got anything he ever wanted. If he wanted something, he would ask and he would receive. So while it's like a good thing to give your kids things that they want sometimes, this kid literally got everything and anything that he ever wanted. So he kind of had this bit of entitlement in which he believed that he was actually deserved everything ever and like that he actually did deserve to like receive everything. So when he didn't get something, that just didn't make sense to him. So here's the thing. There's a girl that both Brett and the spoiled kid were both very into. And uh, we're going to call her Caroline because that's kind of becoming the very standard girl name I've been using. So anyways, Brett had a thing for Caroline. The spoiled kid had a thing for Caroline. However, the spoiled kid was known as being a big jerk. And uh, Brett was actually kind of a, you know, he's a chill guy, was, uh, you know, very talkative. Not very talkative, but like could hold a good conversation. And uh, the spoiled kid and Brett would basically duke it out. And uh, this is how it goes. So anyways, almost everyone knows about this little quote unquote rivalry they have. Even the girl, even Caroline knows, and she is actually trying to make up her mind. So, you know, at this point, Caroline's in a pretty good position because she's like, well, I got suitors. Like, I got a lot of guys fighting for me right now. And so anyways, she kind of is just like kind of sitting back and seeing what they do. It's pretty clearly that she's leaning towards the Brett over the spoiled kid because the spoiled kid is kind of a kind of a jerkwad. But let's just jump into their first interaction. So anyways, they're sitting down at lunch and uh, Caroline is sitting there with her friends and basically what happens is, uh, you know, she gets up to go and get more food. So Brad is sitting with his friends and they're talking about like, oh man, like has been going with Caroline, right? And he's like, oh, actually pretty good. We've been talking a little bit. I got her Snapchat or whatever. And they're like, oh, but like you've heard that like spoiled kids trying to go for her too. It kind of became like a thing around the school to talk about, oh my God, who's going to get Caroline? <laughs> All that kind of stuff, right? Like, oh, it's going to be so crazy. Who's actually going to get it? And, uh, you know... So sure enough, you know, Brett is kind of, he's a little worried, but at the same time, he's not crazy worried because it is the spoiled kid at the end of the day. So, uh, but the thing is though, they watch, or Brett and his friends are sitting at the table and they watch as the spoiled kid walks up to where Caroline is in line. So they start to realize that, okay, looks like he's up to something. So the spoiled kid walks up to Caroline and he walks up next to her close enough that she can see him and she can see whatever he's doing. So she wa he walks up to Caroline and he goes, oops and he takes out like his wallet and throws it on the ground and intentionally he wanted to make sure that the the dollar bills in his wallet would spill everywhere so like literally like a hundred dollar bill floats out of his wallet remember this is a spoiled kid if he wanted money he could get money if he wanted something he'd get something he could literally get anything so he kind of figures that he kind of feels as if he's a little bit entitled to caroline which guys don't feel entitled to someone bro that's crazy but he's trying to flex right now by having a hundred dollar bill spill out of his wallet so Brett and his friends notice this, and Brett's like, does he really think that that's going to get her? But Brett in the back of his mind's like, dang, like, what if Caroline actually falls for this, bro? Like, what if she's alerted by his, I don't even know what she'd be alerted by, but what if he, she's alerted by something, you know what I mean? And so Brett and his friends are like, dude, like, that's not going to work. So Caroline sees this, and she kind of looks like, I don't know, she's not, like, intrigued by this, bro. Like, I think she's, like, kind of of some character, right? So she sees this and she's like, oh, well, this is a really low brow move. Like he's just trying to be like, oh, I have money. So you should like me, bro. But in this spoiled kid is like, oh my God, how did this fall out of my wall? Like, how did this fall out of my hands? I'm so clumsy. Ha ha ha. Like it's so cringe and lame and weird or whatever. And Caroline notices this and is like, Ugh, like, <laughs> like this kid is weird, bro. Like he's really out here trying to flex like the hundred dollar bill that his parents got him. That's the thing too. Like, it's a little, it's, 
I can understand flex. Uh, okay, flexing is always a little obnoxious, but I can understand being like, hey, I'm financially secure, especially when you're later on dating, because that's definitely like something that's nice. Like going into a relationship with someone financially secure, that's something maybe you don't need to worry about. But bro is literally in like eighth grade flexing a hundred dollar bill that his grandma probably gave him for his birthday. Like, bro, that's just simply not a flex. And so the spoiled kid picks up and is like, oh my God, I can't believe this hundred dollar bill fell out of my wallet. Like, oh my God, this is so crazy. <laughs> Looks directly at Caroline, like waves a hundred dollar bill around. Oh my God, it's going to fall in my hands again. And he like drops on the floor. Oops, my hundred dollar bill fell out of my hands once again. Yeah, so uh, Brett notices this and is like, dude's going way too hard. And he's like, oh my God, the dollar hundred dollar bill, it's on the ground. And the spoiled kid goes down to pick it up. It's like, oh my God, it's so much money. Mm -hmm. And uh, believe it or not, guys, this is actually not an attractive thing to do. This is not going to woo Caroline over. Um, spoiler alert. She's not going to be like, oh my God, his grandma gave him a hundred dollar bill. I love you now. Like, bro, that's just simply not how it works, dude. I don't know how else to put it. This is not how it's going to work. So yeah, sure enough, um, uh, Caroline just kind of watches this, kind of like, Ugh, whatever, right? And the spoiled kid moves on. So the next day comes around, and uh, so Caroline is in the hallways, and she's uh, hanging out with her friends or whatever. And Brett sees this as a decent opportunity. As her friends seem to be walking away, and it's like Caroline is, like, getting her stuff, about to go to another class. So Brett is like, all right, cool, like, I can... Because he's already been talking to her. This isn't some cold approach stuff, right? He's already been talking to her. He's like, okay, cool, like, I can go up to her. We can chat it out a little bit, word, right? Whatever. So Brett goes up to her and he's like, hey, like, what's up, Caroline? And she looks at him and kind of gives him this like nice little smile because she knows what's up, guys. Like she knows what's good. She knows what's going on right now. So uh, yeah, she's like kind of gives him a little smile like, hey, like, what's up? Like, how's it going, man? Like, how's it going? And um, uh, yeah, so they start walking and, you know, Brett's kind of like, you know, chat her up a little bit asking how her day's been, asking how this class they have together is going for her, all this kind of good stuff, right? And that's when the spoiled kid sees this. And the spoiled kid is like, ah, oh, hell nah, bro. Like, I'm not letting this happen. So the spoiled kid, he gets, so he has a water bottle on him, right? The spoiled kid has a water bottle and he grabs his water bottle and he's walking down the hallway. So um, uh, Caroline and Brett are walking down the hallway in one direction and the spoiled kid is walking down the hallway as well. And that's when the spoiled spoil kid is like, oops, and he acts accidentally, doesn't actually do it accidentally, but he tries to make it look like he trips. And when he trips with huge quotation marks, I'm doing air quotations in the air right now, actually, because there are huge air quotation marks around this. When he trips, right, he spills all this water all over Brett. And it's funny because like it's, not, it's very obvious that he did it on purpose. Like, he falls to the ground, but as he's fall, after he falls, he literally dumps the rest of the water bottle on top of, uh, on top of Brett anyways. So it's like, why did he even pretend to fall, bro? It's so obvious. Yeah, so it was super obvious that the spoiled kid was trying to sabotage this on purpose. And I don't know why the spoiled kid really thought that just getting him, like, Brett wet is gonna, like, somehow mess up his charisma or something. Or I don't know how, why the spoiled kid thought that that was gonna improve his chances. Because if anything, dude, it literally just made it more obvious that the spoiled kid was, like, desperate at this point. And the spoiled kid literally just made it look like he was trying to sabotage Brett, and it just failed. So Caroline, the thing is, she notices this. She notices that because she knows they have a little bit of a rivalry going on anyways over her, lol. But she knows that they have, like, a little bit of a rivalry going on. But also, right... She notices that, like, who's playing dirty here? The spoiled kid's playing dirty. You know what the spoiled kid has not done? Really tried to talk to her, bro. Like, all the spoiled kid has done is tried to, like, flex his, like, lifestyle or whatever, when in reality his lifestyle is literally just what his parents give him. So, yeah, he's been flexing his $100 bills that grandma gave him for his birthday while Brett has actually been putting in the hard work and trying to have decent, good conversations with her. So who do you think she's going to pick, bro? I don't know about you, but it's a pretty clear situation in my mind. Like, it's pretty clear which one she's going to pick. But anyways, I do digress because, uh, you know, Caroline is like, oh, Brett, like, all right, like, do you need me to, like, get a paper towels or something? And the spoiled kid starts to realize, oh, my God, this is actually backfiring in my face because he notices that, like, Caroline is like, oh, Brett, let me help you out, whatever, right? And Brett's like, or no, the, sorry. The spoiled kid's like, oh my god, Brett, you got water all over you. How embarrassing. And Brett's like, looks at him, he's like, wait, how is it embarrassing that you tripped and spilled water on me? 
And that's when the spoiled kid realized, wait a minute, if anyone's going to be embarrassed here, it's going to be me because it makes me look clumsy because it makes me look like I just tripped and spilled water all over this guy. Like, if anyone here is going to be embarrassed by this situation, it's actually going to be me. And that's when the spoiled kid's like, oh, well, um, no, dude, it's actually super embarrassing that you got water on you. Like, it's actually embarrassing for you. I feel so embarrassed for your behalf, bro. Like, that's actually so crazy, dude. Like, I'd be so embarrassed if I were you right now. Like, uh, <laughs> Uh, shoot. And that's when the spoiled kid realizes that he kind of messed up doing this whole thing. And Brett's like, oh man, don't worry. Like, it's okay if you're clumsy. Like, I don't really blame you for being super clumsy. And the spoiled kid's like, I'm not clumsy. You're clumsy for getting water all over you. And the spoiled kid, and Brett's like, dude, you tripped and spilled the water on me. And the spoiled kid's like, I didn't trip. I poured the water on you. And Brett's like, oh, so then you just intentionally poured water on me. And he's like, no, I just tripped. And then Brett's like, so you're clumsy then? He's like, no, I'm neither. I'm just awesome. Caroline, you hear that? I'm awesome. Yeah. Uh, stop stop being so clumsy and getting water on you, Brett. Ha, huh, so clumsy, dude. Goodbye. This spoiled kid literally gets up and leaves, trying to make it look like he won that whole altercation where it's just so freaking obvious that he did not win that conversation at all. If anything, it just shows how embarrassingly desperate he is at this point. Because he, he, I think this spoiled kid is starting to realize that he is not winning this. He is definitely not the one who is going to be coming out in front. Also, by the way, if you made it this far into the video, comment shoe down below. Completely random word, but I try and make them as random as possible. I just like to see how many people made it this far into the video. So while you're down in the comment section commenting shoe, check out the pinned comment as there's a link to the Spotify in which all these stories are uploaded as podcasts. So make sure to go follow me on there and listen there. As well, there are two links in the description to my other two channels. I will be uploading daily on there from this day forward. Make sure to subscribe as it really does help out. Anyways, right... So Brett and the spoiled kid are start. It's starting to become like people are like spreading the word that Brett is winning. Like it is becoming like a popular rumor that Brett is absolutely bodying the spoiled kid in the quest. Uh, the quest for Caroline. That sounds so stupid. In the, like basically in this little competition they had, and the spoiled kid is very tapped into what the press is what the press is saying. I can't believe I just said what the press is saying. He's very tapped into what everyone else is saying, as it is kind of like one of his best indications. Um, I mean, Brett knows he's doing well because he knows for a fact that he's actually putting in the work and talking to Caroline, and he knows that the spoiled kid is literally just, like, flexing his grandma's $100 bills and also spilling water on him and looking like a fool. So the spoiled kid basically has one last hurrah. He has one last major kind of, like, attempt before he has a freaking mental breakdown and calls everyone poor and says that his dad can literally buy Brett, which is... Just a great thing to say, man. Wow, that is top-notch. You sound like a great person if you say that your dad can literally purchase someone. Bro, what the freak? What? Yeah, but anyways. Um, so his last real attempt, the spoiled kid in his mind was like, I need to do something big. I need to do something bold if I'm going to get Caroline's heart, which actually you should probably just start talking to her. Like, that's the one thing that, like, he refused to do, bro. The one thing he refused to do was actually talk to this girl, which is pretty ridiculous in my opinion. He would always be like, oh, well, me, I just need to flex my Bugatti or whatever. It's like, bro, how about you talk to her, bro? Like, first of all, if you're a kid, everyone knows that, like, the stuff that you have is probably because of your parents, and that's less impressive. Like, it's at least a little bit more impressive if you have, like, a I don't know, like fancy watch or whatever, because at least seems like you made that money in whatever ways you made it. So there's at least like, okay, well, maybe he went through some struggle or something to get that. But when you're a kid, bro, it's like, all right, cool. Your parents are dishing out the bread to you. Like, that's literally not impressive, dude. And also like, you got to talk to her, bro, but whatever. So the spoiled kid is like, yes, the thing I need to do is a big extravagant whatever. Like I need to show my, my love and admiration uh, I don't need to talk to her, bro. I don't need to get to know her because she needs to actually, actually, she needs to get to know me, not the other way around. Uh, I don't need to get to know her. I know she's fine or whatever, right? She needs to know how extravagant and awesome that I am individually. So yeah, uh, anyways, the spoiled kid is about to do something absolutely insane. So let's jump ahead to lunch. So Brett is sitting with the boys and Caroline's sitting at her table with her girlfriends, and uh, Caroline is, like, looking over, giving Brett glances. They're kind of looking at each other. They're being a little flirty. Love is in the air. Life is good, man. Brett knows that he's about to, he knows that he's about to close in on a, on a W, bro. Brett knows he's about to close in on a, on a, on a win. He knows that, like, he's been putting in the work, he's been putting in the effort, and that his hard work is about to pay off. 
Basically, the rumor going around is that Caroline has more or less made up her choice and that she wants Brett to ask her out in the next few days. So the spoiled kid, hearing this, thinks that he needs to do something extremely extravagant, which he's about to in the worst possible way. So basically, um, they're all sitting at lunch, and that's when the spoiled kid... Okay, so basically at lunch, there is a kind of like a, a podium with a microphone... And what will happen is, like, when lunch is about to end, a teacher will go up there and make some announcements. It's kind of like 